Hey guys, welcome to the stream. How's everyone doing today? First stream of 2024, I thought we'd do something special. Kind of. So we're going to be playing a Tyrion campaign, and I'm going to go what I usually don't do, and um, go the bloodline of an Arian, which is not optimal, and it's not my favorite thing to do, but might make things a little bit more interesting. So, legendary difficulty, very hard battles. I've enabled endgame crisis, but just put everything on default. It's not the main focus of this. And let's jump in and play. I think last time we played the Tyrion campaign, I did a reasonably aggressive start, but kind of screwed it up against um, Safari. Uh, hopefully I don't screw it up this time. We'll see how we go. Hope everyone had a good Christmas and New Year's, for those of you who celebrate it. Also Sword of Cain. Also Sword of Cain, yes, but picking up the Sword of Cain takes longer to do. There's no guarantee that opportunity will present itself. I'll like, If the opportunity presents itself to get the Sword of Cain, I will get it. Whereas normally I'd refuse it. Okay, so I've got a pretty aggressive start lined up. The protector of the Ever Queen. What we want to be Son doing of the king. Mage is of actually not one. capturing Gladiator. the Tower of Lycian Grant on turn one. Sight. To victory. All right, we've got to fight this manually because we can do it pretty much without taking much damage. Otherwise, water resolve is pretty bad. Any old legend? Man, it happens. Is that a mod? No, no mod. It's just vanilla. Matt Smith chucking in a twenty dollars super chat. Thanks, dude. Really appreciate it. Thing is, as well. If you go down the bloodline of an area now, you can always switch back to Majesty of Ulthwan later down the track if it's things aren't going your way. Alright. So we really want to make sure we take absolute minimal damage because we're gonna to have to fight another battle next turn. Uh, deploying over here, I think, is ideal for us, so we'll get over there as quickly as possible. I'll put the cab over here, maybe I'll run out, maybe I won't, we'll see. But yeah, really important that we take minimal casualties because we're not going to get much time for replenishment. I'm going to try a really aggressive start here. Uh, Brother Humayad became a member for 15 months. Welcome back, Legend. Stream is exactly what I needed today. All right, that's good. Uh, thanks for the membership. Appreciate it, dude. All right, so... Oh, whoops. Gave away the game there. I'm not trying to waste their ammo. You can do that, but that is not my main goal. I would much rather just kill them. All of our units are hidden. I don't want that. They'll chase after us in a minute. That guy's shooting me a fair bit, which I don't like. Okay, they'll probably pass- Oh, right, I see, because this there's a massive heal here. Right, it's obstructing us. If I move back a bit, the line of sight will improve for them. Maybe this one here was never actually detected. Alright, we took a little bit of damage on the Phoenix thanks to this guy here. He did 500 damage. That's not so bad, considering we took out 9,000 damage.
Happy New Year. Adelaide Shadow War, hope you hit your sub goal soon. Oh, it'll, it'll take a little while, the sub goal. It also could extend out the longer we take. But so far, so good. So far, so good. Alright. Silver Helms can definitely beat Dark Riders, but I'd prefer shooting them. We've definitely got enough ammunition to do that. They can see us now. We just need to give them bait good enough to go for it. I'm not trying to corner camp here. I'm not exactly corner camping. It's just that this is flat terrain, whereas all this rough terrain here isn't good for archers. Thinking probably isn't gonna work for them here. Missiles, take cover. Then to my win. Spearman, as he says. Spearman. Good old AI charging right into spears because they don't have any better option, as far as they're aware of. No casualties so far, so that's that's good. Oh, I don't really be taking damage with the Phoenix. Just try and knock this guy down a little bit. Okay, we take a little bit of damage on that, it's totally fine. We'll get a little bit of replenishment over the end turn. With the plan that I have in mind. A little bit. Nothing spectacular though. You move around over here, try to shoot that one on the flank. Silverhelm's taken a couple of casualties, that's okay. We use Sisters of Avalon on this run. I actually don't find myself using Sisters of Avalon that much in Warhammer 3. It's definitely not like I don't try to rush them. They're, they're d still great units, don't get me wrong, but I just don't really prioritize rushing them because in Warhammer 2, you needed to upgrade your army like really bloody early because the enemy armies coming at you were always overwhelming. But in Warhammer 3, the AI is just not really as much of a threat. And so I just don't find the need to uh, to upgrade my armies in sort of a rush format. And because I'm usually done with my campaigns by about turn 30 and 40, I just, I've just i barely ever recruited Sisters of Avalon and certainly don't spam them. Things have just changed in Warhammer 3. Using the techniques of Warhammer 2 is just not the way to go. You've got to adjust with the times. Because another thing with Warhammer 3 is that it's actually better to build more armies that are crap stacks than like a couple of doom stacks. It is more efficient to do that. Because the supply lines aren't so severe. Okay, we do need to run this guy down if we want to get maximum loots. Which is what I want to do. Hang on, hang on. You go run. No. Uh, the Phoenix should be able to handle it. Okay, what you want to do with the Phoenix is actually land it first. Terrible if it's still technically flying. Oh, bloody terrible even if it isn't. Running down single end is pain. Okay, it's doing better now, that's good. Alright, that amount of uh, of damage. I'm not sure if I'm going to recover that over the end turn. Because they're not going into a city. We're not taking Tower of Lycian. Alright, there we go. Did you give the Old World mod a go? Yeah, the previous live stream was an Old World mod. Live stream. Yeah, it was good. It was good. Um, I don't think it should just be everything that we play from now on, but it's, it's a good mod. It was alright. Is it good or bad change to the AI if they are not overwhelming you? Um, it depends. 
So I think it's good for people who are newer to Total War. It's bad for veterans. So for people like me who need a reason to continue their campaigns beyond turn 30, it's not good. But I'm in a minority, so I guess it's fine. I don't think it's that big of a deal. It's just a change that's happened in Warhammer 3 that just makes it a bit less challenging than it was in Warhammer 2. Alright, so we'll take that. Release them. They're gone. Now, the easy, obvious option is to go and capture the Tower of Lycian. But what we're actually going to do is so, capture okay. Angerial next turn. So we want to be standing here. Onward. And recruiting two units of archers. Then over here... We're going to recruit and load a character. We're going to globally recruit two, sorry, three of these units this turn, and then they'll recruit one additional archer, and Tyrion will get one additional archer the next turn. Gifted. So, this is what I was talking about about not much replenishment. I didn't replenish to full. Because this army one. is going to move down there. That's okay. Tyrion. We don't actually need uh, Root Marcher right now. We'll easily reach that. It's usually the first thing that people go for, but we, we don't need it right now. Instead, what would be better is... I think getting getting this improved. Uh, rank 1, you don't really get that much good stuff. Okay, let's have a look in Diplomacy, see what Protector we can do here. Of Elf one. Probably not much. Uh, Avalorn, yep, Mistress, we want to get a trade agreement with the them going. Of the serving the God. Prince of Safari, no. It. We're going to be attacking them. Guardian of the Phoenix Crown. D Lord okay. of Fear. Are the AI improvements from the last patch been noticeable at, at all? Um, I would not call them AI improvements, personally. The, the AI is still brain dead. You know, Warhammer as usual. Okay, we want to get rid of this, and we want to build this, and I don't have enough money to build anything else. That's okay. That's okay. We'll get money next turn. It's not urgent to build something. That that is important to build straight away. See, I could speak. I could with Illyrian maybe get Your a little bit of money. Reach the not throat. enough to get five hundred enough to pay for it. So let's just wait until next turn. Um. Yeah, I'll wait on that. Yeah. Yeah, okay, let's move on to the next turn. Is Avalon hard scripted to attack Illyrian? I think they used to be. I don't know if they are anymore. I remember when I first played Immortal Empires, they would always attack Illyrian, but I don't think that they do anymore. Did that guy leak what the next turn of war will be yet? Yeah? I actually have a pretty... I've been leaked by multiple sources on what the next Total War game is. Um, and it's... At first it was like... A really... Unreliable picture. But now it's been refined. From what I've been told. So, since some multiple sources are telling me pretty much the same thing, I think it's fairly believable now. That being said... It's not, it's not official, so I don't know. Not, don't know for sure. So what we want to do here Tyrion. is with Tyrion's army, with 11 units, attack this. Which is very much a winnable battle, but if we do a bad job of it, it'll just make things more difficult as we go along. So obviously we want to do as good a job as possible. And then this one here. So it queue up one. So that gives us five units to, to try to capture this. There'll be a lord in there as well, so that's something we got to keep in mind. High Elven Archmage. 
But we can recruit another lord here if we absolutely need to. We'll we'll see how we go. Champion of the Ever Queen. Oh no, there'll be a lord there. That's it. They'll be fine to capture that without any interference. Ulf ones okay, defend. let's go over here. Gladly. This will probably be an order resolve defeat. Um, Kappa Kuzek became member for 12 months. Hey Legion, I saw your fought's disaster that players. Oh, order resolve. Man, what? We still need to fight it manually. I was expecting a. Okay, never mind. Sorry. Hey Legion, I saw your fought's disaster that players make tons of money. I wanted to ask how to boost the economy in fought's in other ways than max low tax. Um, those people that get their t their uh, income that high usually are in the late game and they've like researched a ton of things. Another thing that they do is they have a tendency not to do the min, the, the max low tax thing, which means that their settlements tend to have a lot of town wealth over time, so that they grew it over time. Um, that's that's one thing that you can do. Um, I don't think that that's the optimal way, but hey, it works for them. Brother Humaya did a SAR 10 Super Chat. Is it possible to get Imric? Do you want him? It is possible, and I do want him. Next Super Chat. Uh, Death Classic did a 5 Super Chat. Legend, will you ever stream Aranessa Pirates? It's one of the few campaigns you haven't done in Warhammer 3. No, I'm never going to be streaming Aranessa. Aranessa is a boring, crappy campaign. I'm not interested in her at all. That's yeah, it. It's, it's, don't hold your breath on that. It's not coming. So once again, get the phoenix to annoy the hell out of them. Have you played the old world mod in your own time? Yep, and I've also played it on stream. The previous live stream was the old world mod. So I prefer to go after the spears, because I kind of consider them more of a threat than, than the dark shards, because I can do, I can like goof around the dark shards, whereas these ones here, the melee infantry, they've got shields, and since the majority of our damage dealing relies very heavily on we will obey. archery, we kind of need... Yeah, to get rid of them with these bombs, which this uh, shields don't block them. So I'm luring in these harpies, and hopefully we'll shoot them down nice and early. That'd be good. Time to peer pressure Legend into Aranessa. No, don't bother. It's never going to happen. There's no amount of pre there's no nothing you can do to convince me to play it. It's a terrible campaign. I hate it. I don't like Aranessa as a lord. So I'm just, I'm just not going to play lords I don't like. Like, if, if she's your favorite lord, that's great. But I personally think she's trash. Right, they didn't land. But we're still shooting them, so... Okay. AI improvements at its best! Sword of the Azure. Come around over here. We've currently done 2,000 damage. I've dropped down two bombs. That's not too bad. Okay, we've got another harpy chasing after us. We don't have to drop all the bombs now. Thousand damage, that's good. So that was very stupid of them there. AI is not good. Okay, we're dealing with these harpies. They've blobbed up two units of infantry here. That's great. Try to make sure every shot is counting.
Okay, so we did 11,000 damage, only 12,000. That's good. Moving out. Onward. Totally fine if they want to go Stop after our heroes down. like this. Totally fine. Orders. Another thing to keep in mind is that the next battle is a minor settlement battle, so we really need to make sure we take minimal damage on this one. Since we're not going to get that many more reinforcements. So the AI is just really unsure about where to go. It's exactly what we want to see. If we feign some charges in here, we might just get them to shoot their own troops. Tyrion is doing just fine there. Okay, Harpies are landing on us. Go and fight them. Okay, get this one out of here. Don't want to be fighting melee infantry. That's not what they're there for. Take out archers. There's no time to get them over here. So front line is taking a little bit of a beating. Nothing too spectacular here. Oh, I actually should have used that on Tyrion, I think. Keep changing targets with this one doesn't get too badly wrecked. Okay, there we go, there's the army losses. Alright, I'm pretty happy with that. The damage is you know, not too bad. Better than what Order Resolve said it would be. Will you play Malachus? His starting position is filled with enemies, though he lacks flavor in his campaign. is very cha challenging. I, yeah, no, Dark Elves don't perform well, and I personally don't like them in Warhammer 3. So, the only Dark Elf campaign that I really would be willing to play is Lockyer Felhart, which I covered not too long ago. Um, Dark Elves just don't bring in the viewers. And I personally don't like them, so there's no reason for me to play it. So yeah, I'm, I, it's a low priority. Um, FF Dragon Knight did a five dollar super chat. I will always watch your Total War content for as long as you enjoy making it. Uh, thank you for always being such a positive force in the community. Ah, thanks, dude. I appreciate that. Thanks for super chat. I recently watched the f uh, your four year old Tyrion goes full in Aryan stream. What are the odds of this stream? Mm. Uh, Cody White did a fifty dollar super chat. Uh, always good to see you. Got a job in Mindil Beach, moving to the Darwin area in the spring. Okay. Good luck with that. Um, just remember that Darwin gets really hot. Now, I've never been there, actually, but it gets really hot in the summer. So, don't get out in the sun <laughs> during the summer. Hibernate. And that's what I'd do. Alright, we could loot and occupy it, which would give us some replenishment, but honestly, it's the heroes that took the most damage, and they're the ones that aren't going to get replenishment from this, so... Occupy this place. Lockyer is OP, to be fair. Yeah, it's not, it's not really about challenge with Warhammer 3. It's about fun. Because you can take any campaign, if you enjoy it, and make it challenging by putting in your own restrictions or whatever. So, campaigns that are not fun are are not something that you should prioritize because you'll end up burning yourself out. And I'm speaking Protector of, of the Ever Queen. On, on my own regard in that, in that as well. Tyrion, the most important thing is to try to enjoy yourself. 
Otherwise, what's the point? You know, bragging rights in Warhammer 3? What for? What for? It's just not a tough game. The AI is brain dead. It's just not a challenging game in general. So, you know, bragging rights in Warhammer 3 just are not worth going after. Okay, uh, are we going to need more ammunition in the next fight, or are we going to need more melee defense? I think ammunition is going to be more important. Yeah. So we get one additional archer here. Why not spearmen? <laughs> Why do I keep doing that? And yeah, Iran's Thunderbolt's really handy for um, for sieges, I think. Because yeah, it's going to be a minor settlement siege. There's no way around that. At your service. Okay, then, I'm fairly sure there's going to be a lord here, but if we recruit another lord here, he'll, he'll be able to reinforce wherever we need him. So I'm going to put in Nyo, and I'd much rather be a princess rather than a prince. Poltroon is fine. Princess of the Asur. Yeah. Yeah, she, she'll be able to go either way. Because I just I can't remember where they're going to recruit a lord. I'm pretty sure it's over here. But I just I live to can't serve my fucking queen. remember. Okay, then let's get... See, that's a really good tech, but we don't really need it that much now since Lothan Seaguard is not something we're going to be getting a lot of in the early stage of the campaign. Definitely something we want to get eventually. Speed for these units seems pretty good. Let's grab that. And let's have a look at Diplomacy. Prince of Elfwatt. Illyrian want trade. How Welcome, much money can we get out of them? More than last turn. What would you wish to discuss? Yeah, I think with Illyrian, you just need to try to avoid getting a defensive alliance with them. Otherwise, you get dragged into a war. Well, last time I played it, that didn't happen. Actually, I think last time I played this, I ended up going to war with Illyrian. If I'm not mistaken, I attacked them here and ended up losing. Much better to just confederate them, I think. Especially considering Noctilus is going to be around over here. Yeah. Wise indeed. Let's hear it. Not Mr. Safari. We're going to go to war with them. Cruel and deadly. Yeah. Have you tried Heckless AI Overhaul? Makes the AI way more aggressive on campaign, like it was in Warhammer Two. No, I haven't tried that. I did never even heard of it before today. Okay, so that's good. That's going ahead. We need growth. Let's get that going. And we need... Uh, hang on. Limited funds. And I think it would be better if we spend our growth first. Hmm. No, it's fine. Whether we build this this turn or next turn actually makes very little difference. And this will just give us a little bit of cash to work with. Yep. Why not the archery prowess tech? Mm, I'll have a look at that tech. That might be what I'm going to get next. I just leave Illyrian with the gate and farm them with heroes. Yeah, that's what I used to do as well. Do you know how your rest capturing lords in order resolve works and have been able to do it consistently? That's because it's based on random luck. That's why you can't get it consistently. There's nothing you can do to, to like guarantee that it's going to happen in order resolve. So the best thing you got to do is just manually resolve it. Because that way you can guarantee that you can capture them. As long as you've got the tools you need to do it, of course. Alright. Relent! Now! Lady of Ulthorn. Cease this! Shield of Alaria. Awaiting orders. Attack! So there's 12 units going up against 12 units. Order resolve. That's not too bad, everything considered. There is I guess the big question one. here is... Because this is what I'm talking about with the aggressive start. We use this army to capture this one. 5 versus 5, but in here... 
See, the Order Resolve gives us a close defeat there, but I actually think it is massively overestimating this, because giving them a bit of an Order Resolve buff because it's a settlement, even though they don't get any, any advantages from that. Our archers are better than their archers, just because of range and they don't have shields. Obviously, Dark Shards with shields are more dangerous. This is a High Wizard, which we can use to heal, and also use Soul Quench, which can definitely take down a lot of them. If I bring the other Lord over here, then that will make this battle easier for sure. It's just a matter of Please which battle do we need to make guidance. easier. Because I can probably win either one of those battles without it, but which one do I need to make it easier with? Because you can come over here without force marching, but you need to be force marched over for here. We could probably get the most use out of her over here. The thing is, that's a minor settlement battle. That's a minor settlement battle. Which one should I go? Decisions, decisions. I think it's better if we send her we over here. Moving out. Okay, I'll fight this one manually first. End. Bring her to Lycian? No, <laughs> it's literally the opposite of what I did. No, look, I can win this. The fact that it says close defeat, auto resolves a bit silly in this. It gives you good results in tough situations and bad results in easy situations. This is not a difficult one. Original Shogun better than Shogun 2? No, no it's not. <laughs> no it's not. Okay. Orders received. Alright, we don't need to hide our units. Stand back a little bit. Give us a bit more time to use magic first. High priority to use Soul Quench My on the out. Dread Spears. Uh, not the Dread Spears, the, the um... The Bleak Swords. I saw Archmage. Because they're more dangerous to the Quench Archers. They should have another unit yet yeah, popping in over there. What we want to do is get around their back. Now these have a speed, speed of 36 compared to their speed of 33, so we can outrun them. Can't outrun... No, we can outrun Dark Shards, actually. So they're not taking the bait over here very well. Very much. Not gonna lie, I'm a little bit concerned, just a little bit, because it is my destination. Just, just a little bit concerned. I need to get these ones here to turn around if possible. This formation is not ideal for us. Get a couple of volleys in and then start running away in different directions, I think. Okay. You two go this way. You two go this way. Okay, good. We got a unit turning around. Awesome. Let's shoot its back. Oh, look at that. They're actually going to shoot my lord. Good. They've essentially got two units chasing one. That's exactly what we want to see. Got one unit chasing two. That's good. I can deal with that. This is not ideal here. They're actually shooting at our lord. But I can heal. Archers! Moving! 
Master of sorcery. This is good here. Asor Archmage. As you say. This is fine here. We can outrun them. We advance. Following can outrun them there just fine. Archers. Asor, move. To the fray. Move. That is working really nicely there. We are taking a little bit of damage over here, but this distraction is well worth that. Got plenty of magic, plenty of healing. As soon as we take out one unit, this will be easy. Which, honestly, is not so bad right now. So this one over here is getting close to breaking, that's good. Make sure we get rid of it completely. Get it off the battlefield, otherwise it's just going to rally and cause us problems. You just keep running. Oh, you can run all the way up here actually, that'll be fine. God, I hate restrict camera. Okay, the dark shards over here have just switched. Orders received. That's fine. I need to bring this this one up here so that we can beat them. Honestly, that one is not going to be much of a problem now. Even if it does rally, it'll probably break again straight away. Winded. Yeah, okay. Okay. They're getting tired as well. Just keep moving. Yeah, that looks like it's going to leave. What's its morale? That's gone. Cool, cool, cool. Alright, so now it's five units versus four. So that's good. That gives us a big advantage. But we've got a disadvantage over here and a massive advantage over there. If we end up losing these two here, that's really bad. That could cost us the battle. So we've got to be really careful. Come on, keep moving. That one they're stuffing around, I'm not sure what they're doing. I'm a little bit concerned that they're going to... ...catch up to us. Even though they've got lower speed, sometimes pursuing Archers. units can catch up to you. Moving out. Orders understood. i got to start wheeling these guys back around this way. Which DLCs do you recommend for a new Warhammer player? Mm, you gotta make that decision for yourself, I can't answer that, sorry. Um, DLCs I would recommend avoiding, at least for the time being, it's definitely Shadows of Change. I would not recommend purchasing that right now. Uh, it depends on what factions you enjoy, that's what it really comes down to. Like My favourite ones are like the Tomb Kings, I think I've gotten a lot of value out of that one. Uh, Prophet and Warlock, because I really like both Tehenowin and... Um, Ikit Claw. Ikit Claw is one of my favorite characters. So those are two that I would highly recommend, but at the end of the day, you have to make that decision for yourself. Have I got the blood pack on? I sort of did. Okay, we've got this. Easily got this. Don't shoot out anymore. Where'd that dark shard go? Let them recover some fatigue. There it is. Good. Open this up.
No casualties. How about that? In fact, pretty much no damage at all. Close victory. <laughs> Come on, literally perfect. Whatever. Hey, Wolf's Paul, how's it going, dude? Are there any factions that are unplayable without DLC? Yeah, I'd say Skaven are not worth playing without DLC. Because they've got three DLCs and they really expand them a lot. And the stuff that that they uh, miss out if you don't get the DLC is quite significant. So yeah, we really didn't need to send that other lord over here. I knew what I was doing. Occupy that. Alright. Cool. And they'll meet up with us for the fight against Safari shortly. She's an administrator, right? Yeah. Cool, cool, cool. High mage. Lady of the Phoenix Oh, I could have actually made it here on regular march. Well nice. That auto resolve is much better than it was, just by bringing this one in, but I think we can do better than losing this unit. Thing is, though, it's a minor settlement battle. Oh, minor settlement battles are easier now than they used to be. Oh, okay, cool, cool, cool. Yeah, they're way easier, because all we gotta do is destroy the towers in the nearby vicinity. Okay, never mind. Easy. Easy peasy. Did you have a good change of year? It, just another day. I barely even noticed the change of the new year. Am I warming up to high magic? It's okay. It's not one of the best laws of magic. It's okay. It's not not the worst either. Legend has a dedicated CA dev watching his streams. The dev saw it was a dice C at the start and set it to close victory on the explanation. <laughs> no, they wouldn't do that. They can't do that, I don't think. Yeah, do you think that, that Creative Assembly, games that, the developers that make games in this poor state have the ability to have Russia level spyware. I mean they definitely have spyware, but they're mostly just checking your stats. Uh Vimarain did a CHF ten super chat. Hello Legend, what are your thoughts on current Dark Elves unpaid in ten system? Better than before, better than Chorfs. Also wishing you all the best in twenty twenty four. Thanks dude, wish you the best as well in twenty twenty four as well. Um I think it's better than it used to be, but it is nowhere near as good as what the Chaos Dwarfs have. It's still not very interesting, in my opinion. Always go to state. It's my opinion. Alright, I find coming up through here to be a little bit better than going the other way. Just fewer towers to have to worry about. You know what, we actually should have brought a healer. So what we can do now, since thanks to the latest patch, is you can send your phoenix around to get rid of towers, and they're permanently gone from the battle. Archers. Okay, just orders received. All right, just hang on. Loyal. Moving out. Are you stopping with historical lives? Uh, the historical live streams don't do as well as as the Warhammer one, so we'll we'll see how we go. We'll see how we go. All right. Is Game 2 Dark Elf in turn mechanics still better than Game 3? Oh yeah, for sure. Absolutely. In my opinion. Always gonna state, just my opinion. Some people will uh, disagree, and that's that's fine. But yeah, I just don't enjoy playing Dark Elves. And whenever I cover them, it just performs like crap. So, it's just... I just don't have much incentive to try out the Dark Hills that much. As you say, march forward. So yeah, we can take our time with this. Somewhat. Don't want to take too long. We've also got some Iranian Thunderbolts to use. Top priority needs to be getting rid of dark shards because the unlimited ammunition due to the um, due to the barricades that still exists. We can destroy barricades and permanently get rid of it that way. We 
Why? Most people become them for 32 months. In my opinion, you are pretty awesome. Thanks, dude. I think you're awesome as well. <laughs> Thank you very much. Okay, move up. Move up. We will obey. Make it off one proud. So yeah, if we get rid of the archers, archers, we go. That'll that'll make it a lot easier for the Phoenix to drop down the bombs on them all. Mid site. Orders received. A pace. No, 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 no! Don't shoot at me. I can outrange you. Quickly now. Yeah, that one's there. It will be done. I do go and you did a twenty dollar super chat. Hang on a sec, dude. I've recently started a project and I'm learning to code Unreal Engine Five, and sorry, and Blender to develop Warhammer Forty K FPS game. If interested, later in development, would you be interested in voice acting a unit? If so, what race from Forty K? Uh, yeah, I, I could I could do that for you. Um, what unit? Forty K? They don't have Skaven. Uh. I don't know. I don't know. I'll let you decide. 40k is at the back of my mind at the moment, so yeah, I don't know. For duty. But yeah, that could be fun. Swiftly. I'd really like to voice a Skaven character at some point for like a mod. Since they can now do um, custom voice mods. Okay, this one's arrived. Not sure if we even needed her. Could really use that um, high wizard for this one. Archers. Move. It shall be done. Yeah, new chapter of Space Marines. The um, fuckers. <laughs> I don't know. They've all got Australian accents and they say fuck a lot. Yeah, you get me and Major Kill to voice one. That'd be cool. And most of the mad. Yeah, yeah, you could do that. You get it. Make a custom, custom chapter. All Australian accents. We come from Space Australia. <laughs> right, are there any more towers out here that I need to be worried about? That's only got barricades. I need the uh, the um, uh, Phoenix to keep an eye on things so I can Archers. shoot them. Orders received. Yeah, come on, give me line of sight. Thing is, as soon as they see the Phoenix, they start shooting at it. Do you think the maps in Shogun 2 are better than Warhammer 3? I just hate how defending is. Um, no, I definitely don't don't think that the sieges in or siege maps in Shogun 2 are better than Warhammer 3. The siege AI maybe, but I am not a fan of sieges in Shogun 2. I don't actually enjoy them very much at all. The sieges in Shogun 2 are really bloody simple. Orders received. Asa, forward. Okay, cool. Alright, let's bring this one up and start using some magics. As you say. I do kind of like the changes that they made with the uh, with the structures, how they're not instantly rebuilt at uh, minimal cost, allowing you to sort of take your time with it. It does make the sieges a lot easier, but it does also make a lot more sense. I think it's more fun for a lot of people, because I know a lot of people got stressed out doing these sieges because they like to just meticulously get through it a little bit at a time, which is the correct way to go about it most of the, most of the time. Understood. Forward. 
for duty. Onward. Nope. Setting forth. Okay, this one's arrived. We can send her up and just harass for a bit. That's fine. Uh, which one was the best maps? Sieges or not, and why? Um, probably Medieval 2 and Total War Attila and Thrones of Britannia. Thrones of Britannia is not a good Total War game, but it's got good maps. Uh, Tiller's got a, quite a lot of good maps. Like, the maps for Warhammer 3 are good. The, it's, the problem is the AI. The AI is just really bad at this game. I mean, they're bad in every game, but it just really sort of... seems um, quite egregious in Warhammer 3. See if I can bomb them and it actually knock them down like a little bit. Okay, that unit there is looking pretty vulnerable. Why don't we go attack it? Oh, hang on, hang on. I forgot. They will shoot at our lords. This is why we got to get rid of the um, the dark shards first. Because they've got unlimited ammunition there. That's very dangerous. Which sieges do you find easier to defend? Warhammer 2 or Warhammer 3? Uh, uh, it, it depends on what the army composition is like. Um, I'd probably say Warhammer 3 sieges. Maybe. I'm not sure. I very rarely defend my cities in Warhammer 3. I'm always on the attack. So it's just hard to say. I mean, it was so, sort of the same thing with Warhammer 2. I don't know. It's really hard to answer that. Like, sieges in Warhammer 2 were terrible, and they're also terrible in Warhammer 3. It's just... They're not memorable play modes. Like, I, I would skip this if I bloody could, but it has to be fought manually. Archers! There's a unit over here. I just need to see it, and I should be able to shoot it. So trying to use our long range. Yeah, there it is. Yeah, I'm dodging the bombardments. Not seeing. Not seeing you. That's a nice blob for us, though. Good. Shooting the Dark Shards. Like I said, that's the biggest concern. Once we get rid of their Dark Shards, we can begin in advance. Or at least thin them out enough that they're not going to wreck us. Because Dark Shards with unlimited ammunition, that is, that is really dangerous. Still weird how they haven't fixed that bug. You gotta make sure they shatter. Okay, there should be another one over here. Okay, get ready to start bringing up the others. Yep, okay, you guys have finished there. Get back over here. Did that like completely miss or something? I think it did any damage. It shall be done. Onward. Yeah, see, there's just not that many towers around this side here, so this was what makes it easy to assault. As opposed to the other sides, which have quite a lot of towers. All they had to do is destroy this one, and then no more towers. Just need a clean line of sight on that dude. How dark shards have unlimited ammunition? No, any infantry unit. Look, do you see here? They're restoring their ammunition. It's because of barricades. It's not specifically dark shards. It's any missile units on a um, on a barricade. They restore their ammo. 
Deacon. So the player can do it as well. And I definitely do do it. But the AI definitely does it. Almost seemingly in intentional as well. I don't know if it is actually intentional, but it does seem like it. Even with the range bonus, we can still outrange them. Are high elves still the strongest order race? Hmm. Yeah. Yeah, you could you could argue that. Uh, no, it's clearly the dwarves. <laughs> Maybe after their DLC, we'll see. Alright, good. Foxy just... Oh, there's another one over here. Came in. Yeah, make sure this one here doesn't rally. We don't want any of these dark shards here. They just do too much damage. They can actually manage to shoot them, just even just a little bit in the flank there. We will obey. Asa, move. It will be done. They're firing on us a little bit, but that's okay. I think that's the last dark shard, and then we can begin the 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 real advance. Are we killing them? Yeah, a little bit, a little bit. I need them to shatter though. Understood. Not enough of them left, I think, to really matter. Okay, don't bother shooting at Dark Riders. Alright, let's start advancing with the Spearmen now. Oh good, they've used their murderous prowess. That's good. Actually, just wait for that to expire. Okay, no, they're not done yet. Okay, that one's shattered. Good, get over here. Alright, I think... Yep, that one just shattered. That's good. Alright, you come up. Which of the melee one lords is the strongest in your opinions? I don't know. That's not something that I really try to think about a lot. Like, I focus way more on tactics than who's the strongest. Because anyone can beat anyone with the right equipment and the right situation. So yeah, just going like, oh, this person is strongest. That's just not really how this game works. Like, obviously, Tyrion will beat Balthazar Gelt, but it just, it, everything depends on the situation. Arthur Ar Araujo did a $10 super chat. Um, hey, Legend, love your content since this is Total War Western Roman Empire campaigns. Greeting from Brazil. Alright, thanks, dude. Appreciate that. Do all Dark Elf ranged have AP? Yeah. Uh, uh, I think they do. The Shades do. Right, let's start trying to snipe this dude here with that one. Mage, going. How do you beat the Drade, Jade Dragon with Mazda Mundi? Depends on the situation. I don't know, it... Like... <laughs> it's, try using Spirit Leech! I don't know. Uh, no, he doesn't even have that. So, these kind of questions, I, I get where you're coming from, but they're impossible to answer. They're absolutely impossible to answer. Because in any battle, you don't just have Mazda Mundi, and you don't, you're not just going up against the Jade Dragon. So I don't know all of the other context to do with the situation. And so there is not a surefire way to just... If you just do this, then that character is defeated. That works for nobody in this game. So 
you really need to make your question specific, or else I, I literally can't give you an answer that's satisfying. Because it's not Pokemon. You know, we're not playing Pokemon. It's just, it's not a case of like, oh, Pikachu can beat a uh, total Dial or whatever. It's just, that's just not how this game works. There is no rock, paper, scissor mechanic. Um, Rusty Brown did a $5 super chat. Sub legend, I'm new to Total War. I just want to say thanks for the campaign reviews. When work is 24 7 and money is tight, your videos bring me joy. No worries, dude. I appreciate that. Thanks for the super chat. Yeah, like, I, 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 say, yeah. don't get me wrong. I want to answer your questions, but you just gotta, you've got to phrase them a bit better. I, I just can't answer that. Uh, Cassius Khan did a ten dollar super chat, ten pounds super chat. Happy New Year, Legend. Uh, you're getting me through my work day. Happy to see you streaming Wemmy Three. I really hope CA pull it out of the bag in 2024. Yeah, I hope so as well. I'm not holding my breath over it, but yeah, we'll, we'll see. We'll see. Hopefully they go back to what they were kind of doing in Warhammer Two. That'd be good. I'd be happy with that. All right, let's bring these guys up now. Yeah, yeah, they've got to be pinned down, or else there's no point. Ricky Scotty did a five dollar super chat. Quarter live one finally. Kind of stinks you don't see massive Malekith coming at high elves anymore. Have fun, legend. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That doesn't really happen, does it? Thanks for super chat though. Appreciate it. The thing is, winning battles in this game is not a case of just like bring one thing and then you win. It's a case of loads of very small decisions. At your command that you have to make constantly and so when a question is phrased how do you beat this person that I, it just it's so pointless Is it still possible to kiss of the deep, the enemy away? No, not really, because um, you can't you can't cheese that ability like you could in Warhammer 2. And even so, that was kind of a a really tedious way to do it in the first place. So I would say no, definitely not a viable technique anymore to do that. Get this one out of there. He's, he's getting smashed by that beast master. She's getting smashed. For the king. Saint Louis. Defend one. of Alarian. Winds of magic rise. They tremble. Grotesque did appeal in 25 speed. Happy New Year, Legend. Just wanted to wish you enjoy your day and the stream. All right, thanks, dude. Appreciate that. You as well. Eager for battle. Orders received. Stop that. A pace. Of the Ever Queen. All right, cool. We won the battle and really minimal damage done. Only damage done to this one, really. Which that's no big deal. Have you played BG3 yet? No, likely to play it in the next couple of days. How do you beat CA in Total War real life? Well, CA doesn't play Total War. You know, you need an individual person. So there are there are some people at Creative Assembly. I get this might be a jerk question. So there will be some people at Creative Assembly that will play Total War and some that don't. So it depends on a person by person basis uh thomas balukas did a tendal super chat hey legion finally catching a live stream uh what is good overall campaign strategy for vamps as vlad von karstein hero spamming yeah hero spamming yeah vampires have just got really good heroes thanks super chat will you stream bg when you play it probably not no Alright, cool. Alright, that sorts out that enemy to begin with. And I think that went really quite well. That's a good banner. I'm going to put that on Tyrion. 
I think we've positioned ourselves well for Can an I advance on Sampari. So yeah, that's. I'm very happy with that. High elven uh, you need to take you that off. Punch. Champion of the Ever Queen. And oh yeah, someone was saying before, why not get archery prowess? Yeah, it's just reload time reduction. That's not that big of a deal. Protector of the Ever Queen. Is Warhammer Two Magic System still better than Warhammer Three? It's getting close. Warhammer Three's latest changes bring it pretty much on par with Warhammer 2's. Maybe just a little bit behind. Obviously I would like Knowledgeable to return, but the change that they made was pretty good. Defender of Alright, now I think we can go Root Marcher. For the Phoenix King. And yeah, go Root Marcher. Duty calls. Okay, got an idea. I'm actually going to get rid of you. And I'm going to recruit another administrator. Is this one life? Yep. And then we should be able... Oh, we've also got to get a um, one of those heroes. Which I'll recruit from Angerial. Let's upgrade Angerial. Yep, get rid of this. Yep. And keep you there. By wisdom. Okay, I got a frugal noble or emollient. If we're going to go bloodline of Alarian, Alarian, then probably emollient would be best. But frugals are best to keep in your armies long term. Yeah, we need public order, especially considering it's legendary difficulty. Son of so that'll give us control. Resting a spell. That will make it apply. I cool. wield the wind. And yep. And then get rid of this, because I'm not gonna be able to get another another noble for a while. And then so we get Tyrion to recruit two units of archers. Cool! Had just enough money to make it all work. Uh, magic melee buff needs a massive duration increase. I'm talking two to four times longer. Guardian of the feet. Fair enough. Duty is purpose. Okay, then Ivress. Yep, Speak let's plainly, do that. And only of matters. My solid. What would you have of me? No, not Safari. Protector of Althwa. Yeah, okay. I can get a non-aggression pact with Illyrian. I think that's King. fine. I will see to it. The warden. Of Your request. Alariel the Ever Queen. Magic in purest form. Okay, let's move on. But Legend, why disband when you can skill respec? You're actually right, I should have done that. Yeah, you're actually right. I I haven't quite got the muscle memory in place for that, but you are right. I don't think it's going to make any difference because I don't think I'll be recruiting that character again for five turns, but you are correct. Loading lords and heroes without paying influence is kind of cheating, isn't it? I don't care. Have you seen the Gelt one man doomstack I emailed you? Um, no, I haven't seen it. So, one man doomstacks don't pique my interest anymore. Um. Gods are pleased. Yeah, I appreciate you making your one-man doomstack, but the the last few one-man doomstack videos, I just get nothing but complaints. So, I'm not really... They're just not popular in Warhammer 3, dude. People don't want to see them anymore. Shield against the darkness. So, you know, if I see an email that says, hey, one-man doomstack, I, I usually sort of glaze over it and pick something else. Sorry. True magic. Okay, time to declare war on Safari. Now, if you remember the last time we played Warhammer 3 as Tyrion, I got fucked up pretty bad by doing this. So, this will be interesting to see what happens. Attack! Troa Chess became a member for 41 months. How's the retro headphones treating you after a while? There is glory they're fine. Yeah, they're just... The reason I've got these headphones is so that I don't get... A worse headphone dint because I it, I was getting one. Hungers. That's all. They're fine. You know they're not they're not super. Yeah, you know, not super stylish. But at least I'm not going to get a headphone 
dent any worse than what I currently have. Legend glazes our emails. It depends. Okay, so just to give you some context, I currently have nearly 15,000 unread emails. It's just not possible for me to read every single email that comes through. So, you know, I don't just go from the top and work my way down. If I see something that says, um, like just looking here, I, actually I can see your email right there, Gelt One Man Doomstack. Um, so in my emails, there's things that say something like Otomo Disaster Battle. So that is more likely to pique my interest. Or, or so, what's another one that would pique? Uh, so Shogun 2 Disaster Battle. Stuff like that is more likely to pique my interest, so that's what I'm likely to click on. I just, I can't possibly read every email. I lost for battle. Full speed, Asya! Yeah, I need you to catch up. You're not going to get there this turn. True magic guides me. Master of high yeah, before magic. Before you move out of the province, we should construct something. I feel as though we need more money than growth at the moment. Growth is coming in pretty well. Bit of extra cash goes a long way. Unfathomable knowledge for my queen. SKN nine one two did a five dollar submission. Happy New Year! How do you like silver helm spears? I found them not only holding the line well and not dying, but also doing a lot of kills. Silver helm spears. Do you mean shields? I am ready to fight. Uh, they're they're okay. I'm not a huge fan of them. I'll probably just ban that fairly soon. Yeah, not not a huge fan. But they're they're okay. I don't know what to say about them. Seal. No, they're mediocre cavalry. Mediocre. I, I'm assuming that's what you meant. So the reason why I'm fighting this manually is because if I order resolve it, I know that my spearmen will take a lot of damage, and I know that I've got a tough battle coming up. Do they mean silver and guard? Silver and guard, right. Okay, well, <laughs> that makes more sense. Okay, so silver and guard are okay. I usually don't recruit them because they're inconvenient and the high elves just don't really need spearmen that much. Yeah, so they're, they're an okay unit. They were better in Warhammer 2 because the magic resistance that they had was better in Warhammer 2 than it is in 3. Because spell resistance is not really that handy. But, yeah, they're okay. They're solid spearmen. But in a race that doesn't really require that good spearmen... Like, honestly, the regular spearmen are pretty good. So... Like, I usually don't recruit Silver and Guard, but they're not bad units. You don't want to carpet bomb too much, because I found that if a unit is on the ground, it doesn't take damage. So you got to wait until they get back up a little bit before you bomb them again. You know, I've actually been playing a fair bit of uh, SFO lately. Quite like the mod. I mean, it's only the most popular mod for, for Warhammer 3. Hearing Legend say Spearman are pretty good, but my eyes long-time viewer. Well, the, the thing is, things are different in Warhammer 3. P a lot of people are still in Warhammer 2 brain, and they just can't get out of it, even though it's been two years. In Warhammer 3, Ranged units are not as good as they used to be in Warhammer 2, and melee infantry are better than they used to be in Warhammer 2. And so what's ended up happening, okay, think of it like this. 
the disparity between, okay, we're going to call this archers and this one um, spearmen. It was like archers were here and spearmen were like, were like here. And in Warhammer 3, what's ended up happening is that the gap has slowed down, has decreased by a lot. And now it's like this. Archers are still better, but spearmen are almost, almost as good. The biggest problem with them being melee infantry is that just melee infantry combat in Warhammer is not good. It's very poorly done. The only the only way to make melee infantry work is either buff their stats like fucking crazy, like with Chaos Warriors, or use them to just hold the enemy back. That's the only only thing that they're there for. And so a race like the High Elves, which have a huge amount of variety to them, they just don't need spearmen. But if you want to recruit them, you absolutely can. But it's absolutely not essential. The thing is, in Warhammer 3, it's not really about what you put in your army, but how you use it. Like, even if you build a shit army, you can overcome the odds most of the time, if you're a good player. So focus less on, oh, this unit be good, I'm going to put that in my army. Focus less on that, and instead focus on building an army that you enjoy using, and mastering how to use it. That's the best way to go about it. Because you can make friggin' anything work. Except for Grail Reliques, there's no redeeming them. the hell? If you charge at something and then it goes into hiding, it cancels your charge. Bit annoying. Just a bit. Those cavalry are not doing very well. Let's pull them back. I'm just now realizing how annoying the Phoenix's voice lines are. Yeah, well, you get used to it if you're playing it. It's not a big deal. I guess Creative Assembly didn't expect people to just, like, micro it this much. I think CA kind of expects that players are just going to throw them into the enemy and then just watch as things turn into a disorganized mess. Because that's, I think that's what Creative Assembly, how they want you to play it. <laughs> but it's not the optimal way to go about it. You know, at the end of the day, play however you want. Here. Oh no, if I bring them up here. Okay, yeah, the Silver Helms can't beat the Lothurn Sea Guard. What are they shooting at? Yeah, they're shooting at the Phoenix. If I bring the Phoenix back, they'll move into range. Actually, let's just move the Spearmen back. They have no real value here anymore. Could you make an Illyrian Reaver Doomstack work? Uh, <laughs> that's an oxymoron because it's definitely not a um, definitely not a Doomstack. You you could no 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 that's a unit that's a unit that you really can't make a spam work of that. In many situations, no. Forward. Oh, damn it! Took a lot of damage on that one. Hopefully I heal. That could be a great idea for a challenge stack. A whole stack of Illyrian Reaver archers. Oh, okay. Illyrian Reaver archers. Yes, you could make that work. Illyrian Reavers? No, they're terrible. Thoughts on a Volkmar Empire Knight Doom stack? Yeah, I think you can make that work with him. 
Yeah, it's very. It'd be very micro intensive. Probably very frustrating to use, but you could make it work. Tempting to loot it, but for that little we amount of cash, captured. it'll cost us more to repair the police settlement. Master of high magic. Okay. Servant of the king. High elven archmage. Champion of the ever queen. Oh, we fully replenish in one turn. Cool. We'll be at full strength, and this is where we screwed up every other bloody time although i'll have more forces this time and we should be able to make it work so i don't need the replenished troop right away let's go with that Tyrion rank seven okay he's on his horse that's great did i give him that banner yeah he'll need that now i haven't got much in the way of um equipment i can go speed of Assyrian for him or give my entire army pretty much before melee defense let's go with that High this one will take a little bit of attrition over the turn, that's fine. Knowledge. Light of the moon. Very well. Okay, I think this is a good start so far. Prince. What's next? Loyal servant. Cool. Thing is, after about turn 20, we'll probably be doing a lot more order resolving, but just these first few turns, being super aggressive like this, I gotta fight them manually. Or else we'll end up too damaged to be able to progress. Okay, let's move on. Is the Karl Franz Reichsguard Doomstack worth it? Actually, that's pretty good, that Doomstack. Yeah. Like, it's shit in Warhammer 2, but in Warhammer 3, yeah, you can definitely make that work. How are high of confederations of Warhammer 3 these days? Still not as good as Warhammer 2? I do feel like Warhammer 2 confederations are better. Um, but they're okay. They're tolerable. That's, that's how I put it. Not recruiting. Oh, I'm not recruiting. You're right. Um, it'll be fine. It'll be fine. Medruki, dark elves to the ignorant races are an insidious threat, Prince Tyrion. Left unchecked, their cunning and malevolence will infiltrate. Ready for orders. Hmm, okay. At your service, Scholar Supreme. Okay, so the, what I usually do in this situation here is to um to attack this army here and draw them out however they've made it so that my reinforcements Hi, wouldn't be able to uh, get in there because her zone of control I'd have to get them in here so they've they've done something interesting for sure so I could just go okay. straight for the white tower of Hoeth and that way all my reinforcements can show up it is a siege battle, but the siege battles are not as difficult as they used to be. Except for the fact there's walls, and that'll be... No, I can still I can still overcome that. So this is a little bit... A little bit unexpected with this stuff. i just got to figure out what's the best way to go about it. Because yeah, if I attack this with Tyrion's army, I can't be reinforced with Master these troops. If I attach magic. them to his army, they're not going to be able to reach White Tower of Hoeth. Yeah, they won't reach. And he needs to launch the attack because he's the only one with siege attacker. But if I attack here, they're not going to be able to help. If I besiege the settlement with this one... Okay, if I besiege the settlement with this one, then I could move this one up to here. But this one's not going to be able to participate, but that's okay. Hi, mage. Okay, that's how we do it. They will die. Althuan prevails! Asurian protects! 
Now these ones won't be able to attach to Tyrion's army. Now I really gotta concentrate in this coming fight because I have historically done badly in it. Okay, then this one backs off. Another time, villain. The traitors have And then Tyrion launches the attack here. And yeah, this one will show up. True magic. Okay. Oriya. Hang on. Should I use that on Tyrion? I, I reckon I should use it on the Silver Helms. Two minutes until they show up. No, you know what? We should use it on Tyrion. We need him to be as fast as possible because I need him to snipe her. They are not good at doing that. Because if we can kill her, they'll help all have a bad, bad morale. Okay, let's do this. Are you interested in trying out Mana Lords? It's not a per se war game, more city builder, but it'll have total warish combat. Uh, I'm interested in having a look at it. I'm definitely not making plans to cover it on the channel very much. But we'll see. Alright, so their reinforcements are coming in from there. Now they're coming in from here. I'm going to deploy over here and switch that one around this way, which will make them take longer to show up. But by the time that these ones arrive, they should be coming in. Archers. Yeah, this is always the best pay, uh, place to go in position. Okay, if I go and set up over here, that takes five minutes. Over here, okay, it doesn't much make a difference. Okay, come in from there. So, yeah. They're going to show up pretty late. There'll still be three minutes timer by the time these guys show up. But it'll take them about three minutes to get in. And I think if we can manage to kill the enemy lord, that'll make a big difference. Are you on horseback at all? No. So, these three here need to go hunt down the enemy lord as quickly as possible. These will go set up over here. Because, yeah, we could end the battle if we can manage to kill her in two, or rout her in two minutes, but we want to draw them out because we don't want to spend four hours on a siege, cheesing it. We want the siege to be relatively easy, so we want to get a, a good field battle if we can manage it. Now, she'll be hiding somewhere around here. So the Phoenix is the best option. Let's go check this area over here because she may want to go and meet up with her uh, reinforcements. Found it. Battle. Striking force. Yo, Squiggly, did $2 super chat. Off topic, but how'd you like Baldur's Gate 3? Haven't played it yet. It's on my to-do list. The Reaper. So, metal. Oh, it's Metal Wizard. Never mind, get this one out of here. <laughs> Never mind. We, we don't want cavalry fighting a Metal Wizard. It's really bad. Sword of the Azure. No swooping today? Uh, swooping doesn't really work very well in Warhammer 3. Okay, let's get into some kind of checkerboard formation because we are pretty badly outnumbered. Now we'll, we will be awaiting reinforcements, but if I click that, doesn't that speed up there? That's fine. This. Actually, I think the cavalry might be best at handling this. This is giving me deja vu. I feel like this happened last time. <laughs> I feel like we got stuck like this, trying to run it down. It just spent so much time on the ground. Remember how CA said, oh, we fixed it so that units on the ground take damage or something like that? A load of bullcrap, as per the usual. Okay, we need to, need to get over there. Now, you finish that off. I think they're better at running down lords. Eager for battle. Okay, need to get up. 
We've got to annoy them for as long as possible. Okay, could you stop and just fight it? Stop trying to run it down. Yeah, while they're nice and blobbed up, we need to bomb them. The run-down mechanics in this game are so bad. We should have done that. Just trying to lure some of their units away. This is doing a ton of damage though, this is really good. Really bloody good. they've stuffed around a whole lot. We've only got one more minute until reinforcements arrive, so that's good. And we did 16,000 damage because they've loved up too much. This is utterly ridiculous. Silver helms. Quickly now. Onward. With me. Moving out. I go. Glory awaits. Yeah, stop trying to charge her and just run. Just, just, just fucking come on. <laughs> Seriously. Oh, for fuck's sake. Champion of Alaria by Asurian. Onwards to victory. Going forth. Attack. No mercy. I think the Phoenix might be better off doing it. Because yeah, Tyr all Tyrion does is just just hit him on the ground. You need something a little bit slower. Fucking hell. Silver Helm. Onward. Utterly ridiculous. We're getting some hits in now. <laughs> oh god, it's only like taking fucking five minutes to kill this one here. Alright. Come on, you can do it. You can do it, Phoenix. Oh, fucking hell, finally. Okay, so they take a, a pretty minor morale penalty, but it's better than nothing. Okay, Tyrion's exhausted from all that, so that's not great. Alright, we also need to get a bit more organized here. This is not fantastic. Loyal. Stay over there. This is good, this is what we wanted to see. Archers! For duty! Defender of Ulf-1, with me! Annihilate them! Alright, try to distract the archers as much as possible so the enemy come at us in waves. Okay, we do have enemy forces going wide. That's fine-ish. Alright, you can round over here, see if anyone wants to be lured over to you. Heir of Anarian. Direct me. Moving out. 
We will obey without fail. Let's see what wants to chase after the cavalry. Alright. Decent amount of magic in reserves, which we can use to heal the Phoenix, no problem. Alright, try to keep the archers back while we deal with their melee infantry first, so that we don't get obliterated by their archers, because they outnumber us here. Only by a little bit. But ideally, we want to absolutely obliterate them in this fight. I need to make sure that my cavalry survive this fight so we can actually run them down. That's really important. Tyrion, just tank it. We can heal you. A little bit concerned about this one over here. That's it. This one here, just keep those archers busy. Nice. Okay, we need... I actually need you guys here, I think, to move back a little bit, because the archers here are a bit of a problem. Because they outrange us. Actually, Tyrion, go, go harass them. I can use this one here to tank. Okay, they are sending guys over here. Without question, seal. Noble. High mage. I saw arch mage. The Reaper. Archers. And so only Illyrian Reavers, not a big deal. I'll deal with that. And he's getting wrecked pretty hard. Spearman. Fall back a little a bit. Pace. Have the archers try to be Doing busy dealing with that. Understood. March. Okay, we're, they're coming at us on this flank. We need to get the cab over here or attack them. It will be done. Without fail. Air of Anarian. Ready. Black boys. Take harass. Harass, harass, harass. That's the name of the game. Don't let them Don't them get us. For duty. We advance. The most potent spells. Serve the king. Moving out. This is going pretty well, I think. Tyrion's doing very well. Getting shredded over there. Let's move them back a bit. Swiftly, swiftly. Onwards to victory. By Alario. Northern Seaguard. To battle. Actually, don't get in the way there. Move. Orio. Looking pretty good, I think. Silver help. Builder of the winds. Asor Archmage. My power is yours. Stop these archers. All the damage is being done to us because of their friggin' archers. And they're ignoring shooting at our um spears. It's kind of something new that the AI started doing. It will be done. This one here is taking too much damage, just move back. Or route, whichever. As a mage. It is done. Shall be done. Okay, I don't think the army losses is too far off now. Observe my radiance. Scython, hear me. Archers! Awaiting orders. Yes. For the king. 
There we go. Army losses. We won. Cool. Alright, bit of damage, but there's no way to win this one without taking any. They've taken way more than us. That's the most important thing here. And also, we can get a bit of recovery because we won. And we can heal the single entities. Because we've still got the siege to do this turn. I don't think the archers are going to be able to catch up with them, but we will see. Maybe they will, maybe they won't. Need the cavalry to really get in over here at some point and try to run them down. Although there's there's too many of them, we're not going to run them all down. Tyrion, try to kill this one. I don't want to have to fight her again. But yeah, look at this. They mostly ignored our spears and they just focused on shooting our archers. That's actually not bad for the AI. It's not completely stupid. That's useless. Noble. Unlimited power. Heir of Anarian. Sunfang lost. Oh yeah, so now you actually want to hit her. Cool. Whatever. We don't have to deal with her in the next battle, that'll be useful. Okay, I need the cavalry over here. There's heaps more to run down this useless spears. We primarily want to try to run down the archers. Disciple of Hoa. Of Anarian. What mods are the most asked for you to play? Would you play Hall of Constantinople mod? Does that... Does the thing from RTW when you overwhelm one unit with multiple work in Medieval 2? Yes. They're essentially the same game, so yeah. The same thing works. In fact, that works in pretty much every single Total War game. Including Warhammer. Works in Shogun 2, works in Empire Total War. Uh, yeah, I can't think of a single Total War game where it doesn't work. Maybe Troy, it doesn't work. <laughs> in, in Troy, everything is just unbreakable. Oh no, in Troy, no. Uh, I don't know. I, I just didn't play enough Troy. I just didn't like it enough to actually bother playing it and figuring it out perfectly. Just, just a really bad game. Champion of Alaria. This one here, getting decent kills. Yeah, a lot of them get away though, because cavalry are just not as good as, like, for example, Shogun 2, where they just instantly kill things. Because of the hit point system, it just takes them ages. Also, because they knock them on the ground constantly, it's just hard for them to get kills super quick. Defender of Ulf 1. Got a feeling this one might get away. Just a little chance we'll catch it. Oh no, Tyrion's just needs one more hit. For duty. Also, the more units that we kill, the slightly more we will replenish. That does make a bit of a difference. Of what about mods? The I, d I can't speak on behalf of all mods, but usually it's a mechanical thing. So, mods don't change the core mechanics of the game. Shadows have changed worth it in the Steam sale, especially after they promised to add something more, or wait until they actually do something. Um, I would wait, personally. I would wait. Like, you have to make these decisions for yourself. Um, the current value is quite low, even at that price point. Um, there are just better games out there to play in the meantime. Like, better DLC. Um, that just aren't Total War. So I just wait and see what they bring out. So this is this is what I've heard from my sources about what Shadows of Change 2 is, is bringing in. There's apparently going to be three more Legendary Heroes and a ton of new units. No more Legendary Lords. So, if that is something that piques your interest... Uh, oh, apparently Hag Lords are coming. Apparently. And that there's going to be a melee hero for Cathay. Manraj Shahi became a new member. Thanks, dude. Appreciate the support. But as for the specifics, I really don't know. Everybody needs to decide for themselves whether or not 
any particular DLC is worth it. For me personally, I don't feel like Shadows of Change offers enough value right now. Okay, if we go with this option, we can get 11% replenishment. I mean, getting 100 gold, that's pretty... I have 100 gold! But yeah, I need to make sure my army's in good shape. Them. Victorio became a member for 54 months. Hello there. Hello there. Okay, thanks for super chat. It, it, it's on sale? Yeah, I, like I said, you gotta make that decision for yourself. What's it on sale for? Let, let's, let me just bring it up and have a look. It is on sale for 20% off. Well, if you bought it on launch, it was 10% off, so... I mean, you'd be saving about $5. It's up to you. I, I still don't really think it's worth it, but... If you're really if you're really into that, then maybe it's worth it for you. Oh, I could have switched her out of that. Weaver of spells. Hmm. Weird. Siege first. I might even be able to order it over. Yeah, we can order resolve this now. Nice. I am ready. Good. Good shit. We did well enough that we didn't have to fight it manually. That's why it's important to put in a big effort. You put in a big effort, and then you get to be lazy later down the track. Because there's, there's no other army up this way. Alright, you... Full speed, attach these in here. Tyrion can yeah, recruit Venerian. one more. Safari's servant. Limitless talent. Then the next stop we want to go to is here. We want to beat these guys up. Alright. Alright, don't bother constructing anything here this turn, because I can bring both of those down here. And probably shave a turn off from that. Because, yeah, well, I started building that last turn, didn't I? Maybe just build the cheap... That one, that's not really saving a whole bunch. Because I don't really need them to reinf... Oh, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. Hang on. Effortless for such as I. If this one here Master launches the attack, I'll be able to auto resolve it. Then Tyrion can reinforce and then make his way back here faster. But you. With us. Yeah, you get your I'll ass over there. Here. Okay. Well, that means that we'll still knock a turn off with her there, next turn. Yeah, because I'm not exactly rolling around in cash just yet. Uh, this is fine here, because there'll be some public order issues, so that's not a problem. Okay, leave all that be. Alright, what do we got? My life. At Mistress of the okay, we can get... Forest. I bid you welcome. What do you get wish to deal discuss? Yes. Protector of Everqueen, your bet. You may approach. Okay, that's all good. If they're both administrators, get a new lord. Yeah, but will that save us more money, or, or that'll end up costing us more money by getting a new lord than that will save us? Like, there's no point saving 400 gold so that we can pay 500 extra. We don't need another lord. It's just extra expenses for nothing. Okay, that's all we need to do. Oh, hang on, Tyrion's got a level up. So yeah, we're gonna go down bloodline of an Aryan. Ugh. But he can't do that yet. Let's keep doing. Hang on. There's five for that. Well, that gives us bonuses for spears anyway, and and archers. So. Hmm. Maybe go sword player. Oh, hang on. No, 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 no. Speed of Assyrian. That's really good. 
Okay, we want extra replenishment this turn, and yeah. Good. Master Mage. That's all I really need her to be doing. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. Yeah, so this one here will launch the attack on Torfinu. Tyrion will reinforce and then force march back down here. So we can try to get to uh, to this before Eltharion does. He usually beats me to Alesi unless we went to these greenskins first. But then Alariel usually beats me to, to them. Okay, Invocation of Asurian. Yes, let's do that. Because that'll probably save us a fair bit of money as well. The day is ours. And that'll just save us a tiny little bit on this one here. But next turn when we're we're spending a bit more. Okay, moving on. Does AI Eltharion the Grim start on the donut? No, he doesn't go on the donut. Oh, sorry, sorry. AI Eltharion the Grim only starts in the donut. He doesn't start in the Badlands. I notice you don't generally take the yellow line in live streams with melee lords like Tyrion. Does that mean you should take the red line after magic on sometimes like Archeon? Well, it depends. So the yellow line, even on melee lords, is not super high priority most of the time, especially if your lord is already really strong. So you put a couple of points into the red line and you make your army significantly stronger and it only costs a few points. And then you can go and spend the 12 or so points that you want to put into the yellow line. It's just a matter of priorities. If you want to go down the yellow line, that's totally fine. But a lord like Tyrion is not going to kill the entire army by himself at this stage. So we're not going to prioritize that. Okay, this will be the end of them. Ready yourselves. And then we'll disband her. Uh, disband. <laughs> we need not fear disband the, the new good way. So we get it back sooner rather than later. The winds of magic guide us. And then do that. Good. Actually, I probably took a lot more damage than I otherwise would have, but it'll be fine. Occupy that. Good, that's the end of Safari. I can't believe Creative Assembly didn't realize what this would actually be used for. <laughs> the city is rank with corruption. Alright, get rid of... Hang on, no, no, no. If we get that, the corruption here is actually really bad. It's going to go down fairly quickly, though. Defender of Elf One. I never tire. Yeah, we need to hurry. Moving out. The public order will take quite a while to revolt, and yeah, this will go down a fair bit. Okay. The most gifted. Okay, and then this one, just by regular march, move to here. From there, I should be able to launch the attack in Kernthal. I don't think that... Oh, he'll be able to make it there next turn. Okay. Okay. Uh, what kind of enemy are we looking at here? Oh, they got a few units. Okay. So, maybe pick up a couple of extra troops. And also recruit a new lord here. High Elven Archmage. Okay, that means we got two administrators, so we can knock off two full turns from this. Good. And at the Shrine of Assyrian, go with growth. We want, want this province here to grow really quickly. And grow, and yep, and yep, and yep, and yep. Okay, cool. Servant of the King. Ever loyal. We could drop down the corruption by one for one turn. 
I don't think that's really worth worrying about. Winds of Magic, Power Reserve Capacity. That's so much better than what it was before. So much better. But since our reserve ca capacity isn't close, we shouldn't prioritize that. Chain Lightning or Comet of Cassandra. I actually find the Comet of Cassandra more useful in Warhammer 3 than it was in 2. It was still good, in, I mean, compared to Chain Lightning. So I think I'll go with the Comet. I guess ever since they took away your ability to... Yeah, I'll get that. Uh, ever since they took away your ability to um, direct the initial charge of the Vortex spell, Vortex spells became a little bit less effective, which I think is what they intended. They didn't want people Can I offer getting a thousand kills on a single thing. Okay, I don't want to get any deals with Tyrannoch because I might go to war with them. Kothik is probably going to die, so I bid you welcome to might the as well. Of the a wise course. Lady of Ulf, Asso Princess. But yeah, I'm probably going to pick a fight with them. Guardian of the if, Queen of Avalon. That's if the Dreadfleet don't take them out first. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. Okay, and let's move on. Wait, recruiting save lord doesn't cost influence? That's cheese? Yeah. I don't care. I am the defender of Ulf One. Shadows of Change, in my Choose opinion, is really the worst carefully. DLC we've gotten yet. I'm not even talking about the price. All of it's so poorly made and reused, it's just shit. I, I completely agree. It is the worst DLC for Total War Warhammer. Yeah, I agree. In terms of value and what you actually get, it's not good. I mean, the content is fine. It's just nothing, nothing about it is exceptional. Because it didn't come with a rework. Yeah, I'm not doing that right now. Yeah, it's not a good DLC. How would I get Imric now? Well, I wouldn't really worry about it so much in Warhammer 3 because Imric can be returned. See, in Warhammer 2, Imric dies pretty much straight away and then he can't be revived. But in Warhammer 3, you can't get to him very quickly. But if he does end up dying, which it's not likely that he will die, but if he does, you can revive him. So there's not there's not as much of a rush to go and get him. I'm pretty sure every single high elf legendary lord can be restored in Warhammer 3. Let's not forget the original Warriors of Chaos DLC. That was bad. Yes, at the time, that was very bad. You're absolutely right. However, if you purchase it now, it's very good. Because Warriors of Chaos, actually one of the most fun races in Warhammer 3. But yeah, if you're buying that for Warhammer 1 as a pre-order DLC, absolute garbage. You're totally right about that. Protector of the Ever Queen. Okay. Monster. All right, I reckon Eltharion's on his way. He's going to take... Elisaly. And that's fine. Usually what I do is sell these territories back to him to get a bunch of money because he usually gets pressured by Seducers of Slanesh super early and so we usually have to bail him out. So what we want to do is give him some settlements now make him love us because right now he likes us, right? We want to get a confederation with him as soon as possible because I find that he's in imminent danger most of the time. Slanesh usually beats him. Champion of the Ever Queen. My journey begins. Okay. Good, got out of there before the winds of magic became bad. I see the winds. Offer to join war with no, Elfarian. No, your words be true, and your time here brief. Uh, you go for the non-aggression pack. I want to get some money with it as well. My solid get the other stuff suit. later. Mage, Safari's servant. Okay, not much in the construction department here that needs to be done. Student of Teclis. I know my destination. In. They will die. They'll suffer the might. Oh, uh, maybe Safari. should have looked at manually. I will be fine. It will know the teachings of Teclis. The vortex calls. Tyrion, heir of an 
Oh Bring shit, no we can't get them toes. there either. That's fine. It'll be fine. Scholars I can get that one in there. Yeah, let me just see if this might work. There. I will study here. Carried by magic. Okay, cool. That works for me. Awaiting orders. Tyrion's army is fine. Okay, according to this, we'll be able to reach the Shrine of Loic next turn. But, if we can, we should go for Elisaeli before Eltharion gets there. But I reckon he's going to capture it this turn, if I had to guess. Yeah, if I had to guess. And that's fine if he does. Because I usually just sell it back to him anyway. Okay, I usually go dedicated to Isha. Reducing upkeep costs for spearmen, rangers, and archers. That's good. Casualty replenishment rate. Extra leadership. Physical resistance. Isha's the best. Oxygen Thief did a $10 super jet. Hello, Chief Production Warlock of Clan Assembly. <laughs> uh, my friend and I are starting a co-op play through soon, but I can't decide on either Corn or Zinch. Which one do you think is more fun? Thank you, Legend. Easily, Corn. Easily. Yeah, play Corn. Uh, although, if you play as Corn, um, your friend won't get a chance to play. Because you'll be fighting so many battles. Zinch is not fun. Yeah, Zinch is. I don't know what it is. Zinch just isn't fun. It's like r just a really boring faction. Like, all of their stuff is bullshit. Which I thought that I would have really enjoyed a bullshit faction. Hey, Radio Nash. Um, but yeah, Zinch, I just can't get into it. It's just bullshit, all their stuff. You're heavily incentivized to just bullshit your way through a campaign. Just like, hey, here's some cheat codes for you. Your armies are kind of not really that fun to use. Kind of heavily incentivized to cheese with your lords. Because your units are just not really that interesting. I don't know. Wasn't what I expected. Found it weird. Alright, do I want to recruit some more units? Probably not. I think we've got enough for now. And that'll save on cash. Order must be maintained. What rumors have you heard about the new Shadows of Change Cathay units? I haven't heard anything about the, uh, the units themselves. Just more units are coming. That's all I've heard. What's the landmark at the White Tower? Uh, I'll show you next turn. What top three changes for Warhammer 3 would you recommend to CA? Thank you for your content. Okay, well, first thing, Crave Assembly don't listen to me. So, <laughs> it would fall on deaf ears. The first thing I would change is the sieges. Um, I would just remove them from the game. <laughs> just just make everything a field battle. Just, just write it off. Sieges just suck. They just fucking suck. Just, just remove them from the game. Just make everything a field battle. Then, then I would, obviously I don't think they should actually do that. Um, then the next thing would be to fix the Dark Elf slave system. My people have or just the Dark Elves in general, I think. From our realm. I think. They're just very boring. What would be the third thing I would change? The, like, I don't feel too strongly about the Dark Elves, to be honest. You know, if you if you force my hand and say you have to change three things about Warhammer Three, like the first thing I'm like feel strongly about, definitely sieges. Either fix the sieges or remove them. I don't really trust them to fix it, so just remove it because sieges suck in this game. They just fucking suck. Um, I would say change the Winds of Magic system, but they kind of did that. So honestly, I'm pretty happy with the Winds of Magic system now. That's really what we should have gotten on launch. Um. Top three. The, no, the third thing I would change would be the. Trained by the White Tower. The okay. Oh no, they took it. Um, the third thing I would change. Asur Sorcerer. Oh my God! Fuck me. Um, the AI. I am honored. Alariel's champion. Oh, I can't actually make it. That's weird. It, it says that I can't. But I can. No mercy. Uh, do I want to bring the other ones in? Because I'm not necessarily trying to train them. Yeah. Got to get there a turn earlier somehow if we want to capture Lacey. 
I think one way to do that is to, when you capture White Tower of Hoeth, sack it with Tyrion and let the other one occupy it, and then t get Tyrion around over this way. And just let the other two lords capture Torfinu. Shaper of Fates. Yeah, I don't really need them to do that. The next step we're going to is over here. Is there construction over here that needs to be done? A little bit. Anything over Magic here that needs to be done? Probably not. Form. I bring Azurian's fire. So I at Cairn Fell, what we want to do here is actually demolish this building. Should have done it last turn. Build a barracks there and sell it to Eltharion. Because we'll get what is 40 extra relations with him. Not a low ball. And he's likely to get beaten the crap out of from Slanesh. It'll also give him a place to fall back from. I wield the winds. Yeah. Poet Move over here. Sends us pure magic. Because, yeah, they couldn't reach this. Bring me battle. This place is ours. All right. Those green skins are dealt with. Uh, would sieges be better if both sides had plus 10,000 troops? Feel like most sieges feel empty. Uh, look, I don't know. I'd have to try it out. I, I think the problem with sieges is mostly the AI. And I think AI is very difficult for them to program, since they probably fired all their programmers. I don't know. I don't think it's an easy solution to fix sieges. Yeah, they probably should have put a little bit more time and effort into um, the sieges in the actual development of the game. I, I don't know. I don't know why they thought their siege rework was going to be acceptable. Because it just it just isn't. It's not good. Oh well. Just got to put up with it. What else can we do? Uh, I'm not going to send them back. This... Master of magic. Okay, here's what I can do. Do not tarry, seeking a trial. Alt one's archmage. I can pop them in the side here next turn. Because if I build this now, it'll take four turns. But if I wait until they arrive, it'll only take three or two turns. So it'll actually be quicker if I wait until next turn to do it. So if you have a look here, Slanesh Corruption minus one. Okay, the public order will maintain overall because we've still got eight extra public order through here. And this is going to go away eventually. And I can always turn off taxes. Shield against the darkness. So we need to get barracks built there. We'll need to wait until... I might actually just hold on to the Shrine of Lowark for the time being. Speak quickly, for I must not be distracted from my vow. Maybe. We'll see. Hang on. If I want to give him the Shrine of Loic, yeah, he'll take it for a good amount of money, too. Okay. Because I'll just get it back when I when I confederate him. Yeah. Well, don't, don't do it this turn. Alright, let's move on. Alright, hang on, hang on. we got to make sure we're doing diplomacy. No. Defender of the Ever Queen. Yeah, I'm Welcome. probably going to lean towards time a confederation with them. So just don't do a defensive alliance, because I don't trust it. Every time I've done Let a defensive alliance with them, Alariel well, has conquered them. Ifrits. And by extension, declared war on me. Now, they said they fixed that shit, but I just don't trust it enough right now. Okay, let's move on. Any tips on confederating as Miao Ying when the other two lords have built up their own empires, or is it just too late? You've really got to wait. Okay, try to surround them with their empire, like hamstring their, their um, expansion. And try to wait until their legendary lords have been defeated in battle. Then they're usually willing to confederate, but there is no guarantee. Do you usually go for the Galleon's Graveyard once you kick Noctilus off the island? It depends. It depends on what else is going on. Um, if I don't have anything else going on, then yeah, sure, why not? But usually I peace out with him. Are there any updates from CA? Oh, Creative Assembly is still in, still on holidays, so they're not likely to get back into the office until late January, I think. They do have a pretty long holiday period. I'm not sure exactly, because I don't work there. But yeah, they've probably just got like a handful of people at the office. 
But the, the vast majority of people just, they're, they're on holiday. All right, court attendant is good, but we can get our own of those. More influence is good, we got money. That is not a big deal. This is not a this is not a great one. This one, recruitment cost plus twenty five percent for five turns. I'm not really recruiting that much, and it's pretty cheap. Honest, yeah. I, but I would pay for that influence, so I'm gonna do that. Vespers back as well. I think it'd be better to bring her in here. Archmage. So they're coming back this the turn, so let me just do this one first. Knowledge. Toward power. Uh, let's go with that one. Yes, so that saved us a whole turn by waiting and a lot of money. Good, let's do this one going. Okay, bring Master them back of in. High magic. Toward power. Elf ones Force defend. march him. Seems like it'll take about the same amount of time going by sea or going by land, so I think I'd rather go by land. Entering so, the heading over here to go fight Noctilus. I probably could have fought fought that battle. That's pretty easy. Oh, I'll tell it now. Okay. And then we want to recruit... Oops, wrong button. Uh, life, isn't it? No, which one was it? Was it high? Wait. Okay, Vespa is... What is she? No, that's that's not high magic. Yeah, there she is. Master of high magic. Infused by Hoet's wisdom. Good, that saves us quite a lot of time. Okay, we should upgrade Lothurn. Get that to tier 3 in 2 turns. That's nice. Good, and all this stuff's nice and cheap. Hi! And then just use her again in a few turns. So I have to spend the points first. <laughs> That's so so good for the high elves to do that. Okay, we need to get that over there. The most gifted. Get them moving ahead. True magic guides me. Do not tarry. The archmage marches. Okay, so Noctilus is about equal in strength to us. Okay, that's fine. And he's still fighting Tyranoch, right? Yeah, so we, we'll hopefully have him pincered. So that'll be good. Public order here is not too bad. Although we do have this going on at the moment, so that's going to reduce public order by four. Once that's finished. My life for Tor. Okay, let's move on. Have you been following Darkest Days, aka Lord of the Ring mods for Attila? No, I haven't really. Could have administered the barracks. Yeah, but then they wouldn't be able to keep up with Tyrion. So I don't think it was worth it to save, what, 100 gold? It, it just wouldn't be worth it. Especially considering how much profit we're going to get off it. Um, I, I need them to keep up with Tyrion. Hey, Legend, love your community. Sorry, love your streams. Do you think CA listened to the community and is working... Or is about to work on if a new engine. Seek is for the greater good, my sword is yours. Uh, from what I've heard, they have tried to suss out a new engine out of what they've got. But they just haven't really invested that much into it. From what I'm hearing, which could be, t could be bullshit. So don't take it as gospel. But they are planning on making a Total War game in Unreal Engine 5. That's what I've heard. It could be bullshit. There's a lot of misinformation going around at the moment. We are not going to know until any official announcement. So all the speculation and all the leaks that I've received, it is really hard to gauge what is true and what is false. Yeah. Okay. Okay, okay, okay. So... 
I wonder if I should have kept Vesper there, because we have about to build up again. Um, Oxygen Thief did a 5 super chat. If Thrones of Decay is ass, will we see your parody script of CA's production team? I've chuckled at the thought ever since you mentioned it. Uh, we'll see. We'll see. It, it was it was very brutal, so... Um, I don't know. On one hand, I think it's pretty funny, but on the other hand, it's... it's uh, I don't know. We'll see. Thanks for Super Chat. What is okay, this? so we want to give I him... Not a low -born trade Karen Thill. Cool, we can get... We can get a ton of money. Hang on. Maybe, maybe hold off on that until he gets more money. Maybe give him the Shrine of Loek this turn. So that gets pretty much everything that we need there. And we could maybe trade Karen Thill for a military alliance once we've done this. Because I think that if we do it the other way around, we won't get the military alliance. Right, we'll do it that way. Expects. Let your words be true. And your time here. Reaches. Yeah, there we go. We get the military alliance and absolute ass loads of cash. Which we could wait until next turn, but the primary purpose of what we're doing here isn't necessarily to make shitloads of cash, but rather to make Eltharion love us, so that in seven turns, if he doesn't expand, or in fact decays. Yeah, because he's at war with uh, Slanesh. Well, if he captures Torakari, maybe... Well, we'll see. Um, that he'll confederate. Because, yeah, this is... The gift given to your Vress takes a long time to decay. But if I wait one more turn, I could get a much bigger payout. I think we'll wait an extra turn and get the payout. For the vortex. At your service. Okay, get ready to Magic's advance unleashed. on thingy. So be it. I see the winds. Even the lawmaster could not. Hi, mage. Yeah, that's good. I'll take that. Okay, looking at things here. Yeah, leave that. The true of yeah, we can offer to join war against the Scourge of Cain. I was just waiting for a good opportunity to actually do it. Like, that's, that's not a whole lot of money, so let's just wait and see. We might be able to get more off her. And maybe push it over the line for a military alliance. Maybe. Because that will help with confederations. Be sure you do not waste my time. Okay. What? Sorry, what if you do overturn payments so that he'll fall behind more? Overturn payments? What do you mean? What if you do overturn payments? You mean payment over time? You can't you can't do that in Warhammer 3. Yeah, you can only do once off payments. Alright, we've got the Invocation of Vol ready to go. Yeah, let's do that now. Did we get anything good? Emerald Coal is pretty good. That is okay. That is okay. That's not great. I usually like this one for Tyrion. Because it gives him Seed of Rebirth. That's very good for him. Yeah, let's give him that. <laughs> Bloody sticky pieces of Your shit. Orders. Yeah, he doesn't have a talisman on anyway, so that works well. I mean, we can heal him with magic, but this way it doesn't cost magic. Alright. Let's move on. Yeah, let's move on. Um, Ali Cherigi did a $5 super jet. Just purchase Manscaped set on your suggestion. I don't think I have been ever surprised by product quality this much. Thanks. 
Uh, well, th I'm really happy to hear that. Like, I just, like, I don't really care that much about shilling. I, I don't care that much. Like, um, I just want to promote brands that you guys like. And I've had overwhelmingly positive feedback from you guys with, in regards to Manscaped. So that's what I'm happy about. The last thing that I want to do is, is like, promote garbage. By the way, guys, have you played Raid Shadow Legend? No, I'm just kidding. Um, Oxygen Thief did a $5 super chat. Okay, last one, but if you do the script, I'll donate $100. Probably more depending on what all is said. Love your stuff. Have a good day and Happy New Year. All right, thanks, Super Chat. Um, I'm assuming this is for the same... All right, that script. Um, I'll think about it. I'll think about it. Yeah. yeah. It's the kind of thing that could be hilarious, but it could also backfire in my face. I think that there was a very short window of opportunity where I, I should have done it and I didn't take the opportunity to do it because I was still in the partner program then and I knew that if I had released it they would have kicked me out I ended up getting removed anyway um, but I didn't know that was going to happen well I didn't really get removed so much as they said hey you should leave <laughs> and then I said okay I'll leave so I wasn't kicked out but I was pretty much kicked out and, I, you know, they didn't know I was going to make that script. Alright. It's good that these beastmen showed up there, because I'm obviously going to kill them. That that couldn't have been a better spot for us, because we're not under any serious pressure here, right now. We'll have time to replenish, so that worked out very nicely for us. Um, Prince Elf do not if we now give the settlement Cairn Thel over, we can Prince now get less Prince. money. <laughs> the deal has gotten worse. Hmm. Speak plain, and only of matters of business. It's not about the money. It's about sending a message. Speak I should have done it last turn. For I must not be distracted from my vow. Yeah, I should have done it last turn. The whole point of this is to get the uh, military alliance. I should have done it for two thousand eight hundred. Oh well. Sometimes you gamble and you lose. That's just how it for is. For the fallen. But, we're at 169 there, so that is on the way to what is required to get a confederation. Let's speed it up a little bit, because I've got a little bit of influence here. To sort of get it up there quicker. But don't spend too much, because I don't have heaps right now. I'll get more soon. Now, no point building a outpost here, because if I'm going to confederate them, then they're just going to get wiped out anyway. Okay, over here, there's a few things we need to upgrade. I need to get another administrator. Yep, you'll do. Master of take high them out of the put them back in. Scholar and then... Um, ADR, sorry, I got a few super chats to read here. ADR did a 100,000 IDR super chat. Hey Legend, do you think the new update made siege battles useless now? Since it feels like we always forced to get the army losses before we could win through victory ticket most of the time? No. No, look, I think the siege update has made it harder to cheese, and I think that was the purpose of it. They just see a lot of people cheesing it too easily, and so they want to make it a little bit more difficult. Unfortunately, it doesn't do much to make it more fun, which is what they should be prioritizing. So, um... We'll have to just wait and see. It's clearly just step one of many to make sieges actually work. So for Muncha, became a member for 17 months. Morning, pleasure as always. All right, thanks, dude. You as well. All right, let's build things a bit cheaper than it was. Let's upgrade Angerial. We need to get one of these going so that I can research this. Because I'll be um, building up the uh, other one there. Uh, Bernard NK did a 20 euro super chat. Cheers to a new year, mate. I wish 2024 will be more kind to you than the time since Warhammer 3 launch. It's been rough. Anyways, don't wait too long with BG3. That game could potentially hook you good. Okay, we'll see. Uh, yeah, thanks, dude. I appreciate that. Yeah, I've had, had a rough couple of years for sure, but yeah, I got through it. It'll be fine. It can't, it can't possibly be any worse than 2022 and 2023. <laughs> it just can't get any worse. Surely not. Alright. 
Yeah, yeah, let's get that going. And I can't get any more wizards. And wizards are not the extreme priority anymore since Entrepreneur is gone. Um, I definitely want that eventually, but getting to there right now isn't much point. That would be good. Yes, let's get that. That way we can get artillery. Yeah, that'd be really good. Because we've got global recruit... No, just local recruit. Who gives us global recruit Alaria's reduction? Champion. Is it... Oh, no! I'm not going that way in this one. Uh, anyway. <laughs> Still gonna get it. Man, bloodline of... of um, of an Aryan is so not efficient. So not optimal. I forbid it. The greatest. They're probably gonna run away. Oh no, they don't. All right, looks like we can get away with an order resolve here. Yep. I lost the battle. Good. And we'll take the ransom they captives are free there. To go. If we work together, we can get Legend to 400k subs. Dude, I've been at 400k for two years. I think you mean 500k. I don't want to go backwards. Alright, looks like we're going to be able to select Bloodline of Anarion this turn. God, I hate that skill. Like, whatever I said I would. Hang on. Let's speak to Illyrian. Join war against the Dreadfleet. In exchange for th no. Okay, they offer four seven four. Let's have a look to Tyrannoch. Maybe Tyrannoch will give us a better Your deal. Your best. Welcome. What would you have the Asur do? Hey, it's a little bit more. Of course. I don't need to drag Eltharion into it. It won't make that big of a difference. Plus, if I peace out, that'll just end up pissing off Eltharion. Trained All right, looking at this now. You too, yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's heading towards two thirty seven. That's good. Defender of Elfwar. <laughs> if we work really hard, we can get him to 300k subs. No. There is glory no. to be won. Uh, do you think Homo Erectus Doomsday is viable in Pangaea Total War? Well, let's wait until that game actually comes out. An archmage is accustomed to victory. Magic in purest form. Infused by Hoet's wisdom. Purest sorcery. Modest did a 10,001 super chat. Hey, Legend. Hope you have a great 2024. Vorzinch, do you think a pure Vortex Beast Doom stack is best generally, or do you think it's worth mixing Lords of Change? Um, yeah, no, the, the uh, Mutilus Vortex Beast is definitely better than Lords of Change, but it depends on who's commanding it. So if you've got Kairos, I'd probably go with Lords of Change. But if you've gone with the changeling, I'd go with Mutilus Vortex Beast. Um, I wouldn't put... It's up to you how you want to go about it. It's, it's obviously, if you're at that point, you've won the campaign anyway. I think we can go with another resolve here. Yeah. Who wants to bloody hungers. watch a siege? Says nobody. <laughs> nobody we wants to watch a siege. It. Oh, okay, he's stronger than us now, but that's probably because our strength ranking went down due to this, but we'll recover pretty quick. Uh, I do need this guy to to attempt to get some influence at some point. Servant of the king. Okay, here we go. Ugh. This line here is so much better than this line, but whatever. I have to get the whole lot. There we go, Bloodline of Anarion. It begins. Master of High Magic. Alright, since they are seemingly a lot stronger than us, let's let's recruit a few more units, because our our finances are pretty good now. I 
All right, how much wind. construction is going to be done here next turn? Doesn't look like anything is going to need to be built. Hi, so Mitch. can you... I can't reset her skill points because she doesn't have... <laughs> Doesn't have any skill points to reset. Need that one to grow a bit faster. Can't cheese all the provinces. Best to focus on attain. All right, cool. Let's see what more diplomacy we can do. Can I offer assistance? No, I'm probably going to declare war on you. At your set. Prince of Elf One. No. And burn the coastline. Minus four control Protect overall. Yeah, everything. comparatively, because you get minus one over here, you miss out on on here, so you get that's minus two essentially. Oh, global recruit capacity. Reduce upkeep cost all armies. Diplomatic relations with high elves. Oh, this is so much better than this. This is so bad. <laughs> By comparison. Oh well. Oh well, you know, whatever. Doesn't all have to be efficient. Alright, moving on. Hang on, we got some skills over here to distribute. Trained by the White Tower. And all these levels on this turn. Shaper of fates. I see the winds. Tyrion, heir of an Arian. Okay, we can see here they've got a military presence of 16. That means that they've got an army of 16 here and an army of 16 here, essentially. So... Hmm. If they bring... So if they bring their 32 units down at us, they outnumber us significantly. And we're damaged. We'll recover pretty quick. Maybe I shouldn't have auto-resolved. Eh, we'll be fine. We'll be fine. When do I ever struggle against Vampire Coast? It's happened. Uh, do you think that removing butt ladders and reworking the walls and towers would make enough to make sieges fun? They definitely should remove butt ladders. That, that they absolutely should do that. Butt ladders make no sense. They're pretty much universally despised. They make, they make walls trivial. Yeah. I definitely think they should try out removing butt ladders. I am Tyrion, Maybe only make it so that elite infantry have access to butt ladders, but basic infantry shouldn't have them. No. Is the Sunfang battle still bugged? No. Do you want to reset Tyrion's points and wound him? Part of me does want to, yeah. Future of CA when? Yeah, wouldn't that be funny? Future of Creative Assembly. Well, uh, I think they'll be fine. I think they've just... They've taken a hit. They've felt it. And they're going to make adjustments accordingly. They could have made the adjustments a lot sooner and saved them a lot of money, but yeah, hopefully now it's going to be okay. Hopefully. You know, maybe I'm being optimistic, overly optimistic, but I, I feel like the worst of it's over. Andrew Matthews at a five pence of budget. Now that you went bloodline of Venerian, can you respect Tyrion to the better line? <laughs> yeah, I definitely want to. Thanks, Super Chat. Great powers the world over are mobilizing for war, Prince Tyrion. Okay, there's the battle for Sunfang, which that's a great weapon, but if I do that right now, I'm just going to damage myself. They've increased their forces. Control. Um, what I could do, ever vigilant, since they wouldn't be able to reach me from here, what I could do is just do the quest battle and just see how things play out here for another turn. And that gives me a time to recruit Master and also to replenish the casualties a little bit and replace the relic sword, which is of no real value. Hmm. 
shield of Alaria. No. Or I could set up a trap for them at Taurus Sethi. See, if I occupy it with this lord here Poets and put Tyrion in all. ambush stance, this one here, because there's definitely an army there. 100% guaranteed. There's no way it, there isn't an army there. Its minimum size is... Hang on. Let's say if there were 20 units there, the minimum size of the army there is at least 14 units. That's the smallest it can possibly be. And if we put Tyrion in ambush stance here, we can set up an ambush. Shield against the darkness. And try to, rather than dealing with them both at the same time, take out one of their armies first. Because we should fight the Sunfang quest battle when Tyrion's not busy on the campaign map. I think that's what we should do. Alright, looking over here. Do we have constructions? We don't. Nope. Over here. Uh, no, that's... Uh, yeah, we can do that. It's not a big deal. Alright, you launch the attack. Lothurn, Seaguard, Doomstack, when? I usually do that around the mid-campaign. Yeah, mid-game. Not, not in the early stage of the campaign. Uh, Lucius the Eternal did a 5 pound super chat. Love you. Have you read any 40k novels? 400k subs, here we come. I haven't read any 40k novels. I'm still trying to get through the fantasy novels. Through Audible. There's so many of them. High Elven Archmage. You'll go in ambush stance as well. And I'll put her on recruit stance. I think we can get away with an auto here. We need not yeah, fear that's fine. Our lessers. Send the nobles to scout. I don't need to. I know what they've got. Okay, like I said, it was minimum fourteen. So there's Noctilus there. Champion of the Ever Queen. Now the army from here definitely can't reach here even by force march. So we want Noctilus to make this attack now. So if we go into ambush stance, not necessarily to try to ambush him. The chance of success is pretty low, but to trick him into making a stupid attack. Replenishment looks pretty good. I bring Azurian's fire. The Archmage marches. General Kong did a 10 euro super chat. Hang on. I actually don't want to I. trigger an ambush. Because if he trigger an ambush and fail, sometimes the, the other reinforcements don't show up. So I actually want him to... An archmage is accustomed to victory. ...to get to the there settlement. I must go. Destiny lies I there. To uh, I, hang on, let, let me just get through this turn here and I'll read out the super chat. Just give me a second. You may approach. What would Can't you spend have all day reading lady? super chats. I, as much as I appreciate them. Got to progress. All oh, that looks good. How are we going towards Confederation here? Yeah, we need to get that relative fa uh, strength faction strength down, uh, which will take five more turns of him not capturing any territory, which it doesn't look like he's going to because Nakari seems to be focusing on him. Uh, Alariel seems to be gridlocked against them. That's good. That's good. Yeah, stalemate over here benefits us greatly. Okay, and let's move on. Hang on. Our people are being tainted. Yep, public order here is... It's still got a bit more to fix up. Can always turn off the taxes. All right, let's move on. Yep, I've done everything that I can. Let's see what we can do. Uh, General Kong did a 10 euro super chat. I would love bat letters being removed. Heard that the reason they are still around is that it would do something to any unit from both sides of the walls in that they cannot get on the walls. Yeah, maybe. Well, that just shows the if inherent flaw of the, the design of the game then. Sean Ray did a 10 super chat. How are you going, Legend? I've uh, been loving the variety in streams lately. It's nice to see some Warhammer gameplay despite all this happening. Yeah. All right. Thanks, dude. I appreciate that. Thanks for the chat. Yeah, I'm going to throw in Warhammer in the mix. The videos don't do so well as the as the historicals, but the streams do better than, than the historical ones. It's a bit weird. Um, no, not right now. What about Imric? What about Imric?
if they end up losing this army, that'll make it even easier to get a confederation with him. Although I think all of the dominoes are in place for it to happen. He's going for it. He's going for it. He's going for it. Okay, all of the forces show up. The auto resolve is obviously not good. I wasn't expecting the ambush to succeed. The auto resolve is not good. But yeah, we can definitely work with this. The, the biggest problem that we're going to face here is that our forces aren't going to show up at the start. So it might be best if we lure them forward, but actually have all of our reinforcements show up in the rear. Which we can't do because there is no rear. If we lure them over here, that could work. Good thing there are trees. Hmm. Honestly, where we're coming from here is not too bad. It's nice in the open. I was wondering, what became of the Total War YouTuber collaboration you had put in place for smaller Total War content creators? Is it still you? Yeah, yeah, it's still going. It's still going. I mean, it's, there's only a limited amount of stuff that I can do at the moment, especially for the historical Total War guys. Uh, but it's mostly providing advice for them at this stage. Like, I try to raid them whenever I can, but at the same time, I just don't livestream as much as I used to. But yeah, it's still going. Ah, oh, Tyrion's showing up from here. That's not what I wanted. Oh, no. Oh, no. Four minutes. Master of sorcery. I, I think I can make that work. We can hold out for four minutes. I can always turn that around back over here if I need to. So What's not this defeat trade again? It's crap. Um, it's nothing worth worrying about. Right. I think we're technically the attacker, so it doesn't look like they're advancing on us. Alright, if that's the case, good. Yeah, because we had the ambush. Even though he was advancing on us, strategically, he's taking a passive stance by the look of it. Okay, that's good. Good, 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 good. Why don't you speed up the turns? Is it just because of the live streams? Because I, I like to keep an eye on what happens during the live streams. I don't want to. I don't want things to be skipped. And also, while end turns are going on, it allows me to read the chat, which is otherwise um, uh, it's difficult to read the chat otherwise. While gameplay's going on. All right, now they're they're advancing. Now we can withdraw from this and it'll be fine if we need to. Are they advancing or not? We've still got to wait another two minutes for Tyrion. I can bring him in right now if he comes over this way. Now Tyrion's army on his own should be able to beat Noctilus's. Alright, let's advance these spears, because these are just the garrison. And let's see if we can waste ammunition of the Necrofex Colossus, because that would not be good use of their ammo. They've only got 22 shots. That's actually a more small amount, but yeah, it'd be good if they used it up. Low value kills for him. Okay, here comes Tyrion. You know what, Tyrion? I think you're in a position to advance over there and kill him. So while they're shooting at that and their army's maneuvering around, a little bit. Over here. 
response. Yeah. Awaiting orders. Going abroad. The greater good. Okay, have these start advancing in the back here. What's this doing? The Reaper. Sunfang lost for battle. How did they show up? Servant of light. He didn't Tyrion. use that one's ability. Tireless. Going for two battles. Still just shooting at Garrison. Forward. That's fine. Orders received. Destroy them. Eager for battle. By Asurian. Well, they're not going to last that long. Defender and Tyrion's doing some good damage on a very advance. dangerous unit, so that's good. Yeah, keep them up front. Okay, this is not an amazing formation. Let's try to organize this a little bit better. Can't really use the Phoenix in this battle here because... They would, it would just get instantly shot down. Too many guns. Anarian. You know what, right now it's pretty good that he's actually gone bloodline of Anarian because he's taken less damage and he's got more health. And more melee attack. No mercy. Annihilate them! Do general troops from settlements provide any leadership, for example, bonus food effects when being killed? I'm not sure what you mean, sorry. Okay, he is... He's anti-large, but Tyrion should have way higher melee attack than him. Moving out. Could maybe Battle try to awaits. cycle charge into him. I go with me. Advance forward. Oh, shit, it's going for my main fucking troops. Sunfang lusts for battle. Uh, Giga Johnson did a 500 ISK super chat. Nice to see you. Just play and have fun. All right, thanks, dude. Appreciate that. Eager for battle. Going for I need to tireless. take out the Necrofex more Onward. than I need to take out Noctilus. Doing my duty. Sign up. Lovin Seaguard. Heir of Anarian. I go. Moving out. All right, change of plans. Let's advance on the Necrofex and shoot it because Tyrion is just not killing it quickly enough. Let's advance on it and kill it. Azure warrior. Striking four. Doesn't have that much ammo, it's not that big of a threat. And we're almost in range. And they've got a whole bunch of their army back here. Sword of the Asur. Okay, maybe actually the spear unit should be in the rear a little bit. Hang on, hang on, hang on. Don't get in too close. Hang on, back off, back off. Stay out of their range. Good. Don't use it on that one. Shield of the Ever Queen. Okay, we're attacking them from two fronts here. This is going pretty well, I think. It started to play high off music, so that's good. We got him. Necrofex going down. That's the only super dangerous unit, and then the other one is Noctilus, which I'll figure out. Him in a minute. Forward, moving out. I go. Onwards to victory. All right, if they advance on us in this kind of formation, they're doomed. Onward. This is terrible for formation for them. With me. Victory awaits. Yep, them shooting at this doesn't matter at all. That's why I put them out here so they could soak up the shots. Champion yeah, not this doing too much damage to Tyrion. Glory awaits. Tireless. Fourth one. 
Advance! Striking four! I go! As you say! Okay, you guys just advance. Well, retreat a bit backwards. Onward. Servant of light! Sometimes having super damage units like this can actually be really handy. If we can get make Noctilus go backwards, that'll also be quite handy. Depends what he's trying to target. Bernard NK did a five-year super chat. Uh, do you know any uh, real-world battle tactics that work in real life, but not in Total War Warhammer? Uh, <laughs> short answer, yes. Uh, most real-world tactics can sort of have the mindset be applied in Warhammer, but application probably not so much. Things like hammer and anvil, routing the enemy army, that doesn't really work so well in Warhammer since the way you win battles is just kill the enemy army. Of the wind. That's kind of what you're supposed to do. The Reaper with me. Unlimited power. Witness true magic. Ready. Okay, this one's here to turn around a little bit. Archers. Trying too hard to shoot. There. Watch out. See, even with Air of Anarian, or Bloodline of Anarian, oh shit, watch out. Still not just like one shotting stuff. That's why it's a really bad line to go down. Especially for very hard battle difficulty. Or something. Moving out. Direct me. Excellent. It is my goal. I summon the wind. Tyrion's having a really hard time beating some not particularly special units there. We'll move this one back a bit. Move them back. They're getting shot too much. Rotate around. Safe for that one to come in now. Okay, finally he's killing off that hero. True magic is mine. My journey continues. Okay, finally kill that hero, that's good. The most potent spells. We will obey. Defend order! Asur Archmage! Still got this Phoenix, it just wasn't safe for me to use it in this battle. Just because you've got a unit doesn't mean you have to use it. Stop bullying my wizard. Okay, you should have just hold him back there. Let's get it out of here. Sleepo did a five little super chat. What Warhammer 3 campaign has improved the most since launch? Much love and Dark Elves have been a bit less boring. Yes, they are a bit less boring than before, for sure. Still not really my cup of tea. Um, improved the most since launch. I don't know. You're going to have to give me... I don't know. Um, Nakai? Yeah, Nakai the Wanderer. There you go. Thanks for super chat. <laughs> not really not sure. So, a bit of damage, but they took significantly more, and it's likely the other army is nowhere near as dangerous. 
So this was good. This is the best case scenario here that what happened. Total War is not a teacher of real life battles in any means. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. It's just it's just a game. Like you playing Total War doesn't mean you're Alexander the Great. Right? Don't you're deluding yourself if you're thinking anything like that. Delusions of grandeur. Couple of units recover, that's fine. I will take the money, because I think our recovery will they be may fine. Live for a price. But it's good that Noctilus gained no experience from that, because if he had recovered, he would have gained experience. Because I think at level 18, he gets his Necrofex mount, making him significantly more dangerous. Is the Chaos Dwarf DLC worth it, discount in your opinion? Um, I can't tell you whether or not any DLC is worth it. Honestly, I, I feel like it's a little bit overpriced even when deal uh, even with the discount that's currently on offer. But if you're really into Chaos Dwarfs, then, you know, it's a good DLC. Is it worth it? I can't, I can't answer that for you. Like, I just can't. It's not possible. Unfortunately, the quality of DLC coming out of of Total War in the past 24 months are just not bangers. They're just, they're just not. Like, they're okay, but they're just not bangers. It's hard to go like, yes, you need this DLC. Because none, you don't need any of the DLC. Not really. They didn't make any of it absolutely essential. Alright. Master of high magic. So Champion another rank up for Tyrion. Weapon strength and bonus versus large. Okay, let's go with that. Okay, it's all good. Yeah, need more replenishment. Okay, so the army sitting over there is of size 16, sitting at White Peak. I wield the winds. Hoef sends us. Hoef sends us. For my queen. Sunfang hungers. They are free to go. Yeah, look, when it comes, like I said, when it comes to DLC, you really just need to make up your own mind about it. I'm just not going to try to shill any of it. You know, you, you've got to make up your own mind. I'm not ever going to say you need to buy this DLC or else you're missing out for Total War. You have to make up your own mind from now on. Because I might personally like something and recommend it. And this, this happens. It happens quite a lot. I might personally like something and recommend it, and then they'll buy it, and then they don't like it. And then they fucking blame me. They're like, oh, I bought it on your recommendation, and I didn't end up liking it. Fuck, man. Welcome to planet Earth. I don't know. <laughs> Shit. Fine, I won't recommend anything anymore. You make up your own mind. High Elven Archmage. Which is what people should be doing in the first place. Don't rely on YouTubers to get your opinions. You need to form your own opinions. Uh, okay, if I bring it in like this, it's going to take attrition. What orders? But if Tyrion, okay, Tyrion might be able to to do this. I see the wind. Yeah, that'd be better, I think. For the vortex. This will just minimize the amount of attrition we're going to take. That's a lie, you always say get Ica Claw. I'm saying if you're going to play Skaven, then you're missing out by not getting Ica Claw. That's that's different. One prevails. I'm not Assyrian saying, I never protects. say, you have to get, play Ica Claw. Because if you're not interested in Skaven, you're not going to be interested in Ica Claw. But I'm saying if you're interested in Skaven, not getting the Ica Claw DLC, you are going to miss out. They will know the teachings of Tempest.
But yeah, I just really want to encourage people to try to um, think for themselves and just make Master up your own minds. Of high magic. As much as you age. can. Okay. Moving out. Can Pure we... Magic. Yeah, it looks like we can reach White Peak next turn. No. From there. For Ulfran. We should have done that while the other person was here, but it's only going to be a basic one, so that's fine. Public order here is pretty bad. There's no positives. Oh, because of Tyrion being a bitch. I need to get Sunfang as quickly as possible. Infused Actually, with this one here, I may need the public order building. Or else there's going to be a revolt real soon. High Mage! The Arch Mage marches! Shaper of Fates. Let me keep that. Do you think Albion will ever be added to the game? Uh, Albion is already in the game. It's over here. <laughs> you mean the faction? No. Uh, look, I don't know. I don't know. I, I don't think so. I think it'd be a low priority. Um, I think if if any race is going to be added, the first one is likely to be like Dogs of War. Um, that'd be the 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 first one that they would. If they're going to add any more races, which I don't know if they're going to, I've heard. I've heard very little about new race packs. Then the next one I've heard of is Araby, possibly. And then maybe uh, Kuresh and Ind. Probably Ind first. Um, because then it would make sense to fill up this side of the map. Albion isn't going to add anything to the game, really. I just don't think it's going to be a big seller. So I don't think it's going to be a high priority. And if I had to guess, I don't think it's coming. Defender of Alpha. If I had to guess. Could be wrong. I don't know what Creative Assembly is up to, so. We'll just we have to wait and see. Nippon. I haven't heard anything about Nippon. Um, I think that that one's unlikely, but it could happen. Any any Warhammer race is possible. This is this is kind of the this, this is the information I'm working on. Creative Assembly want to keep working on Total War Warhammer 3 and keep making DLC until Warhammer 40k comes out, Total War. So that is roughly 2027. So that is three to four years from now, depending on delays, right? So once Warhammer 40k comes out, they are not going to give two shits about Total War Warhammer. They're going to throw it out. The, that's the future. It's, it's over. When Total War and Warhammer 40k comes out. We're looking at about three years. Now, if they get two DLC out a year, they just are never going to get to the point of getting those those factions out. Um, so no matter which way you slice it, I think it's never truly going to be 100% finished. Hi, Elvin I really can't see them... Um, putting, like, coming out with more DLC when Warhammer 40k is, is out. I just, I can't see it happening. Could be wrong. Could be wrong. But I, I just don't, I wouldn't hold your breath over it. Okay, let's get, let's get that one. You must restore order. Alright, I think I've got one of the heroes available. One of the lords. I think this one's back. Yep, she's back. Cool. High Elven so that'll shave off a couple of turns. Well, one turn. Save a bit of money. Yeah, we want to get that one going. We also need to research this. Okay, money's a little bit tighter. And building this up to tier three is not high value. Student of Teclis. So silly. <laughs> it's so silly, but hey, it works. So whatever. But I do not cheese. You shouldn't do it. Let I'm listening. Prince of Elfwan. Count not. Guardian of the Phoenix Crown. Okay, how are things going with them over here? Let your words be true, and your time here 
brief. It's getting there. So I think four more turns we have to wait. Master of magic. Yeah, this one stays just out of range of Nakari there. That what they're doing here is just pointless. The day is ours. That is a tactical mistake. The public for fantasy and 40k are not the same and never have been. Yeah, I understand that, but it's a case of um, allocating resources. So, from my understanding, and don't don't get me wrong, I don't know what's going on with Creative Assembly. I'm making guesses based on past behavior. Now, this, here's some past behavior that that you can take into consideration. Um, Three Kingdoms got canned during the production of Warhammer 2 DLC. That is largely because Warhammer 2 was just massively out outperforming Three Kingdoms. It's not like Three Kingdoms DLC wasn't profitable, because DLC is cheap to make. Even, even stuff that isn't selling particularly well usually makes a profit at Creative Assembly, because they don't have that many people working on it, and it's relatively quick to get it out. So even if it doesn't sell to their expectations, it still makes a profit. So if you've got one game performing at a certain level, Warhammer 2, and another game performing at another level, Three Kingdoms, Creative Assembly has the mindset of let's let's focus more on Warhammer 2 and can Three Kingdoms. Instead, let's make Three Kingdoms 2 sort of thing. So what I think will happen is the same sort of situation. Warhammer 40k will come out. It'll have three times the player count of, of Warhammer Fantasy, assuming it's good. And it'll sell DLC at a better rate than Warhammer Fantasy. And so Creative Assembly will go, well, let's stop making stuff for Warhammer Fantasy because Warhammer 40k is selling so much better. That's kind of their past behavior. And Creative Assembly, they might say, we're sorry, but they're not sorry. They're going to continue their typical mindset because they don't believe that they're wrong. Okay? Um, so they'll probably continue doing the same stuff that they've always done. Because history repeats itself, and with, especially with Creative Assembly. And I, I just don't see them supporting Total War Warhammer beyond three more years. I just don't see it happening. I could be wrong. I could be wrong. I'd be happy to be wrong. I just don't see it. Yeah, I think anybody that gives Creative Assembly the benefit of the doubt at this point, you really need to, like, <laughs> have a look at the history of Creative Assembly and Trained just go, really? White Tower. Really? Oh, White Peak is not a walled city. They never got to Tor Anrock. Champion of the Ever Queen. Very well. The Phoenix Court will never agree. Hmm. I wield the winds. Magic yeah, we can launch the attack form. with just... Was just this one Master here. Of high magic. And that way we can move them forward. Because the next thing we do is attack Tyrannok. They don't have any friends. Alright, if we order resolve this... No, we should fight this manually because bloated corpses are units that we can uh, use to minimize our own casualties because we've got a Flamespire Phoenix, which we can heal, which we'll need to heal after, after that. So yeah, let's fight it manually. But yeah. Predicting what Creative Assembly is going to do is very difficult to do, but... I don't know. Giving them the benefit of the doubt, it just it just doesn't seem like the thing to do. <laughs> we skipping Empire 2. The next Total War game, the next historical Total War game, from what I've heard, is going to be similar to Empire 2. It's not exactly Empire 2, from what I've heard. But the next one is Gunpowder Era 19th Century, from what I've heard. Not 18th Century, 19th Century, from what I've heard. Weaver of the Winds! I don't know if they're going to call it Empire 2 or World War 1, just not sure. Really not sure. Total War Victoria? Yeah, I guess that's what I've heard. Alright. 
Do I want to come in from here? Because I don't like to be in the trees when we've got an all archer army. Yeah, that seems fine. All we have to do is survive for four minutes. Should be fine. Especially if we hide. Their army's slow, they're not going to catch us. Here comes Napoleon too. Maybe. Maybe. Supposedly set after Napoleon. Again. Could be bullshit. Don't, don't like, don't go run off to the Reddit and say, Legend of Total War said that the next Total War game is going to be this. I've heard rumors. That's it. Just rumors. I've heard it from a couple of sources. We'll find out soon enough. Yeah, the next Total War game may be friggin' Mesopotamia. Although, from what I've heard, Mesopotamia Total War has been canned. Rightfully so. So, from what I've heard with Pharaoh is that it was going to be... First game, Troy. Second game, Pharaoh. Third game, Mesopotamia. And now Mesopotamia is just going to be DLC. Which makes sense. World War One is 20th century, though. Yep. Well, we'll, we'll, we'll see. Could be Total War, American Civil War. There's a lot you can do in the in the 19th century. You know, you got the American Civil War. You've got the the Franco-Prussian War. You know, the Victorian era. You could have the whole world map. You could have Total War Australia in there as well. I think the Great Emu War is 20th century though. What would be your personal wish legion for the next Total War? I don't care about the setting at all. It can be... They can try Pharaoh again. They can go Rome 3, Medieval 3, Empire 2. I don't care about the setting. What I care about is that it actually is a good game. So if my favorite time period is covered... So let's just say they make Rome 3. The classical Roman time period is my favorite. Which makes Rome 2 all the more disappointing. Um, let's just say they made Rome 3. And it was garbage. It's just fucking trash. It's basically a pharaoh reskin. I wouldn't be interested in it. But if they make something that I'm not as interested in, let's just say they make Total War, like what, what is the least interesting time period that I can think of for like a, a, like a war? Um, they make Total War fucking Harry Potter, right? And it is just a banger. Just like the best game ever, I'd be into it. So, what's important is that they actually make a good game. Not that they just pick the right setting. That's for me personally. I know that's not the case for a lot of people. For a lot of people, uh, the setting is very important. And whether or not the game is actually good matters very little. Because like, you take Total War Pharaoh as an example, some people bought that game just because they were desperate for a Egypt time period. Fair enough. That is absolutely fair enough. But yeah, I just, I'm not time period dependent. It's irrelevant to me. Uh, Brian Garces did a $15 super chat. Thanks for making my shift today entertaining, motivating me to start a GMD Troll Kingdom mod campaign. Winter Tooth, especially Monday's fantastic video. I actually really like the troll. Uh, King now these days. Yeah, Throg is not my least favorite dude anymore. For sure. Thanks for the super chat. Appreciate it. Gotta make sure we get our nice hill going. You know, I like my hills. Alright, there are three bloated corpses that we need to blow up. Ideally, it would be good if they blew up their own units as well. But... If they're not close to their own units... The AI is better at keeping them out of, uh... They're better at it, they're not perfect. I could just... Okay, could you please walk into that? I mean, honestly, that's pretty good, I'll, I'll take that. Super Mario, here we go. <laughs> Give me a gold coin. Here's another one. 
Yeah. Where's number three? Like I said, this is why we fought it manually, because bloated... Oh, there's number three. Bloated corpses are essentially our troops. Oh, I missed a good opportunity. <coughs> Excuse me. Yeah, 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 come over here. Yeah, yeah! Alright, I'm out of here. Nice, that was like four or five units. Aside from the bloated corpses killed. Now I gotta get you back over there to heal. Oh, forgot, we got bombs. I should do my bombing run as well. Plus this will probably wake him up. Get him to advance. Since they can see us, which is what we want. Don't want to fight them in the trees, that gives them the advantage. Except for their guns. This unit has definitely done its worth in this battle. Big time. Remember when I first played... Warhammer 2 and I fucking disbanded his phoenix at the start of the campaign. What an idiot. <laughs> I didn't know what I was doing. But that was, I was still on Warhammer 1 mindset where you just auto resolve everything. We will obey. It will be done. As you say. It will be done. It will be done. Onward. Taming the wings. Asso Archmage. So the only game worth hype about is Warhammer 3 DLCs. Advance. Uh, it's up to you, man. Up Going you. for tireless with me. Like tr truth be told, okay, this is what you should do. Don't hype about anything that Creative Assembly announces. Don't no hype, okay? Because Creative Assembly's marketing uh, system, you guys should be actively trying to demoralize Creative Assembly's marketing to punish them for the past two years. Because Creative Assembly's marketing is inherently dishonest and corrupt, right? Um, so whenever they release any kind of trailers, just fucking don't react to them, okay? Because that'll make them sweat and be like, oh my God, we can't just rely on marketing. And you ha and that way they have to actually make good content. Don't get me wrong, once they've made the good content and it's been released and you guys are playing it and you like it, by all means, thumbs up, Give them a positive review and say, good job, Creative Assembly. But by no means should you play into their marketing. Okay? So don't fall for the hype. Don't pre-order. Because their marketing needs to be suppressed, essentially. It's been... Yeah. <laughs> their marketing has failed us, like the consumer, to such a massive degree that we should boycott Creative Assembly marketing entirely. So, like, Moving out. don't react to their trailers, don't react to their fucking blogs, Onward nothing. The only Either thing you should react to is whether or not the actual content is good. Forward. Seal. So, zero hype. So, if they release your favorite, favorite time period, like Medieval 3 gets announced, just shrug, be like, Pff. wait, I'll wait until I see it. You know? And then when it's great, you know, positive reviews. Ah, oh, Creative Assembly, you've gone and redeemed yourself, by all means. But give the marketing department nothing to work with. Absolutely nothing. It'll make them sweat. They're like, oh my god, we're not getting pre-orders. We have to actually make a good game. Because, yeah, if you don't pre-order, and Creative Assembly are usually well aware of whether or not the game is good or not. They're usually well aware of it. So, they don't give a fuck if it's getting pre-orders. But if the game isn't getting pre-orders, and and they know that it's about to launch, and hardly anyone's pre-ordered it, and it's a shit game, they know it's not going to sell. Which is pretty much what happened with Pharaoh. And fucking, that was a good thing that that happened, because when, when that does happen, when they make a dud, then they have to start 
upping their quality. And you guys should be at every opportunity trying to force Creative Assembly's hand to make better quality. Okay, every time that you say, shut up and take my money and go, oh my God, the hype maximum, Creative Assembly, lean back a little bit and go, cool, let's be a bit lazier next time. Every time you do that. Tyrion. So Working you have to forth. use the... Um, Doing my duty. Advance. Uh, go. Onwards too yeah, just don't, don't play into the hype. Fire They're not advancing. Surian. What's going on? Sunfang lusts for battle. Tyrion can probably just sit there and fight now, because he's... He's got regen, his stats are really good. It's just that we're not doing much... Okay, why don't we bring in a wizard to help out? Is it one of these on horseback? No, not... No, this one. Okay, yeah, I can use Comet of Cassandora. Hopefully it doesn't clip on a tree. What are they doing? Demand excellence? Yes, we should be... Basically, when it comes to Creative Assembly, there is no reason that they can't produce excellence every single time. There's absolutely no reason for it. It's just that they cut corners because it's more profitable to do so. So demand excellence from them and say, we will buy nothing less than excellence from you. If you if you um, release anything other than that, we're just not going to buy it. They'll be forced to produce excellence. Because <laughs> that's what I want. I just want them to produce good shit. That's all I want. Like, I'll pay for it. Like, I would be more than willing to pay $200 for, like, the best Total War game ever made. I don't care about the price. And I think that's the case with a lot of people as well. I just don't want to buy shit. I don't want anyone saying, you should buy this shit and, and like, <laughs> and, and enjoy, enjoy this diarrhea in your mouth. No, thank you. CA marketing is evil. It's not evil. It's not evil. It's just, it has a certain agenda. Their job is sales. They don't care about quality. There's, there's different, there's different moving parts of creative assembly. It's not like a, it's not like one evil mastermind. Okay. There are certain parts of it that we need to work against to undermine it. And then there are certain parts of it that we need to try to support as much as possible. So the marketing side of things, we need to undermine it at every stage. Okay. Cause it's what, like you could get rid of the marketing department at creative assembly and it doesn't affect the quality of the games at all. Right. But what marketing does is it increases the number of sales and that extra numbers of sales probably just goes in the back pocket of the executives or the shareholders or, or Sega. Why should we give a fuck about that? Who gives a shit? So don't play into the marketing. The marketing's not your friend. Um, the actual developers, so like Richard Aldridge's team, they need to be supported as much as possible. Oh, I, I thought that might happen. Yeah, in the forest, your Comet of Cassandora can hit a tree. <laughs> Man, that's some sturdy friggin' trees. What is going on with these guys? They do not want to advance. How much oh, we got heaps of magic. That's not a problem. Yeah, whereas... The, um... Uranus Thunderbolt doesn't quite... Get hit by trees. Hey, Ready Nash. Um, I love Shadow War, so you don't like SOC, not just its price tag, but the whole DLC, genuine interest. Um, okay. All right, to answer that, it's, it's, um, I like aspects of it, but I would say that of the DLC, comparing it to previous DLCs for, um, Warhammer 2, for example, I like a lot less about Shadows of Change than I did on, on, say, any Warhammer 2 DLC. Or even, like, if you take Forge of the Chaos Dwarves as an example, um, there's very little that I don't like about it. Uh, I think the only thing that I'm really not a big fan of, I'm gonna try this again, is Zatan the Black. I'm not a, I'm not a huge fan of Zatan the Black, but that's a pretty minor complaint. As for, um, Shadows of Change, I don't like the Changeling campaign. I didn't enjoy it. I don't like Stanky Fingers. I just didn't enjoy it. I like Yuan Bo. I like, I don't like the units that were added. I think the Crowmen are not interesting. 
I think that the Jade and Jet Lions are not interesting, and I think that the Wujing War Drum is not interesting. Um, but I like the Celestial General, and I like Yuan Bo, and I like his campaign. Uh, I'm, I'm not a big fan of the Kislev stuff. So, like, in, since Shadows of Change has come out, I've barely played anything to do with Zinch, Cathay, or um, Kislev. Okay, sorry, Kislev, Zinch, or Cathay. Yeah, barely played any of it. Whereas when the Beastman DLC came out, I was playing Beastman all the time. When the um, Chaos Dwarf DLC came out, I was playing heap loads of Chaos DLC uh, uh, content. Shadow, uh, what's it called? The Champions of Chaos. Big improvement to uh, Warriors of Chaos. Um, Shadows of Change? Barely touched it. I should have left it here. I like Yuan Bo's defeat trait. Yeah. Like I said, it's not like it's 100% crap. It's just less good stuff than what we've received in the past. And that's just my personal opinion. Like, I don't think the legendary heroes are very interesting either. Uh, the um, the blue scribes are interesting for sure. But I think that Echold Hellbrass is very boring as a legendary lord. He's basically the exact same thing as... As... Um, Harold Hammerstorm. Not that he's a bad legendary hero at all, but he's the same fucking thing. So we got essentially the two, two of the exact same legendary heroes for free in a row. It's just not very interesting. And the, the Echoed Hellbrass, the only thing he says is Echoed Hellbrass. So it's not... You don't get very interesting lines. Whereas at least the... Um, the uh, the blue scribes they're, they're very well voice acted. Not that there was anything wrong with the voice acting for Echoed Hellbrass. He's only, he's only he's a Pokemon. He only says his own name. A bulwark in Altwan's war. Fair enough. I enjoy one of the three as well. Other two just don't catch my interest as much. I like that answer. Yeah, that's basically it. Yeah, no problem. Daniel Zafir did a sixty nine point nine. Shekel Super Chat. Alright, thanks dude. Love your videos. No worries dude. Love your presence. Love, love, love your <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> Appreciate it. Uh, the power creep is very annoying. All the legendary heroes and you on bow are nightmares to go up against. Yeah, but that's just... Yeah, I get power creep. I, I just don't think it's that big of a deal. Shield against Maybe that's the just me. Thing is, very well. The thing is with um, how tree. to sell DLC for Warhammer is that power creep sells. So if you have something that is just Effortless. mediocre, like you take, all right, you take the Hunter and the Beast DLC. That was not power creep, right? There was nothing in the Empire side of things that made them stronger. There was nothing in the Lizardman side of things that made them stronger. Oh, but Legend Dreadsaurians. Dreadsaurians are shit. Um, and Nakai was shit. So that DLC adds no power creep whatsoever, and it is possibly, in my opinion, the worst DLC for Total War Warhammer 2. So, and then you take, for example, Ikat Claw DLC, Prophet and Warlock. For both the Lizardmen and the um, the Skaven, it's got like their best stuff. So huge amount of power creep, and it's also considered one of the best DLC for Total War Warhammer. So I can see where you're coming from, power creep. But what they need to do is just sort of adjust things along with other factions so they're able to deal with those DLC factions. I don't know the DLC, but Yuan Bo's voice works and really bad to me. Yep, I kind of agree with that. I just don't care that much. Tyrion, heir of an area. Behold my power! Alright, let's get out of this war with Noxilus now. Count not yeah, look, he's just as... Oh, no, he's super weak. For crossing me, the Asa shall meet their end. It is so, yeah, we can get a whole bunch of money out of them. And we could... The best thing to do is to declare war on him again when he doesn't see it coming. Of course, he might declare war on us. Well, we'll see. Let's just, let's just take that. Serves my cause. we got to finish off on Ulth 1 first. I don't have any armies to go down there right now. And if we went down there right now, by the time we get there, he'll have a full stack. And it's a difficult settlement to capture, so I'm not going to worry. And it also has no value whatsoever. So, 
It's up to you how you want to go about that kind of stuff. Magic. Unfathomable All right, knowledge. so we'll strike against Tyranoch because they're in a bad spot. And that leaves them with a gate. So that's good. That leaves them with a gate. If we have a look at this I one, you welcome, traveler. I might want to confederate them first. But... Oh, I'd have to really get the relations up. What isn't? I am a warden, not a low-born traitor. Because this hasn't reset yet, has it? No. No, it hasn't. Uh, Rob Sham did a 20 pound super chat. Alright, thanks dude. Appreciate the support. Thank you very much. Uh, so an interesting point on Reddit where someone argued we should have more challenging start campaigns like Belagar or Scarfsnake. Yeah, I got no problem with that, for sure. A dignified visitor. Such a rare treat. Welcome. Well, yeah, okay. Might be in our best interest to try to confederate uh, Illyrian first. They'll d oh, hang on. How's that going then? That's not so bad. I really need to like save some lords that have uh, Grom the Paunches to feed trait. <laughs> uh, that would be real Student cheesy and Texas delicious. But I don't, haven't done that yet. Tower. I See, I need to get this relation out, up to 150. Well. Using influence. I'm, I just don't have enough. I've got 56, so that can get us a little bit of the way, but I don't have enough. What requests would you make of the Phoenix so I offer, King? If I offer them a gift... I think we just, just wait and see how things play out a little bit first. With them. I just don't have the resources to justify it right now. Because I, I need to continue Must constructing over here, it's really important. And we need to make sure we've got enough money to do that. So next turn we'll be developing this up to the next level. Hi, Elven Archmage. I don't think we need to recruit any more units. Okay, take this one out, put that one in there so it gets more replenishment. Tyrion's fine. Yeah, he'll be able to make it there next turn. Go into Force March just so that we can get that trait a bit sooner. Since he's not recruiting anyway. In fact, next turn I think we should get uh, Sunfang, because yeah, we should we shouldn't have any problem with that, and then we'll be in good place to deal with this. We can now also recruit Tyranoc chariots, which I don't think I can globally recruit them in one turn. No, I can't because I didn't go with um with the actual good. Um, skill line. Moving on. Moving on. Illyrian only has two cities. Why not conquer instead of confederate? Uh, when it comes to High Elves, it's really not a big deal to confederate once every five turns. There aren't that many High Elf factions. And you could always just go and fight someone else. Also, when you conquer someone, every time you attack a settlement, this, well, every time you capture a settlement, the settlement level goes down by one. So if we confederate them, we will get their provinces in much better shape, which saves a lot of money, as well as the cost of just paying your armies in a what war. Do you wish to discuss? Uh, but we absolutely can go and fight them. That's not a problem. Okay, so I probably would go and fight Stanky Fingers, as much as that is super annoying to go and fight her. The, the more units we've got, the better. So, no. Because, yeah, once we take out Tyranoch, well, we'll probably come around this way here. I'm actually surprised Alariel has stuffed around this much. Does she still spam curses like crazy? From what I've seen, yes. I think her curses got a little bit nerfed, but she still spams them like crazy.
How do you make character face on the left not moving? Uh, you go into your graphic settings. You go to advanced, and you see how it says porthole quality? Go to 2D instead of 3D. It just saves on processing powers. Which, you know, doesn't provide any gameplay advantage. You said you use one mod, which is it please? I actually don't have it activated right now, but the mod that I usually have activated is the, um, the one that redu sorry, that removes the trait limit for, for, like, defeat traits, so you can have as many as you want. Because I feel like the limit of 40 is not very good. 40 traits, I mean, not just defeat traits. Because you get a lot of inactive traits that don't do anything. Welcome to the court of the Ever Queen. All are welcome in my court. So she hasn't expanded in a while. If she had relations with us, we probably could have confederated her. Be sure you do not waste my time. So I think we've got three more turns and then a confederation will be offered from them. Possibly. Possibly. Alright, we're at full strength here. I, am on. I don't see any reason why we can't do the Sunfang quest battle. Actually, let me just have a look at his trait here. Yeah, he doesn't reduce upkeep cost for spearmen, so I should... Magic's unleashed. I should switch her a little bit. Magic guides me. This will save on upkeep cost. I should have done this before. Same thing with Lotho and Seaguard. He doesn't actually increase their... Or decrease their upkeep cost. He just re uh, increases their recruit rank. So that should have saved us a bit of money. But Legend, you freaking your army! Nah, it'd be fine. This is easy. Any ideas for how to fix Empire Prestige and Authority System? Yeah... Uh, nothing comes to mind right now, but if I thought about it, I, I could come up with some ideas. You put me on the spot with that. Um, I think the Empire Prestige and Authority system is something that you need to think, put a, a fair bit of thought into it, not just come up with the first thing that pops into your mind. Because it's inherently not a bad idea, it's just poorly implemented. And I think the problem is that the player doesn't have a lot of tools to deal with the authority problems that occur, especially given how many elect accounts get wiped out. So I think the idea of having imperial authority is good. Um, I think you just need to be able to do more with it. And and like if you could just spend a thousand prestige to get one. This is a sad day. Yeah, if you could spend a thousand prestige to get one imperial authority and the price increases every time you do it, then that would help a great deal. That way, if you're fighting loads of battles and getting loads of prestige, then you can account for dead elect accounts. It'll be fine. Because what ends up happening is later on in the campaign, you just have no use for, um, for prestige. <coughs> Excuse me. So yeah, that's, that's, I reckon that would, like, simple fixes like that could make a big difference. What's my current favorite faction? Probably Korn. Sword of the I love Korn. Tireless. Uh, let's go for them first. Yeah, actually, let's get our archers over here, because these guys tend to spam spells. I have in the past been wrecked by them. Where these guys here are quite passive. Keep all the heroes away because they really go for them. We'll just we'll shoot for their duty. heroes with our archers. Moving out. We away. There's a mod for that, and it starts at like 6k prestige for one authority. Caps at like 30k after five or six increases. Yeah, well, 6k prestige in the early stage of the campaign when you actually need the um, imperial authority. It's very hard to accumulate that much, so I think that's a little bit excessive. Because what ends up happening, a lot of people end up with, like, um, minus five Imperial Authority by, like, turn ten. And they haven't lost a single battle, it's just that five Elect Accounts have died. So you need to be able to activate it sooner. We go. But yeah, I think it's the right idea, just that's a little bit excessive of a cost.
servant of light moving out. Forward! Heir of Anarian. Archers! Got to be careful that we don't waste too much ammo, but the AI doesn't really try to dodge us too much with these guys. Obviously not a very good formation here, but it was a bit of a scramble just to get this over here. Archers! Okay, well that's all their reinforcements dealt with. We will obey. Enemy mages! By Alario! Should we be able to spend the prestige on helping the Elector Counts? Well you kind of can when the dilemma stuff shows up. I uh, kinda like the dilemmas, oh yeah, but mainly raise extra troops to help them out or give buffs. Yeah, something like that. Yeah. Thing is though, the Elector Counts die too early. That's the big problem. They die in like turn 4 and 5 and stuff like that. So you're not going to accumulate enough prestige to be able to do anything about it. Part of the problem is that this happens way too early. Like if the if the faction started dying at around turn 20, that's a different story. But Hockland dies in like turn 3. Ostermark dies in like turn friggin' 3. Um, Ostland dies shortly after that. Um, Sterland dies. Averlin dies really early to Vlad. So you just end up losing loads of Elector Counts really quickly before you've had a chance to take a piss. It's just completely out of your control. And I think that's the thing that makes it so annoying is that it's out of the player's control, which is not fun. Like, if, if the player sucked and just did a bad job, then that's fine. That's fine if that happens, but... You get punished for something that you have no control over, and that's bad game design. Damn, that bloodline of Venerians playing out well there. Alright, let's bring in this one and maybe do some comets. Uh, Brendan O, did I find a subject cornflakes or corn pops? Uh, yeah. Cornflakes. Thanks, Super Chat. Appreciate it. Noise. It's so rude to my, my dude. Okay, yeah, they're just kind of refusing to... to engage with Tyrion. In a massive blow, but that's fine. We got this. Yeah, look at that. They dismounted from their artillery. Very silly. Too much damage. Move back. Cool. How come the 
the enemy army stands there while the Lord fights it out? I don't know. Bad AI. My Empire campaigns don't even expand past Imperial borders anymore. Destroy the Secessionists and it's firemen time. Yep, pretty much. Yep. How do you compensate a lack of magic and powerful archers when playing corn? Uh, you don't need powerful archers when you've got corn units. So the archers are irrelevant for in that. Corn has some of the best melee infantry in the game, melee units in the game. So that doesn't matter. Um, as for magic, you make up for it with your campaign mechanics and your summons. So being able to summon blood letters, that's pretty much as good as magic. So yeah, I, I thought that corn was going to suck as well. I remember back in the early days of the marketing of Warhammer 3, I was like, yeah, corn's going to suck. But the design for corn is really good. Yeah. Really they are free to. Okay, good. Getting the Sun Fang is going to help us with control. Champion of the Ever Queen. Also gives us a fair bit of money. I reckon our army's strong enough that we could also do the dragon armor of an Arian. I just don't think that that's For essential right now. I can maybe do it next turn. Alright, let's get sword player. Do you know who plays with his sword? Alariel. Ha <laughs> ha uh, let's... Yeah, I'll get Chain Lightning. Cool. Okay, I think we've got a situation here where it might be a good idea to try to score... What would you have of the Phoenix King, stranger? Ah, uh, hang on. Let's speak with Tyrannok. Ah, uh, no, sorry. Prince of I will might be a good idea to get some influence. In the name of the King. Okay, they don't want to pay for it. But maybe I, they'll pay for it. Die. Your body shall be another husk for my crew. Yeah. Okay, that's good. They'll pay for that. This serves my cause. If they really wanted to, they could pull a 40k. I have heard from multiple sources, 40k is coming. It is coming. Of high yeah, you can sit there and say, Oh, 40k, they'll never make it work. It's coming. It may not work. It may work. Who knows? But it's coming. Fear the might of Ulf One. I know the way. Smash it to ruins. Good. Good. Getting a bit of extra influence per turn will definitely help, and it's not essential for this army. All right. I so we do have Vols. Yeah, invocation of Vols. So that's good. High Elven Archmage. Let's finish off Tyrannok. Gifted well, we don't actually. Advisor. We're not going to be to finishing off Tyrannok because we're going to leave the Griffin Gate there to be um, to be to attacked victory. constantly by uh, our agents. Looks like I do have to fight it manually. Um, is this okay? Hang on, I got an idea. I got an idea. Bring me. They don't battle. have any fast units. Oh, they're not on A horseback. Reckoning. Master of magic. The winds are rising. I sense items of power. Maybe I should have kept this one in the army. Standing by. In hindsight. That doesn't matter. We'll, we'll figure this out. They want to take advantage of Henry Cavill 40k hype. Uh, I really don't think that Creative Assembly is making business decisions based on one celebrity. I think that... Um, I think that it's just a lucky coincidence that Henry Cavill happens to admit that he's a fan of Warhammer at the same time as them developing it. Are you not worried that Illyrian wipe out Tyrannok once you've left them with the gate? Oh, I don't really care. It's not that big of a deal if they do that. That's why I kind of want to confederate. I tell you what you can do, you can besiege the gate so they can't launch the attack. Or we could leave a unit 
close to the gate so that we can reinforce and deliberately lose. It's not about being a fan. Henry is producing a 40k TV show. Yeah, look, I don't, I don't know. I just don't know. I heard that Creative Assembly tried to reach out to Henry Cavill and that Henry Cavill basically ignored them. That being said, I tried to reach out to Henry Cavill and he definitely did ignore me. That being said, as well, he probably gets 100,000 bloody messages a day. It's just that we couldn't get through. Which is understandable because I get, you know, I get a fraction of what he gets a day and I can't answer them all. All right, what am I doing? All right, here's what I think we should do. We should use the Vol's hammer on that tower there, but not this one. These two go this way now. Let's try to get in that way. Maybe I should even... Oh, no, don't worry about that. Because I don't have any artillery yet. Zha Zha did a mem uh, became member for 16 months. As I watched more of your historic Total War videos, I realized the Lords are very important in battle. That's cool. Most of all, Happy New Year's in 2024. Alright, no worries, dude. Thank you for the membership. Appreciate it. I have a question. For Volkmar, is Flagellants or Free Company Militia are uh, best? <laughs> Which, whichever. Of the Ever -Queen. Both about the same level same quality remember it's not the units that you recruit but how you use them that matters they both have their own strengths and weaknesses flagellance is a little bit more um on brand with volkmar but free company militia you know they've got their advantages because they can shoot oh look at this i wasn't expecting there to be this much force here okay turn them back around turn back around I wasn't expecting that. Hmm. Oh, I wanted to skip this siege. I don't like sieges. Can I just skip? Maybe they can go in through that gate if I go around enough. I don't want to fight a siege. Yeah, they should just remove sieges from the game. They're just not fun. Let it be a field battle. Air of Anarian. All right. Yeah, I think I'll Servant use the other Vol's light. hammer to destroy that other tower. Because I think we're going to have a bit of a skirmish on the walls. Also, I think Sword I should use assist. this magic here to smash their archers up. Winds of magic rise. Actually, we can use that spell to destroy Bear towers as well. Yeah, it's not bad against walls. Defender of one. Love and Seagard. Spearmen. For duty. Without fail. Loyal. Uh, LB Lord Hasted and AED 10 Super Chat. Thank you for the streams, by the way. No, it's my pleasure. Thank you for the Super Chat. Henry Cavill seems like a fairly private person. Like, he could hit up a lot of podcasts if he cared a lot. For fame, Forward. look out, but he doesn't. Striking yes, from what I've heard, he is a very private person. Yeah, he, he just doesn't Fireless. want to spend loads of time Unlocked answering emails victory. and stuff like that, which I, I totally get. Forward. Which is why I don't answer all my emails, because I just don't have fucking time. You know, I got things I want to do. If I spent all day answering emails, then it'd just be all I did. And I think I'd rather shoot myself in the head. Especially some of the inane shit that people email me. vast majority of it is fine, but some of the stuff is... Understood. Like, some people are just, in this community, just downright insane. Like, they don't even have a brain. Yes. 
Alright. Let's get in through here. Continue to zap them. Uh, I don't think we're going to cap all these points with these guys, but what it will do is spread out their forces all over the place, making it easier to assault. Also, anytime that we capture a um, a point, they're going to lose all the uh, the towers from that position, which will be really handy for us. Archers, moving out. Azure warrior. So they're kind of backing off here now, which that could be good. Lacoy. Oh, 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 I was maybe a bit late on that. Uh, I hit him a bit. Not, not as well as I could have. Air of Anarian. He's going to start shooting at us soon. Okay, if we angle this just right, they actually won't be able to shoot us, even though that will be in range, just because of the, the weird angle that they're coming at. Air of Anarian. You gotta know the weak points of these cities if you wanna get in without taking too much damage. Okay, we've also got the breath attack here. It is done. That could have been better. Without fail. Okay, just get a little bit closer. Okay, we're in. Going for. All right, Tyrion. set these ones in to be an absolute nuisance. Eager Actually, Tyrion should just Seal. start fighting them. If we can get them to blob up around him, we can just zap them. Because he'll just regenerate while in combat. There's nothing over here that's causing him any problems. Because there's yes. no way we're, that we're going to be able to cap these points here with this many units. We have to severely reduce them if we want to do that. Hi, mage. Understood. Would you accept old world mod disaster battles? No, probably not. In fact, I'm barely covering Warhammer at the moment. The Warhammer videos just aren't doing very well. So, I mean, you can always send it in and maybe I'll do it, but I would say there's a very low chance that I'll actually do it. Typically speaking, mod modded disaster battles have always performed Sun like absolute ass, so I just don't bother. I can't believe they still haven't fixed this. Air of Anarian. Take this one out. Looking at this shadow wizard, okay. Why does he have so much trouble fighting these lords? Probably because he knocks them on the ground. Good, our archers are killing anyone that comes up on the wall, that's good. Still got plenty of magic. Isn't Tyrion better on foot? Um, he is a better fighter on foot, but you have more uh, like tactical options if you put him on a horse. There's nothing here that's really going to put him under any threat. But yeah, if we 100% had to rely on him killing every last man that he could, then um, putting him on foot is the better option. Yep. 
and don't comet just yet. You want to use comet on big blobs. Small blobs, use the lightning bolt. Just more efficient for magic. As you can see, he's doing just fine here, even fighting spears. He's just too strong. Even their bonus versus large can't really get through him. Because we've gone bloodline of an Aryan, so he's stronger than usual. Did I end up killing the enemy lord, or did it get away? Yeah, we got it. Cool. Yeah, so they come up on the wall a little bit, and then they see they get shot, and then they move off. But we're overall, we are getting them. If we have a look here at the damage. Yeah, they're inflicting a bit. Good kills on this one. Okay, Tyrion has got this again. Good. Because he's got regen, because he's got the uh, Emerald Collar. So that'll, if you have a look here, they are just, yeah, they're not doing much damage. Try to get through this as quickly as we can. And without losing, like, three quarters of our army. Because if we're going to lose three quarters of our army, we might as well just fucking order resolve it. They've just got nothing that can beat this combo of Tyrion plus a wizard. Because if they decide to fight him in melee, which is the only way they can kill him, we zap him. And they're not going to try to shoot him. I'm not going to use chain lightning. Are normal biggin orcs better than savage orc biggins? Uh, is the physical resist worth more in the late game than the armor? Uh, the biggins are definitely better. Uh, sorry, sorry. The savage orcs are definitely better than the um, the regular ones. Having a bit of extra armor is not that big of a deal, especially in the late stage of the campaign, because most enemies that you go up against will have a huge amount of armor anyway. But having physical resistance is better than armor. In most cases. Obviously, if you're going up against magical attack, it bypasses it. Whereas, magical attack can be blocked by armor. Sometimes. But yeah, I'd definitely say Savage Orc Biggins are better. Definitely better. If I bring this one in, it's just going to get shot. The foe. Right, got him thinned out a fair amount. Let's start trying to break through some of these barricades. Moving out. Men Louis, Araya, Men Louis. Actually, no, no. Don't bother about the barricade. Going through the front here. We'll just go around the back. There was no barricades there. Cleanse the land. My power is yours. I go then. Bring these in a little bit closer. For the Ever Queen. Soraya! Uh is the Warmer 3 text blurry for you on 1440p? Uh no. Looks fine to me. Going. Following Ethua. Setting forth. Making my way. You might have um, resolution scale on. Going abroad. So if you have a look at your graphic settings. In advanced, you can look at resolution scale. If you're like down to here, like look, look what it looks like at 50%. Alright. Oh my god. <laughs> I don't know about what you guys can see, but that is. Oh my god. That is so much worse. Oh my god, where did all my pixels go? Funny thing is, the UI looks just as crisp, but the actual game. Oh my god. Where did all my pixels go? Give them back. Yeah, that's much better. 
Going abroad. Moving out. Onward. The winds rise. The Reaper. Happy to serve. Okay, we're almost out of magic, but this one did 40,000 worth of damage, which we're pretty happy with. Tyrion's up to 27,000. Good. Striking four. Onwards to victory. Moving out. Defender. All right, we have seriously thinned them out here. We can advance in pretty good order, I think. We go. Swiftly. Acknowledge. Asa, move. For my lady, the greater good. All right, we want to get around this way. Oh, there is actually a barricade. Oh, no, hang on. If I go around this way, there's no barricade. Let's go around here. Barricade there, though. But then there's no troops, so we should be able to capture that, no problem. Tyrion! Okay. Striking four. Okay, we can advance a little bit closer. Orders received. Understood. Forward. Spellcaster, calling the winds. Doing my duty. Seeking. What's the, the worst faction in Warhammer Three? Oh, that's a Making tough one. Uh, the worst faction in Warhammer Three. Moving out. Seeking the foe. See, in Warhammer 2, that was easy to answer. You could easily say it was Wolfric or Throg. But in Warhammer 3, every faction is more... Uh, like, the power differences is not as, uh, as um, pronounced. One mage. High mage. Hmm. Nurgle? Yeah, I'd have to say Kurgath Plague Father is the weakest. Yeah. Yep, I agree. I'd say Daniel is probably the most boring. Champion of Alaria. Absolutely wasted opportunity with him. I think it's a, a good idea. The yeah, demon dress-up game. Just really poorly implemented. Shame that it's been two years, and they still haven't fixed Daniel. Daniel, the dipshit demon prince. Sartosa. Sartosa is boring. It's not weak. Sartosa is not a weak faction. It is boring as hell. Seeking the foe. Mouse Dark Blade? No, Mouse is out. super strong. Following Ethua. Going abroad. Sina. At once. Doing my duty. Onward. Yeah, no, I'd, I'd have to say, um... Calling the winds. I'd have to say, could get played by this faction Setting is the weakest. Forth. Yeah. I go then. Treachery cannot Forward. be tolerated. Eager for battle. Forward. With right, if I cap this, they won't be able to rebuild any of that. Onwards to victory. What about the strongest? I still the believe that the strongest the faction in Warhammer 3 is Corn, Scarbrand's faction. Going forth. Even after all the nerfs that they received, they are still the strongest, in my Some opinion. For it's always weird that when someone says something like, "Er, Legend, clearly Thorgrim Grudgebearer is forward. the strongest faction." It's like. Onward. I'm striking for what? Advance. I go <laughs> with me. Tireless. Moving out. Going forth. All right. Let's get around that way. Victory. Oh, with hang me. on. This one over here. Oh, that's just one. Forward. One tower there. Out. Sort that out. Archers. Okay, are we ready to advance? Yep. Oh, hang on. We actually don't have. Understood. Without question. It looks like we've got a breach here, but we didn't make a breach. I can come in through here. I've opened that gate. My power is yours. 
Heir of Anarian. Seeking the foe. Ephua, bend to my will. Sword of the Asur. All right, that was the last of my winds of magic, but 50,000 damage done. Pretty happy with that. Still keep her around here just to add to the capping power. Let's get rid of these fucking annoying towers. This area here is clear for us to... Oh, hang on. I'm still waiting for this to be damaged. Ugh, that'll take a little while. Is Warhammer 3 good at this point? Warhammer 3 is good. Is it as good as it should be? Eh, debatable. Is it as good as Warhammer 2? Eh, debatable. Um, but Warhammer 3 is good. It's just that its development has been... Unimpressive. You know, Warhammer 2 was improving at a pretty rapid rate during its development, and Warhammer 3 just isn't really seeing that kind of improvement. That's I think that is the fundamental problem. Is it a, is it a bad game? No, I don't think so at all. So the army losses shouldn't be too far off. Okay, come on. Get through that. We don't need to cap this point really, unless we intend to go and cap the main point, which I don't think I'm going to be able to. There's just too many units here. Just keep busting up all their towers. And it's drawing their forces away from here, so as soon as this gate is open, which not too much longer, we'll be able to get in and start shooting over here. That wizard's starting to look a little bit damaged. Almost there. Shogun 2 live stream coming soon? Probably not. I do not feel like Shogun 2 is a good game for live streaming. So, looking, looking at how things have been progressing over the past few months, historical Total War games tend to perform pretty well as disaster battles, but they don't tend to perform very well as live streams. Um, Warhammer videos Agreed. don't do so well for disaster battles, but they do much better for live streams. Awaits. Significantly better. So, I, I feel like, I definitely want to keep covering Shogun 2, but I just don't think a live stream of it is going to be good. Because the way that I play Shogun 2 in the early stage of the campaign is very much turtling, and I think a lot of people don't expect me to do that. Because there's, there's not really any incentive, in my opinion, to like, rush um, Realm Divide. And also, I've already done a, like a, a really quick Second blitz of Shogun 2, using movement bugs, and so I'm not really willing to do that again. Matthew did a $5 super chat. I can usually paint the map faster as green skins and corn. What would you say puts corn above them? Love your videos. Um, Archers. I know, I just think that corn is, is way faster than the green skins. Maybe it's just you're better at using the green skins than you are at corn. I don't know. I think having Scarbrand being able to move half across the map in a single turn really does help. 
but it just depends if you're willing to put in that much effort to corn. Like, green skins are definitely easier to use, there's no doubt about that. Thanks, Super Chat. Okay, we're through here. Alright, no point trying to get up there and cap him there. Okay, let's bring in some more. As you say, Asa, move. Bring them in. I think we just army lost them. Yep, we did. Cool. Have you played that new game, Rage Hero Legends? With us? Okay. Uh, where are you, Dragon Prince's squad? Yeah, I was there. I'm not going to recruit Dragon Princes. They're still not good units. Any chance to see some Three Kingdoms on the channel? It, it's hard with Three Kingdoms because it's a popular game to play, but it doesn't work well on my channel. Like, every video that I've ever made on Three Kingdoms has performed like shit. I don't get very many save files sent in, and the ones that I do get sent in, they're really not interesting. So... I'm definitely trying to keep an open mind about Three Kingdoms, but I have a really hard time making an actual interesting video out of it. You know, most people that send in a save file are not playing records mode, and if I do play the romance mode, people get uppity for me to use the main bloody system using your heroes. Um, so, yeah, the videos for Three Kingdoms just don't work very well. You know, I've never been able to get it to work on the channel. Occupy this place. That's not bad. Alright, so as far as I'm concerned, Tyrannop is done. Now we'll start moving up against the Scourge of Cain. Standing by, Champion of the Ever Queen. I live to serve my queen. Yeah, he's already got enough melee attack, so let's reduce the chance for High him to hit. Archmage. Okay, we want to make sure that we can hit Tordranil next turn. Carried by magic. So what we do is move these Master lords up. High magic. I reckon Behold in Force March. Because all of their armies are centered over here by the look of it. If we look, Crunch. they're not particularly strong. Vers versus did a $10 super I've been playing Corn, and there's a, a random a blue two victory. item set that I can only find one item from. Do you know what item set I'm talking about? Yeah, that's like the Axe of Corn stuff, right? Archmage. I would not bother with it. Let's it's not very... It's not nothing special about it. Full speed, uh, I'd say you just got unlucky. They've both got, I think, the same chance to drop. Shield against the darkness. But yeah, that particular item set. I think item sets is something that was a really good idea to have, but they didn't capitalize on it very well, because a lot of the set bonuses are like, plus five corruption in the local province. <laughs> that's fucking shit. <laughs> That's crap. Like, I don't think there's any faction in this game that has any problem whatsoever in spreading their own corruption. So, you know, that's just shit. What you want to see is, like, if you have the set, there's, like, 5% ward save for your lord. Something like that. Something something that's actually good. But there's very few item sets Tyrion, that have any kind of bonus Tyrion. like that. And they're usually the unique ones. <laughs> Minus one public order in local enemy provinces. Pfft, fucking garbage. Plus one per uh, minus one percent recruit cost. Local region. <laughs> wow, so good. Take the gate to guarantee Alariel is set in the prison. Yeah, I'll do that. So we go Tordranil, then we go this one, then Phoenix Gate. That's just on the way. So we'll leave the Griffin Gate, let that get developed. Because with this army here, they're Magic unlikely to capture it. Unlikely to. Trained. A dignified visitor. Such a rare treat. Well, I think we need to push for a confederation here as quickly as possible because if we have a look at Ivres, 
I promise no more than that. The, he's not under any extreme danger just yet. He'll survive five turns. Uh, Marcuso92 did a five year super chat. Happy New Year, everyone. Hope you had good holidays. Legend as always. Oh, I hope you had a good holiday, Legend as always. Thanks for the great entertainment. Nice, dude. Hope you had a good New Year's as well. Thanks for the super chat. What request All right, if we want to boost Phoenix this quickly, we, we need influence. So, and maybe even some gifts. I've got a lot of money now. I did want this to reset, but I'm just going to have to do it now. I bid you welcome, traveler. What would you wish to discuss? As you say. All right, if I play my cards right, I might be able to get a confederation this turn with them. Because as soon as you accept an alliance agreement, it changes their current relations with you. I have heard tales of your kind. Please speak. This probably isn't going to get it above 150, but I don't think you necessarily need it with them. Money's pretty good. Most astute. Wise A little indeed. bit more. Okay, let's see if this does it. Very well. Ah, no, wasn't quite enough. We get another chance with Military Alliance. So that's something. To jump it up a little bit more. If you have a lot of money, maybe build some embassy bones and minor settlements. Yeah, I, I have built them. I have built them. I don't think we've got enough tier 3 settlements to do that. It's only turn 15, dude. Okay, we need to get another character over here. Let's see. Um, the High Wizard's not going to be available. I have to load another character. Elvin Archmage. Okay, that's good. I wasn't able to reset that one because it was only level one. Scholar Supreme. I see the winds. Servant of the okay. King. Okay. Okay, okay, okay. Yep. All right, let's move on to the next turn. Right. Okay, moving on. Right, let me just check if there's any other diplomacy we can do. No. Your request? Why confederate Illyrian? They didn't build up their cities and they have no legendary lords. It's just quicker to confederate them than it is to kill them. There's uh, there's plenty of other enemies to kill. And the cooldown is only five turns. So confederation is just quicker than killing them. Plus when you confederate them, you don't damage their buildings. And what we're trying to do is confederate them so they don't destroy Tyrannoch. Yeah, typically speaking, conquest is not the best way to conquer someone. The best way is confederation, if you can. Because, like, even if their settlement is only tier 3, if I captured it, it'd go down to tier 2. Plus, I would need to use my military to do it, and my military is just better spent elsewhere. Especially considering that Eltharian is not quite ready to confederate yet. He still needs to wait a few more turns before he's willing to do so. Don't you lose the garrison when confederating? No. 
Yeah, see, our influence gate over here has a chance of getting de uh, destroyed by them. Welcome, fellow Asa. What would you wish to discuss? Hmm. I reckon next turn they'll want to confederate. The Asa are ageless. I I will hear you. I promise no more than that. I don't think it's been long enough for them. Okay. Capture and occupy the Phoenix Gate. So that's this one here. Okay, I'm working on it. Alright, if we want to guarantee that these guys here fail their attack on the Griffin Gate, what we could do is send this character back over here and just stand right there. Right? That way, when the, if they come over here and launch the attack, we'll be able to fight the battle manually and ensure that they lose. This just buys us a little bit of time. Since I don't need her to... Oh, you know what we should do? Let's... let's. Oh, hang on. If I do that, then she'll be fully disbanded. Um, Destiny does not favor us. Ulf one's defender. Shit. Infused by Hoeth's wisdom. I await your command. I am a fount of knowledge. Alariel guide. I'll give her one unit. I don't really. Mm, hang on. Yeah, just take one unit of archers. It's fine. Hi, Elven Archmage. That way, when I do this, it doesn't disband the entire army. Good, that one's back. Just pop, pop in this poltroon over here. Defender of the Asa. And that way, if they launch the attack, we can guarantee that they lose. Ever then loyal. over here, we force march Tyrion. But we should do his um, his quest right. battle first. We've only got 19 units, but I don't. I, I could get a regiment of renown. But in all honesty, this battle here is not difficult. Techless fucking never shows up. Any chance to see Warhammer 3 multiplayer on the channel? No, there's no chance of that. Why not just attack the gate? Well, if I besiege it, they'll sally out against me. They'll push me out of the way. If I stay within reinforcement range, when they launch the attack, I can ensure that they lose. Because that way, they get damaged, and they'll be more likely to confederate as well. So it's like a win-win. And all we suffer is nothing. Help, it is done. Okay, just move back a little bit. Well, we get organized a bit. Power's not in our favor because playing dark Servant elf music, but that's okay. With me, tireless, going forth, moving out. Noble, moving out. It will be done. Acknowledged. Following Ethua. Direct me. Excellent. With me. Together. Forward. Yes. Honor. Ready and able. Okay, Tyrion's doing just fine. It's down. Loyal. Definitely want to fix up this formation a little bit. Son of but we just got to shoot at the moment. These guys aren't going to get through to us. Quickly now! We away! 
Okay, Malekith's army is advancing, so we just need to get out of this. Thank you for leaving a gap for us. Okay, first army is mostly defeated. Okay, now... Understood. We will obey. Moving out. Tidy this up a little bit. Quickly now. Make Oath One proud. Shield of the Ever Queen. As you say. Probably don't even need my silver helms at all for this. I'll just keep them in reserve. Awaiting orders. Also, I'm not entirely sure, but I think there's a certain timer until Teclas arrives. This is why I fall back a little bit. Because it would be good to actually use him. Because this is not a difficult fight. Alright, let's see if we can get Malika's attention with the Phoenix. Yep, the Phoenix. Oh, and Tyrion. And let's get him killed. Cool. Typical stupid AI Sword business here. Noble. <laughs> you can pretty reliably kill enemy lords like this. They just always take the bait. Onwards to victory. I go. Oh, he's doing a breath attack. Yeah, it's gonna hurt. But that'll be the one and only breath attack he gets. We will obey. Asa, forward. Silver Helms! Defender of Alt One! Brave and true! Loyal! Orion! Quick time! Onward! Okay, I need these witch elves to not arrive at the front line, that would be great. Oh, he's actually getting away. He's Shadow? No, he's, he, he might come back. units. You get up there and fight him. Shouldn't require much to pick him up. Hey look, Teclas is coming in. How about that? It's so rare to actually see him in this. Shows up way too late. Get him. Oof one mage. With spellcaster. It will be done. Shit, they're routing my forces. Wielder of the wings. Wings of magic ride. Casting spells. Make one out of it. What gets wiped out? Quickly now. It will be done. All right, we finally got rid of Malachus, so that's good. With me, honor bound. Archers, the Reaper. I shall. As your mage. Alright, there we go. We won. Yeah, we took a bit of a beating, but it's it's an easy battle. Decisive victory. Okay. Damage looks worse than it actually is. One of the problems that we're going to face now is we're going into red territory, which means lower replenishment. So it's a good thing we got this guy here. He's going to compensate for that. 
lag. Yeah, whenever I use the lightning, it always causes lag. Uh, what do you think would be interesting to play? Sorry, what do you think would... Sorry, what do you think would it be interesting to play the game if the AI would be truly intelligent? I guess army losses would be dramatic each battle. Um, I don't know. I don't know. I mean, you could just play multiplayer, and then that's kind of what you're asking for there. Alright, we go 10% replenishment or a bunch of money. I'm going to go with the money, because I really don't think that the Scourge of Cain is going to give us a hard time. I don't believe it. And now he's got Frenzy, so that'll be handy, be even stronger. And loads of resistance coming in from that armor. But we still need the Heart of Avalon if we want to get control plus one all provinces, which will definitely help. The Reaper. Yeah. Okay. I never tire. Into position. The cord. Alariel, the we have much to discuss. Come. Join me. Yes. High Elven Archmage. I am their end. Alright. Can't do an order resolve because that unit will get wiped out. But there's nothing dangerous here. Do you meet Teclas through that battle? I don't remember. No, you don't. You still got to manually go and find him. Can why explain to me a bit? Because I'm a noob. And I never play High Elves. What is the bloodline of an Aryan? And who do, do, do you combo this with the co sort of game? <laughs> yeah. Um, so bloodline of an Aryan is a skill line that Tyrion has, which is inferior to... It's mutually exclusive to his Majesty of Bloodline skill line. Um, basically, you go down this line if you basically just playing for the memes. Um, and then, of course, the Sword of Cain. From a lore perspective, Tyrion did pick up the Sword of Cain in the end times and caused a whole heap of trouble. See, in the end times, it wasn't High Elves versus Dark Elves. It was... Fucking... Elves versus Tyrion, basically. Because the Dark Elves and the High Elves basically collectively united and Tyrion threw a hissy fit and picked up the Sword of Cain. And then they had to fight him for a while. So that, that's basically it. We can also get some extra replenishment for them. Not replenishment, healing. Oh shit, they're coming. Read all of this. Uh, you can get an audio book. I believe the the Curse of Cain is on is um, on Audible now. I think it is. I can't remember. Or you could just read the Warhammer Wiki. Or you, there's various lore Hammer YouTubers that will go into detail with this kind of stuff. But yeah, the book on on the Elvish Civil War during the end times. I think that is called the Curse of Cain. And it has Malachus face on, on it. Basically detailing how he became the Phoenix King and uh, Tyrion became the Avatar of Cain.
Because there are, I think there's five end times books. The first one is the Rise of Nagash, Return of Nagash, and the second one I think is Curse of Cain, and then I can't remember what the other ones are called. The final one is called Manfred the Bitch. No, it's not. Let's just get some healing in to these ones. Just in case they actually do send an army to come and attack us and we're in bad shape. These characters, well, these single entities here, will prove very useful. Who is Kane? So, Kane is the... You could say it's one of the primary deities of the elven race. So the elven race includes dark elves, high elves, and... Um, uh, wood elves. They're all the same species. They're just different cultures, I guess. In the same way that Bretonia and and the Empire are humans, just different cultures. Uh, Cain is basically the most powerful of the elven deities, but like the Asso don't like, so the high elves, they don't like to worship Cain because Cain's a dickhead. The Dark Elves worship Cain, and the Wood Elves, eh, 50-50. Sometimes they'll do it. Now there's two branches of the of the Elven Pantheon, the Kadai and the Sithari. Typically speaking, the Kadai are the High Elf Gods. These are the ones that are not that much of a dickhead. And then there's the Sithari, which are the Dark Elf Gods, essentially, and they are the dickheads. <laughs> so, but they're just more of a dickhead than the other ones. So all of the elves recognize the existence of all of these gods. It's just that some of them worship more than others. I mean, it's just polytheism 101, really. In the same sense that, you know, if you were an ancient Roman, you would recognize the existence of all the gods in your pantheon. But if you were a soldier, you probably worshipped Mars more than, say, um, Her uh, Hermes. I don't know. Not Hermes, uh, Mercury. They will know the teachings of Teclis. All right, you need to come High out of there. All right, that replenishment's not too bad. Entering the garrison. Yeah, I don't think they're going to launch a counterattack on us this turn. No corruption out here, but we might see corruption soon. Is there? Okay, good. We're getting winds of magic. Um, yeah, getting earthing. Oh, actually, wind blast is a pretty good spell. Let's get that. And Tyrion the king. needs very rarely gets shot. We've gone down all of this, so that's his bloodline of an Arian, and this is not optimal whatsoever. So, Majesty of Ulth one is way better because. Diplomatic relations with High Elves, yes please. Control all provinces, yes please. Income from all Burns like a province, whatever. Sense of urgency, recruit cost, reduce 10% all armies. Global recruit duration, minus one, all armies. It doesn't say that, but it is all armies. Global recruit capacity, plus two. That's fucking good. And then righteous cause, reduce upkeep cost, 10%, all armies. So this here is so much better than getting a bit of extra strength on one character, which... He's already really strong, he doesn't need this crap, and it actually reduces your control all provinces, which in the early stages of the campaign on legendary difficulty is a problem. Which you can bypass. The day fairly early. is ours. Alright, I need you to be securing more influence in future. Protector of the Everqueen. Um yeah, just keep going with his melee line. Why not? The winds were with us. Your word shall reach the Phoenix. I think next turn I'll be able to confederate them. So what happened here? Did your army get wrecked? May we both serve. Or can we just not see it? Because sometimes your line of sight over your ally disappears after you fought a battle. Sometimes. Gladly. Magic. No, I think it was. Actually, I think it was this army. I think she just fucking ran back over here. This would be a war with. Yeah. So, only, oh man, Bellacore's coming. Great. Master of magic. Okay. 
Okay, that's all good. Would like to get some artillery. Defender if I go into a camp stance here, I could take a bit of time. Hmm. Attacking the Phoenix Gate without artillery, as we saw last time we streamed, is not a good idea. We need artillery for that. But it takes time to recruit. True magic. Shield against the darkness. What I could do is have Tyrion not stand inside the settlement. He won't get as much replenishment, but I could have this one stay behind for a couple of turns and pick up the artillery. I bring Azurian's fire. Yeah, Tyri uh, Tyrion should be able to handle Tor and Lek on his own, no problem. That shouldn't be yeah, a problem. Okay, I think that's a, the wisest choice that I can make at the moment. So we'll get three of those and two of these. Okay. And what have we got in here? Don't really need that. It does give us extra replenishment, but we should save it for when we go into assault. Um, someone else. Uh, I have no intention of attacking the Drowned right now, although she is at war with Nagareth. Who looks like owns all of this, so probably not a good idea to do that. Heed my hexes. No. Give the word. Okay. Oh good, let's move on. Have you thought about doing Mercy's Kemler into Red Duke campaign? No, absolutely no. Nah. That didn't interest me at all. Who do you think has the strongest eco in the game? Mm, you could argue the High Elves are still the richest. You could argue Cathay. You could argue... It's not as obvious as it was in Warhammer 2. Most of the economies are pretty balanced out. Like, a lot of the poorest factions have become richer, and a lot of the richest factions have become poorer. You could argue Dark Elves are still the richest as well. So, I, I don't really care. Um, any one of those. You're probably one of the best strap players in the world. Oh, don't tell the Total War community. <laughs> well, who knows. Have you seen there is a mid that restores the old entrepreneur trait? A mod? Yeah, um, that's great. There's mods that provide. There's fucking thousands it of mods. Is hotter than Vol's forge, Alariel's champion. Okay. I have many. Right. That shouldn't be stronger than Tyrion's army on its own. Servant of the king. So. I live to serve my queen. Very well. No. As you command. So that'll catch up next turn. We've got the money for more troops, so that's not a problem. We can afford that. What request would you make? Oh, one point! Fucking piece of crap. <laughs> We're one point short. Stage of case quick. Right. For countless Asur lives depend upon me. It's not super urgent. I think maybe next turn with that one. Maybe. He's not gaining any territory. Because, yeah, oh, okay, it'd be good to wait until next turn, because that way we get this a tier 3 instead of 2. Prince but, yeah, they might consider launching the attack here. Maybe. The more troops that we've got here, the more likely they'll launch the attack, in which case we don't help them out and they get fucked up. Weaver of spells it's pretty hilarious when we do that. By the White Tower. All right, with Tyrion here, we could go into Stance of Lily's Blessing for extra winds of magic, or I could hide in the hope that maybe this army would run over this way. However, we might want them to stay there so that Alariel doesn't progress onto the Phoenix Gate just yet. So maybe just stay in the open and do this. Yeah, that way we get you loads of winds of magic. That's good. And... Nope. 
I kind of wish it would be Great Eagles and Great Eagle Mounts. That would have been good, but no, they, they only make it for units. Because there's, there's definitely technologies like, in, for example, the, um, the Clan Scryer Forbidden Workshop, where they've got upgrades for mounts as well. So they definitely can do it. They just didn't. Okay. Well, this turn seemed pretty mundane. Okay, cool. All of this is now at tier 3. Okay, Tower of Lyceum. Um. Yeah, build that one there. Protector of yeah, I need this guy attached into the army. It would be good to go and get some more influence, but... I need that extra replenishment he provides, which is 17%. Princess of Althran. Oh, someone asked before what was the um, the landmark here. The Library of Hoeth uh, just gives you research rate, winds of magic capacity, faction wide. That's good because it used to be winds of magic power increasing. When increasing. <laughs> it was so crap. So yeah, that's much better. Research rate, increase hero capacity. And it's a replacement for the other building. Uh, let's go with the port settlement so that we can upgrade the port because that's very good for us because it makes a lot of money. Uh, White Peak. Tor and Rock has gold. Public order here is a little bit of an issue. How are we going here? It will maintain in the long run. We've got a, an event minus five as well. Yeah, it'll maintain in the long run, even if I tax it, so uh, there's not much money, though. And leave it be. Um, yeah, go with the gold. I need more cash. Yeah, okay. Let's move on. When do I get this again? Eight turns. Okay, how bad is our worst public order? Safari's the worst. We still got a fair bit of time before Safari revolts. Okay, let's move on. Legend, thoughts on life magic versus high magic? Personally, I think that life magic is better. No, 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 no. No, stay put. <laughs> and we don't want you to advance. Okay, that's better. I am Tyrion, champion of the Everqueen. No, not yet. About the Lizardman update stagnation, what do you think is better? Faction overhaul since the Geomantic web is still garbage or just new legendary lords? Well, both is good. Both is good. There's there's no downside to more legendary lords, even if they're shit. But a faction overhaul would definitely be good, especially with the Geomantic web. I think there's so much more you can do with the Geomantic web. But the thing is, they've already got seven Legendary Lords. I'm really not confident that they're going to get another Legendary Lord right now, especially considering the Warhammer 3 races are going to be their priorities. Alright, well... That's not ideal, because that is going to incentivize Alariel to attack the Phoenix Gate. And if she expands, we're not going to confederate her anytime soon. Did you know that the plus two authorities from Bellicor Sword doesn't work? Yeah, there's loads of bloody global bonuses to authority that doesn't work. It's fucking stupid. I've been pointing this shit out for ages, and it just nothing gets done about it. Ugh, this it's heat. so frustrating. Like, just basic it tags. Like, this is, this is a company that can't even bloody fix the fucking tags on a lot of the things. There's so many, just, so many traits and technologies that straight up don't work. Most people don't realize they don't work because they don't check. And so Creative Assembly doesn't prioritize them. These are five second fixes and Creative Assembly can't bloody do it. Ah, oh, it's too hard. Small ba family business. Please understand. Bullshit. Fucking fix the fucking tags. Absolutely ridiculous. Shield against the dark. These are five. Like, siege rework. 
that's understandable, that'll take a little while. But those tags, like just change it from having no tag to all armies, faction-wide sort of thing. Fixed! Takes five fucking minutes, anyone can do it. Just get an intern to do it. And <laughs> they A year! It's been like this for a fucking year! Champion of the Ever Queen. Um, dude, it's too hard. It's too hard to fix tags. Please understand, we're a big company. Alario. You know, sometimes I think to myself, I kind of want Creative Assembly to just go back to being a small company. Because, honestly, the bigger they get, the more shit they become. It's kind of ridiculous. Uh, we've still got the thing, don't we? I am ready to fight. Yeah, I got it for two more turns. There is glory. All right, I need to put this guy here on horseback, not on. By yeah, don't want. If you put him on a um, chariot, then it's too easy for them to shoot you. For my queen. Okay, this one's this one's ready to go. I could I could force Marcher over here. Sunfang hungers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We can force March over there. Full speed, Asya. So that actually worked out really nicely. Nice. No mercy. And then and then you know you say, hey, look, there's a bunch of tags fixed. Uh, not sorry, there's a bunch of tags not fixed. It's been ages. People have been crying about it for ages. It's not going fixed. And then you get to the point where you're like, this is ridiculous that it goes on for so long. And then they get upset with you for getting upset with them. Like, oh, you can't get upset with us. You're being disrespectful. Fuck off. Bloody ridiculous. It's like they expect, it's like an expectation of Creative Assembly that people not get pissed off when they are doing the wrong thing for a very long time. <laughs> we, look, we know we've done the wrong thing, but you can't get angry with us. That's disrespectful. You can't expect us to fix the tags in the game. It's too hard. <laughs> We're sorry. So sorry. <laughs> I think I've beaten a dead horse here. Lawyer. Noble. All right. So, well, we got artillery coming in from here. But I reckon we can still just get them in nice and early and start cobbling the shit out of things. Plus, we've also got this. Is Toto Attila as annoying or hard as they say? It, yes. Yes, it is. Uh, well, look, if you're... Every Total War game, if you practice hard enough with it, becomes easy, including Total War Tiller. So you'll get a lot of veterans of Total War Tiller go, it's easy, you're just sucking. And that's true. But when you're first starting off in Total War Tiller and you don't know what you're doing, it's very frustrating. And it's got some really weird game design where the the thing that makes sense actually ends up being detrimental for you. So it's just really weird game design. Uh, Rex registered a 10 year submission. How much of CA's current situation is due to CA's management, in your opinion? Uh, next to none. Yeah, I don't really blame Sega at all for the situation. Because from everything that I've, I've spoken to many ex-employees at Creative Yeah, I'm not, I'm not sure what happened there. Um, just got disconnected. See, it cancelled your speech. <laughs> you could be right. Legend, will you continue to play Mal's Darkblade campaign in the future? No, because I've done a Blitz campaign with him and I feel like that's enough. 
I'm not a big fan of Dark Elves. I just don't find them fun. I, I'll, I'll forever have PTSD. You know, it's the only campaign I've done that's full map completion. I would like them to have direct competition with another company, so they need to do good, sh good shit or sink. Me too. That's what I want as well. I want them to have competitors, so that they they can't pull the kind of shit that they previously have done. Because they've had it really good for a really long time, and I think it's time for that to end. Onward. Going forth. Noble born. Forward. With me. Okay, let's go wait for the artillery to get over there. I'll try to cap the town square. See if we can do that quickly. It's just difficult because it's so far apart. The two points we gotta cap. Should be a little bit easier with another character here. Just a little bit. Same shit with EA and Madden, no competition, so the games are so ass. Exactly, yeah. Oh, EA is absolutely irredeemable garbage of company. Absolute. The, one of the worst game publishers in gaming. Absolute worst. And Madden is just a classic example of a franchise that has gone to absolute shit. Yes, and the thing is... It's obviously the developers and publishers fault, for the most part, but people keep buying the game. If you want Madden to get better, you have to boycott it. You have to stop buying it because they keep making shit because people buy shit. And companies would prefer to make shit because it's more profitable to make shit. <laughs> yeah. People keep buying it. Just, you gotta stop buying that crap. You know, luckily Total War's not at that point yet, and I don't want it to ever get to that point where all they're doing is like Pharaoh reskins, right? I, go I, I would just clock out of the Assyria. franchise if that's what they're gonna do. Mage. I don't think they are gonna do that. It's it's not a it's not a good business model. It's just those fucking business there. people. They love doing that shit. Let's just sell the same no. thing over and over again. The Reaper. Unfortunately, the modern gaming industry the is completely Moving ruled out. by corporate shit stains Order. and creative assembly is no As different cuz i did you guys watch pixelate apollo's video on Onward. the apology there's obviously a lot of apology reactions but did you watch pixelate apollo's one where he, he actually made a good point, I should have thought of this as well. Um, he was like, if you're sorry, step down. I was like, yeah! Why is it that 42 or whatever percentage of Creative Assembly staff is gone, but every single of their leadership remains? Every single one of them. Now, I don't think every single one of their leadership is bad, but I definitely think that Rob Bartholomew's gotta go. Like, why did they... They should step down. Because, like, who wants them? I don't want them. I don't fucking care about them. We don't need them. Fuck off. They're not fans of the franchise. They're just business people. You know, the, what they contribute to Total War is, like, getting epic exclusives and... 
uh, getting on Game Pass. That's what they contribute to. They got their networks and connections and stuff like that. We don't need that shit. Servant of light. Champion of Alaria. Noble. Taming the winds. Open mage. Making my way. Going. Scython, hear me. Going abroad. Awaiting orders. Moving out. What about the Fauna Dev AMA? He said that Rob is kind of based for bringing Warhammer IP. Did he? Yeah, look, I, I'll, I'll be a bit fair to, to Rob. I don't know Rob Bartholomew personally, and I've heard mixed things. On, on one hand, people say he's the bloody devil. On the other hand, they say, you know, he does bring in some cool stuff to, to Total War. If he brought in the Warhammer IP, that's cool, I didn't know that. Um, But I, I do know some of the statements that he's made that I fundamentally disagree with. So one such statement that he made, um, which I don't know where to source the, the like the citation for it, um, but one such thing that he said was um, that the Total War fan base is not growing. So we need to increase the amount of spend per player. And I just thought that was one of the Ultimate dumbest mage. things he could have ever said because maybe the Total War fan base isn't growing, but you could very much fucking shrink it, which is exactly what happened with Pharaoh. So stupid mindset. Moving out. Forward. So, like with anything in life, it's probably a mixed Going. thing. You know, Following people are never up. ever purely Seeking evil or pure good. Go, yeah. You know? Sunfang lusts for battle. I shall. Setting forth. Doing my duty. And you are bent to my will. I don't spend all my magic because I do need to do a little bit of healing. There's not that many Dark Elves here. I did try to make a bit of a push, but... Cheesing Sieges, in the same way that we used to be able to do it, it's a little bit tougher now. Yeah, they put barricades everywhere, it's just difficult to, to run around. Just cap that point, it doesn't really work so well. Works better if you're going up against Dwarfs, because they're super slow. Tyrion's doing just fine here. Okay, let's keep advancing with them. And let's advance with these guys as well. Yeah, see how the Blackout Corsairs aren't shooting at us? Because we're on horseback. If we were on chariots, they would shoot at us. This is where horses actually became quite useful in Warhammer 3. Why don't you shoot over the walls? Highs versus Dark Elves, trivial case for this. I have been shooting over the walls. I have been. They, they withdrew from the walls. There's enough of a concentration there to pop one of these down. Definitely feel like the bombardment spells are much better than the vortex one in Warhammer 3. Okay, shoot that. Uh, Bourbon Born did a twenty dollars budget. Hey, dude, got a favorite Warhammer book or recommendation? Working my way through Gotrek and Felix. Happy New Year's. Cheers. Um, I've only only listened to a few audiobooks from the Gotrek and Felix thing. 
Um, I definitely like all of them that I've uh, listened to so far, but you've probably listened to more than I have. Yeah, thanks for Super Chat, appreciate it. My power is the new sisters make it so you have to get army losses. You don't have to, there there are some circumstances where I have been able to just cap it, but against this, I'm especially with this map, because the these two points are fairly far apart. If I had a huge horde of heroes, I could do it, but three is not enough. So they made it more difficult to cheese, which I don't think is necessarily a bad thing. However, it does make these sieges, you know, not five minutes. It takes me a little bit longer to get through them now. Which is annoying because they're not fun. Nobody is enjoying it. I get it. But I just, I just can't skip it. And I don't want my entire army to have to fucking die <laughs> by, by face planting against these towers. Thoughts on SFO Grimhammer 3 Old World Mods? Yeah, SFO Grimhammer is good. I play it all the time. Well, I play it sometimes. I, I don't play Warhammer 3 as much as I used to play Warhammer 2. I think I hit Tyrion there, but he'll recover. Uh, uh, just the uh, Iranus Thunderbolt is more efficient. Don't think they've got that much left. Because if we have a look at this, we've got a lot of kills. Alright, let's bring in the artillery a bit closer. Start bringing them in closer. Bringing you closer. Keep getting to do this. That's not going to be a great one. <laughs> takes too long to charge, you really gotta pin them down. Well, CA don't play this game. Well, when, when we go to, say, CA does or doesn't play the game, you gotta keep in mind that CA is still about, what, 600 people? Five, 600 people? Some people at Creative Assembly are passionate about the game very passionate most of them are lower level devs and what i mean by lower level devs is like um not decision makers so people who are you know there's like there's obviously like upper leadership who make all the decisions people like roger cullum vice president chief product officer that kind of people then there's like middle management people who manage the other employees and then there's the employees that are actually doing all the work. And I believe a lot of the people who are doing the work, the actual Moving developers, out. a lot of them are fans of the franchise and do actually play it. But it's also not required. Like if you're an artist who's just making unit models, it doesn't matter if you are a fan of the franchise. You just need to do a good job at your, at your work. And most of them do so. Um, but I would, I would probably say that none I would be very surprised if any of the actual leadership at Creative Assembly were fans of the franchise. Because with these kind of franchises like Total War, they get started by people like Mike Simpson or whatever, who are fans of the franchise. They develop it up, and then what happens is, is that business people get involved and be like, ooh, this is an up-and-coming franchise, I'm going to make money out of this. And then what they do is, they don't fucking care about the game, they don't, they're not like, hey, I've got some great ideas to make this game great. No, what they do is they go, hey, I got some great ideas to make more money with this game. Let's sell Total War Warhammer and make it three games and we'll make it a DLC pipeline and we'll sell two lords for 25 bucks. Uh, sorry, three lords for 25 bucks. Or, or they'll go, hey, I got a great idea. Let's make this game. We'll call it Troy and we'll make it super cheap because we'll, we'll uh, buy a studio in Bulgaria and pay it one fifth of what we pay our staff in. Um, in Horsham, 
and we'll get Epic Games to pay for it, and we'll get them to pay us for every download that happens on the Epic Game Store. Shit like that. That's that's what the the leadership do. That's what you know, Rob Bartholomew's and whatever. That's what that's what they do. Um, and something like the Epic Game Store deal for Troy. I actually had no problem with that. I thought that was actually pretty good because it didn't really harm Total War at all. Uh, because everybody got it for free if you wanted it. If you didn't want it, then pff, whatever. Um, but then, then they guess it comes the same idea of like, hey, let's let's take Troy, a game that we made for free, a game that couldn't maintain its player base, and let's reskin it for Pharaoh, put a small amount of changes in, and then let's sell it for a hundred bucks, and let's make it two editions that gives extra DLC, like a season pass. Pff, fucking stupid. Um. Ag Watcher, oh my god, Ag Wachaga did a ten dollar submission. I've watched every single Wormy Three Disaster Battle. Thank you for the content, my man. No, it's my pleasure. Um, I can't read that. There, two euro super chat. Best historical total war for you. I play for fun. All right, uh, Medieval Two is my favorite. Thanks, for super chat, dude. Appreciate it. All right, well we got a little bit of healing to do, and let's get him over here. I mean, I don't have the intimate details of what goes on, but those are, from what I've heard, are roughly what ends up happening. That's what the business people are there for, to do those kind of deals. And some of the business deals, you know, they're probably good for Total War. Yeah, something like bringing Warhammer on board. That's a pretty good idea. And some of the ideas are downright stupid and backwards, and they need to be called out for it. Is this army losses? Are we done? No, not yet. There we go. Cool, another boring siege done. Shame Troy wasn't even worth being free. Well, you're not going to get a better price than free. But yeah, the, the thing is with a game, and I think this is something that Creative Assembly doesn't understand, is that you, when you're making a game, you have to you have to provide value for time. So what I mean by that is, all right, let's just say that there are two games on the market. Two games, game A and game B. Game A is free, but it's shit. It's fucking trash, right? And game B is pretty freaking good, but it's expensive, right? So game A, if you play it, it's full of bugs. It crashes all the time. It wastes player time, right? And so what ends up happening with game A is that the cost inferred is not monetary, it's time. It wastes players' time. People go in and play it, and it's just not fun. And since games are a leisure, they have to, you know, provide endorphins, right? <laughs> that's the whole point of it. Like, why play a game that's not fun? Doesn't make any sense. And so what ends up happening with game A is that nobody ends up playing it, even though it's free, because it's just shit. It wastes your fucking time. And then... Game B, even though it costs lots of money, you enjoy it. It's well made, it's not particularly buggy. And even though it costs a lot of money, you're getting enjoyment out of it. Game B is what you should be aspiring to, not fucking Game A. Game A is Troy. Game A is freaking Pharaoh. You know? It's not worth the time to bloody install the game. We have captured it. Then there's game C, where you it's expensive and it's shit. <laughs> That's Pharaoh. I, I hear Pharaoh's not too bad. I don't know. I mean, it's still pretty poorly rated on, on Steam. So I don't know. All right, next stop for us is the Phoenix Gate. We should be able to stand there and not have to worry too much about retribution from this one. Servant of the king. Now, Alariel might get there before us because she can definitely reach there. And if she does end up capturing it, it's no big deal because she's our ally. We should immediately get the um, the other item. I will hear you. 
call me witch? You defender of the Ever Queen. Okay. S there we go. We got confederation with Illyrian. So Ivress is My still a little while off. For Tor Ivress. But we can get the confederation Protector with Illyrian. So looking at that specifically, High Elven that's tier three. That'll be tier two. This will be tier two. No, tier one by the look of it. That's fine. It's not a big deal. The sooner we get this confederation over with, the better. What matters do you Yeah, wish our relations with the other high elves are all really good, so it's not going to affect us too badly. Public order. I'm just seeing what the ramifications are going to be from this confederation. Safari is the worst. I could just exempt it from taxation. Don't you need to be military allies to get item from Malarial? I bid you welcome. I don't know. Well, we'll just have to see what happens. Okay, yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna take this. Oh, I'll firstly get military alliance. It's not gonna change anything because I might like, get a little bit of cash out of them, and then grab the confederation. Cool. Twin that way, of the that way, Tyrannoch is not able to recruit any more units. They're only at war with, I think, Speak your deceitful word and me get and the Dreadfleet, so I can infinitely farm influence off them now with no problems. I, I still need to get somebody that can do influence. Alright, right, so we got some financial problems crap. here. Let's see. Oh, look, we inherited an amulet of foresight. That's good against Skaven. But I don't need it right now. I definitely don't need it on this dude. Unsentimental. Nah, that's shit. And just get rid of this entire army. Faithful servant. Oops. And this one here is a builder. Let's get rid of the entire army. Our traditions make us strong. Yeah, it's pretty good. That generates a lot of money. Okay, I might be able to get that built quicker if I recruit this administrator here. High Elven Archmage. And it's also a lot cheaper. Could wait until that's done, but I don't I think it's that big a deal. Azurians. Good. Getting close to tier 4. That's good. Alright, so over here is our biggest public order concern. Four turns until revolt. So I, I need to exempt this region from taxation now and just get through this confederation. Because I, I either need to globally increase the public order or build more of these, which I guess we can build that here when that comes. We've got this one available in seven turns. I could put a lord in here to maybe increase public order. Do we have a public order follower? No. No, I don't have a public order follower. Wolf Paul did a 10 euro super chat. Smart legend is smart. Okay, thanks dude. Appreciate that. Always appreciate your support, Wolf Paul. Okay, we don't need this one here anymore. So we can disband her. That'll save us some money. Tyria. Ever loyal. Reducing his upkeep isn't a bad idea either. Maybe I should have been doing that. Let's uh, just get increased that, because I I could always just reset him later down the track. I, I need to maintain public order in these areas. Champion of the Ever Queen. Actually, it wouldn't be a bad idea to get better item drop chance. Legend, is Kugath a bad legendary lord? No, his faction is bad, but the, um... Kugath is actually a very good legendary lord. But yeah, his faction sucks. The way that Nurgle is designed is just a bit shit. <laughs> just, a, just a bit shit. Alright, cool. 
Alright, so what is the next biggest defender apart from Safari? Tyrannoch. Actually, Tyrannoch is maybe even worse. That needs to be exempt. Kalidor. Five turns. Oh, God. Needs to be exempt. <laughs> Etain will be fine. Nagareth is... Yeah, we should not tax that. Illyrian... Oh my god, minus 18. We've also got this event here that's going to go away next turn, so that'll be good when it's gone. So, okay, maybe we can actually tax most of the stuff. Everything except for Safari. No, Tyranoch can't be taxed. Kalidor should be fine. Nagareth, turn that off. We really, we really should have gone down this line here. <laughs> it makes a big friggin' difference. Oh well. Okay, let's move on. Lady of, at, can I offer assistance? Yeah. When you can fed, it completes their building in progress. Oh, did it? No. No way, did it? I'll have to check that. I don't think it did. Okay, that means we've met Marathi now. Can you explain the confederation mechanic? Why is it possible confederation some factions and when not? Well, when is it possible confederate some factions and when not? There's loads of different factors and honestly, it's not very clear at all. Even though they've added in like different modifiers that you can read, they're, they're very unclear about what they actually do. Just give me a second, I'll try to um, go through a bit. Okay, Avalon didn't go for Phoenix Gate, that's good. That means we can get it. And that keeps her boxed in. What is your favorite faction in 40k? I really don't play any 40k right now. So I don't have a favorite. Not really. It's like, it's you don't have a favorite of things that you don't play. There's no 40k games I'm playing. Okay, so when it comes to confederations... Oh, right, I can't show it because it'll be disabled. I'll just have to wait until it's available again, because showing it without the visuals is kind of difficult. High Elven okay, we can Archmage. reach. There's only 10 units there. Because it might be good for Tyrion just to go straight over to here. Weaver of spells. That's if I can manage to win. This will fail. I'll have one no. unit on them. Mm. Alright, so let's have a look over here. No, they, they didn't finish it because this was at tier 2 and this one... Yeah, tier 1, they didn't finish any of the buildings. If we're lucky, we might even be able to auto-resolve it because these gates tend to have pretty poor auto-resolve power. No. Dark Elf music. Okay, I got an idea to boost our chances here. I'll send the heroes to go and assist. I am a fount of knowledge. Because I really don't want to split up Tyrion's army. The winds hearken to me. Okay, and then send Tyrion over here. Just, just hang on. Let me just see. If we got this. Yeah, we can't auto that. We have to fight it manually. But this should be quite doable now. Yeah, okay, let's do this. Which lord would Legend marry in Warhammer? Uh, I don't know. Probably wouldn't marry any of them. If you were starting a YouTube career now, would you have chosen Total War? 
No. No, if like if I was if I knew everything Oh, we can cut them off. If I knew everything that I do now, I think like back then, I probably wouldn't have done Total War. I would have done something else. So I'm kind of in the sunk uh, cost fallacy at the moment. Oh, who knows? Who knows? Maybe this is the only thing I could have succeeded at. Hard to say. Hmm. Coming in from the high ground, that could be a bit of an issue. Son of Mandalore did a 50 pound super chat. Hi Legend, if CA bent the knee and approached you to consult oh, bent the knee on how to make the current game better or the next game better for players, would you accept? Alright, thanks for super chat firstly. I tell you what, if I lived in a fantasy land where that kind of shit happened, then rainbows would just pour out of my farts. <laughs> like that is just never going to happen. Never. So yeah, sure, you know what, I'll just say yes, because there's no harm in answering a question like that. But I can just tell you right now, that is just never, ever going to happen. Creative Assembly have never considered me important whatsoever. The most so, it, it's, just, it's never going to happen. Loyal. I'm just a dumb YouTuber to them. You know, useful to help market their game, and nothing else. And that's fine. I just wish they had been honest about that. Total War's still my favorite game. Uh, it's favorite franchise. Uh, it's really hard to say because on one hand, yes, and on the other hand, there are so few Total War games that I actually like, so it's hard to say yes. So, it's definitely the franchise that I've put the most hours into. But, you know, I play Legend of Zelda games, and I gotta say, if there's ever a franchise that is actually my favorite, it's probably that one. Like, I like every single Legend of Zelda game, without exception. I see my path. Following my destiny. Asurian sends me. Whereas, there are so many Total War games, I just don't get any enjoyment out of playing. So. But I, I have definitely put more hours into Total War, for sure. And I think the formula of Total War is something that I've fallen in love with, but it gets bastardized and corrupted so often. Did you play Tears of the Kingdom? I have it, but I haven't had a chance to go through it yet. Yeah, I've played Tears of the Kingdom twice. Yeah, I've been through it twice. It's... In my opinion, it's a 10 out of 10 game. Like, I pretty much, I almost 100%ed Tears of the Kingdom. I just didn't get all the fucking bubble frogs, I missed five. And I obviously didn't get all the Koroks, because there's so fucking many of them. And I didn't upgrade every little piece of armor, because again, there's so many of them, it takes ages. But yeah, absolutely love that game. twice yeah i am actually really disappointed that they said that there's not going to be dlc for tears of the kingdom like i was like why don't you want my money just take my money i'd buy literally every dlc for that game <laughs> and they're like we're not gonna make dlc for this game it's it's complete and i'm just like yeah it's complete but i want more more. Bullshit. Not enough deal. No, no DLC. How dare they? Feels like bad business. They don't want my money. Because yeah, I liked all the DLC for Breath of the Wild, like adding master mode and those trials and stuff like that. That was really cool. I was kind of expecting to get that for um, 
Tears of the Kingdom, but yeah, apparently they're not coming. Much disappointment. My day was ruined. Orders understood. Quickly now. A pace. Death to all. Like them spearmen, fight them out. Yes, as you say. Moving out. Spell cast the supreme. Ah. Understood. Together. Is that where your name comes from? No. Forward. Eagle claw. A game company releasing a complete game, it's unheard of. Yeah, it is like that these days. Oh well, it is what it is. Legend, would you support a Total War game about the Aztecs and Incas? It's just a setting, that doesn't mean anything to me. Any setting is fine, I don't care. So yes, the, the Aztec and Incas, that's totally cool. Um, just make it mechanically good. Most of my friends are big fans. There's Breath of the Wild or Tears of the Kingdom. Obviously, Ocarina of Time is special place in my heart. Well, yeah, Ocarina of Time is the one that got me into Legend of Zelda. That's the first Ze Legend of Zelda game I played. I, I think I have finished Ocarina of Times. Sorry, I think I finished Ocarina of Time five times. Like, 100%ed it five times. <laughs> The only Legend of Zelda games I haven't played are the ones that are on Game Boy Advance, because I never got a Game Boy Advance. And... I wasn't going to buy a Game Boy Advance just to get that. Link's Awakening? I actually just finished Link's Awakening two days ago. So that's the one that came out in 2019. I just finished that two days ago. First time playing it. Although I do need to go back and play it in Hero Mode. I did a no death run. I didn't die once. As you say, ancestors. I thought I thought Link's Awakening was alright. I mean, it's a remake of a 20-year-old game. So, for what it was, I thought it was pretty good. We got it like secondhand, so it was cheap. Did you play the Zelda games on the Philips CDI? I did not, no. That's, like, I, like I said, the first Legend of Zelda game I ever played was um, on Nintendo 64, Ocarina of Time. And I, while I have played the original Legend of Zelda and Legend of Zelda 2, and Link's uh, A Link to the Past, I played the first two on GameCube because there was like a special anniversary edition that had like a whole bunch of old Zelda games on it. Forward. Skyward Sword was my favorite before Breath of the Wild. That's usually how it goes with Zelda games. The most recent Zelda game is my favorite. Because <laughs> yeah, that's how I felt about Skyward Sword as well. Like I loved it. I, I played through it multiple times. And what I especially love about Legend of Zelda as well is that my wife is just as into Legend of Zelda as I am. My wife finished Skyward Sword on Hero Mode. And she doesn't play games. For our ancestors. But she did it on Hero Mode, and that's not easy. Have you played Age of Calamity? Yes, I have. Yes, I, have. I haven't played it that much. It's on on my Switch. Um, I, I have played it. At them. I like it. I like it. I just haven't played it that much yet. Without question, attack! Are you still Which enjoying Star World? Have you grown tired of it? I grew tired of it. <laughs> I, I'll be honest about Starfield. I enjoyed my time playing Starfield. But the problems with the game became pretty apparent after a little while. 
Yeah. But, but you know, I'll, I'll just be perfectly honest. Like, I know a lot of people are shitting on, on Starfield right now, and I fully uh, understand those uh, complaints. Um, I enjoyed my time playing it. But is it a, like a great Bethesda game? Nah. Nah. You know, I was into it for a little bit, but then it's just... Nah. Direct me! Advance. It's got a lot of problems. Together! I saw Archmage! Behold my power! Alright, let's begin the main advance. These guys here should be able to outrange the guys on the walls, even if they're getting a range bonus. Might not be better to, to focus on healing and instead focus on using damage magic like a random thunderbolt. I think we get more value out of that. How many hours do I have in it? In Age of Calamity, not that many. Um, I do play the regular Hyrule Warriors, the one that's like the definitive edition. Um, I'm, I'm actually, I play that pretty much every day. I've been playing a lot of it. I've probably put about 200 hours into that game, and I'm not finished yet. I'm just grinding everyone out to level 255. It takes fucking ages. Oh, are you still talking about... Um, Starfield. Sorry, I lost interest in the conversation about Starfield. <laughs> uh, Tassos Panoff did a 5 euro super chat. Gunpowder Total War is love, Empire especially. Because uh, it was so expansive. Would you like to see the same expanse of the world as such a game in the new Empire? Absolutely. I would love to see an Empire 2 with a full world map that didn't have the worst AI that I've ever seen in my entire life. So my problem with Empire Total War was never the setting. I, I like the setting. Uh, I'm not the... Like, gunpowder is not my favorite type of warfare. But if it's done right, like with Fall of the Samurai, it can be very enjoyable. Um, my problem with Empire Total War is... The pacing is super slow, and I don't like that. I like it to be much faster paced. And... The brain-dead AI. Oh, so awful. And the bugs. There we go. I mean, how many hours you got in Starfield? I've got a lot, but you got to keep in mind is that hours that I'll have on Starfield is very different from what hours I'll have on the Switch because I'll like play the game and I'll leave it open for a long time. So if I have a look over here, Starfield, I think I think I've got a lot of hours in it. Yeah, I've got 500 hours in Starfield. Um, but a lot of those hours were load screens. <laughs> it crashed a lot. And I willed myself to get all of my powers to level 10. Which was one of the most boring, tiresome things I've ever done in gaming. But I, I willed myself through it. So, I would say that a, a good solid chunk of that 500 hours was me just mindlessly grinding through getting those powers to level 10. Which, in hindsight, I kind of regret doing. Five K hours on Warhammer three. How many do I have on Warhammer two? I have fourteen thousand. Yeah, fourteen thousand four hundred seventy hours in Warhammer two. Now I want to point out something. In Warhammer three, Warhammer three has been out for two years. Warhammer two was out for four. So if I had played Warhammer two, sorry Warhammer three, 
at the same amount of time as Warhammer 2, I would actually be at 7,000 hours right now. Now, here's the big thing as well, is that at the beginning of the year, beginning of 2023, I had about 4,000 hours in Warhammer, 4, uh, Warhammer 3. So I think I only played about 1,000 hours of it in 2023. Which, you, which is a lot, but it is also my job. What about the first game? I didn't play the first game very much at all. Um, maybe a thousand hours? Let me have a look. One thousand seven hundred. I didn't play Warhammer 1 very much, but comparatively. That's 585 days. Yes, but you gotta keep in mind it is work. <laughs> it is job. So it's not, you know, the amount of hours that I have on, on these particular games is not really the same as if it's in your Steam, right? Because a lot of hours of Warhammer 3 has been spent not having fun. Hi, Elvin Archmage. Don't get me wrong, I, I do like Warhammer 3. It's just, just not in love with it. Short-sighted. Well, it's under complete trash. They're just g games that are completely useless. Like, they just shouldn't even be games. Uh, like, complete trash is... Fucking Awakening of Solutio, 81 minutes. I don't even want to bother why I bothered playing that. Galactic Fighter, getting over it with Bennett. Oh my god, 14 hours playing that. Trash, Goat Simulator. Just games that I never want to look at again. I slowly add more categories to my, my Steam Pure folder. Magic. All right. Champion so the these guys over here, they might head over to Tordranil. Because they, they've got a pretty good chance of capturing it. Uh, one more turn of replenishment, and I think that they'll be able to repel that. Her Especially if I put a ward there. Ill considered. Yeah. Equip purple light on Monterion. Yeah, thank you, dude. And this will help with public order as well. So, Heart of Avalon. Oh, good, it was an enchanted item. So, here, yeah, you can keep the emerald collar, and that way we get the extra control all provinces. So, that's really, really handy. Cool, public order over here is actually sustainable now. Tyranox much better. That was a, like, really bloody low. Ugh, Nagareth is still a problem. It's always going to be a problem. Just got to deal with it. Okay, the Shrine of Assyrian, there is a landmark here. So this landmark provides control. This is actually not a great landmark. Yeah, this is actually not a great landmark. I don't really have any use for it at all. I know some people will be like, oh, but you gotta build a landmark. Eh. Yeah, I don't I don't think I need to build that. Like, none of that stuff, the only thing that's going to be of any benefit is the public order, and our public order here is fine. It's just not a great landmark. Alright, let's have a look at diplomacy. Alright, next confederation should try to be Eltharian, but it's... Okay, we're, we're getting into position to Give attack Slanesh. Right. This forest is old. Tyrion should recruit our main foreign territory. What? Oh, I am in. I am honored. Yeah, okay, that's better. All 
Okay, and let's move on. I'm assigned skill points over here. So that all worked out pretty well here. Good. High Elven Archmage. Yeah, I need to make my way down here a bit more. These two spells here aren't particularly good. Kurnos guide me. Uh, what would you think of a mechanic allowing you to switch the Sword of Cain from one Lord to another, but the current holder rebels and you have to take that sword by force? Uh, that is interesting. It's not one that I would ever use. And I think that would not be a well... It wouldn't be one that was used very often. Um, I don't think that's a bad idea, though. No interest in Phoenix Guard? No, Phoenix Guard are not amazing units. Because they're, they're super high tier. And by the time you reach that tier, you've just got better options. And also, 5% reduce upkeep cost for them? Pfft, it's just not worth it. Especially right now. Like, I can always build that building later down the track if I want to get them. I am Tyrion, champion yeah, There's of the no Ebony. point reducing the upkeep cost of units that you don't have any of. Alright, do I want to invade the old world? Probably more inclined to go to the... Um, to Nagaroth. Ill considered. Asur Sorcerer. All right. So when it comes to fighting Slanesh, I think we should be using everything that we've got to fight them. So we're not ready for that yet. No. I don't want this one to go Magic chase after this. Form. If I capture here, it is likely that this Ridiculous. character will attack Tor and Lek. Looking at that, the settlement has not replenished. Trained by the White Tower. What orders? Okay, we shouldn't really. Hang on, is this? Okay, they do have defenses here. They're trying to get the um, Shrine of the Widowmaker. They didn't pick up the Sword of Cain. Servant of the King. Hey, Anthony the Renton, how's it going, dude? Um, did they ever fix a recruit bug you discovered during the Changeling stream a few months ago? I don't know. I didn't check it back in on that one. I am ready to fight. I doubt it. I think that's only for Horde factions, because it doesn't seem to work for any other faction. Sunfang hungers. Teclis's command. Yeah, I'm gonna bring them over. Full speed, you know, That way, it'll allow me to all resolve by it. magic. Ulf one. There is glory to be won. Okay, reasonably spread out casualties. I'll transfer the This place is ours. Scholar Supreme. Yeah, I'll transfer Oh, I can't, I'm out of movement. Alright, Shrine of Cain's Both been captured. Defender. Get rid of this. Alright, it will take us ten turns to to build it, but I can speed it up a little bit more. If I get an Archmage in here, let me just see what's available. There she is. Master of High Magic. Ever loyal. Cool. That shaved one turn off, and if she stays here, yeah, we'll keep her here for Master this turn. Of oh, I probably should have recruited magic. someone over here. Never. Maybe Eltharion will go for that. Ah, Eltharion. Alariel. The winds were with us. But yeah, it's time to fight Slanesh now. Shield against the dark. I should have recruited her over here. Magic. It's too late now, I've already recruited someone. All good. Alright, Confederation will last three more turns. Looking at other things. Do you have any inside regarding Thrones of Decay. No, all of the inside information that I had has now been made public information. So, the inside information that I had was that it was coming in April. I obviously didn't reveal that. What I said was it was coming after February. Um, the reason for that is because I don't 100% believe everything that the leaks tell me. And so I gave a 
a, a, a bit more of a generous estimation. They ended up being correct. But still, you gotta be careful with leaks. It's like when I said the next Total War game is like 19th century. There's, who knows, it might not be. I have no idea. This is what, what my leaks are telling me. I hope it's good. I hope it's good. I hope it's not built off the back of Troy. That would suck. True magic. Legend, I always notice that you spread your territory so much faster than I normally do. How do you maintain order while expanding so quickly? Um, I usually turn off the taxes. So, if we have a look over here. Oh, no, not that region. Over here. Yeah, I've turned off taxes. And build public order buildings wherever you can. That's all you can really hope to do. Uh, also, Tyrion has a lot of ways of increasing public order, especially Sunfang, control all provinces. So that's really handy. Okay, we should switch our technology over to mo monthly festivals. Again, extra control, faction wide, really handy. Four turns until this develops, that's good. The Eltharians thinking rest. about coming over here. Hopefully all of these armies start rushing over here to deal with him. This is why we haven't declared war on, on Nakari just yet, so he doesn't realize we're coming for him next. Yes. Yeah, he won't be able to counterattack at Shrine of Kurnos straight away. That's good. Alright, let's go. Yes, yeah, so we're not taxing this. Okay, let's move on. How many hours did you play in Shogun 2 so far? I didn't play that much Shogun 2 in total, so... Ooh, yuck. So Shogun 2, I have played 872 hours, which is a lot, but nowhere near as much as Warhammer. Alistair is not worth it as a lord? No. Not right now. Get him later down the track, but right now, no. There's nothing special about Alistair in the early game. But yeah, later down the track, if you want to recruit white lion type units, he, it, he's definitely pretty good. But I'm not recruiting those units right now. Alright, money is pretty good now, so I think... Paying for some more influence is good. Also, paying some influence for public order will be good because I'm doing a lot of confederations. Nah, I'm gonna take this. Wait, what was that one? Was that extra campaign movement range? That might have been better. So that now. Okay, that one just sat around doing nothing. Cool. You have my undivided attention. So she's not going to confederate with that relation. This is dropping down a bit too fast. I need to keep it higher. Do not expect pleasantries. The defense of Ivress is all that matters. I just realized what I should have done is when I sold him these territories, I should have given him some money back as a gift, because he would have had no money, so it would have been very cheap to do that. In my father's name. Because, yeah, I think, I think Eltharian's the next one I'm going to confederate. Alright, good, we can make it over to Shrine of Kronos. But not with Tyrion. That's okay, as long as one person Master can make it. Of magic. Do not expect pleasantries. The defense of Ivress is all that matters. Let's try this. Cool. It That'll improve relations with us by just a smidge. I will hear you. I promise no more than that. Oh, let me try this. Why not? My son. <coughs> we definitely don't want Elarial declaring war on them. I don't think that made any difference at all. Let your words be true. And your time here, brief. 
Ah, oh, I should have done this first, deprived of his money, and then given him a gift. Dumb. Tor Evres expects. Oh well. Could have got that gift a bit cheaper. Magic in purest form. Fury of the winds. What is currently your favorite Total War game? Uh, one prevails. Asurian protects. I mean, I could say Warhammer 3, but Warhammer 3 is also very disappointing. So... That is actually just a very difficult question to answer, just due to the complexity of how Warhammer works. I'd say that my favorite Total War game is just the Total War Warhammer project, but I've been a bit disappointed... Oh, sorry, I've been very disappointed with it lately. Moving out. They will die. Ah, oh, shit! I forgot to. Assyrian, take them. I should have built. I should, could have shaved off two turns on that. Oh well. Oh, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. If I recruit another lord, <laughs> we can shave another two turns off. I think I just need to find an administrator. Oh, I got two ready to go. Right, let's grab you. Master of high magic. Okay. I see the winds. Boundless wisdom. So you can't use the skill reset on anyone that's at rank one. So it's sometimes good to have them higher than rank one. Let me see if you do it. Alright. Alariel's champion. My gifts permit it. Alright, I'm just gonna Transfer this character over here. I will share my experience. Because he needs more the replenishment. We don't want him put in into this region over the end turn because he'll take corruption. Falls Whereas this one here won't. Power. We should be able to auto resolve this. Riot Games contractually obligates their employees to play the games they are responsible for. Yeah, I don't know if I 100% agree with that mindset. The winds I, I don't think it is digest. essential for all of the employees to be fans of Total War. I just, I don't think that's an essential part. However, I, I think that the, the leadership at Total War should at least be somewhat aware of these games. A bulwark in Ulthuan's war. Yeah, especially, especially if they're going to try to have us believe that they are fans of the franchise. Well, like when they, when they the make those blog Ulthuan. posts saying how much they love Total War and all this kind of stuff, it comes across as phony and fake, and it makes me distrust them. Creative Assembly's got a major image problem, and I think it's their own fault, because they are... They just don't want people to look at them as a corporate entity. They want people to look at Creative Assembly as, like, this really friendly people-first entity, and it is just not true. It just isn't. They don't put people first. <laughs> That's been proven many times over. And it's totally fine if they don't want to, if they don't have to put people first. It's totally a fine for Creative Assembly victory. to be like, look, we're a profit first company. Because at least they're being honest by doing that. All this other crap is, it's just phony. Ever vigilant. This is a very phony leadership. Ancestors betrayed. Okay, cool. So we're going to deal with Nakari, but our faction's stronger than him, so I think we're in good position to be able to fight him with two armies. Let's recruit a couple of extra units as well. Could get some Loth and Seaguard. Nah, just go with the cheap shit. Like, we're in a good position here. We don't need to go with... Super tough units, and plus our money's not amazing right now. Next turn we'll have more public order, so that'll be good. So Nagareth and Tiranok isn't being taxed. Public order confederation will go away soon. Alright, I was gonna build the gold mining pit. Like, that's... 270 gold, but if I build the plaza, then I can get three extra control. See, there's no point building gold if I'm not taxing it, so I might as well build public order so I can tax it. 
Makes sense. Better to get some money than none. Uh, Cub fan Yoshi did a six month membership. Woot, hail f uh, on my favorite level stream. Alright, thanks, dude. Appreciate that. They're one of my favorites as well. Uh, would it be better to have the Elven Embassy in a minor city? Yes, it would, but this is just... I just needed to build that because I had nothing else that I needed to build, and I will adjust things later down the track. So when this reaches Tier 5, I will demolish all the um, the growth buildings, and that will give us room to build um, Elven Embassies if we want. You, know, you, don't, you don't have to commit to these buildings. You can demolish them later down the track. Okay, that's not urgent. Then we should save up our money where needed. Uh, focus on... Public order here is absolutely awful. Recruit rank all province is not too bad. So looking at this, we got climate minus nine. Raiding. Minus five. Two turns until the revolt. Shit, I may need to recruit a lord over here and deal with the revolt. Although, Alariel has a pretty good chance of actually coming in and defending me. I've already recruited a lord this turn, so if we're going to do it, we have to do it next turn. The people are restive. Makes no difference. Just keep it off. There's not much money there anyway. The most gifted. Get some dwellers below going. Cool. Public order here. Ah, sorry, the winds of magic here is not good. That means that Nakari should be suffering. I yep, he is. That's good. Alright. Let's check diplomacy if there's anything oh, no, interesting. Probably not. No. Your okay, request? let's move on. Is Imric not worth to confederate anymore? Absolutely he is. It's just, it's turn 21, and you don't need to rush it. You know, that's two years ago was Warhammer 2. Things have changed since then. It boggles my mind how much uh, some people just have not changed their strategies since Warhammer 2. They're just stuck in the same mindset. Imric doesn't get wiped out on turn 5 by Snitch anymore. And also, uh, Imric can be revived. Also, Kalidor ends up dying super early now, before you, it's even possible for you to confederate them. And so that was the way of discovering Imric previously was confederating Kalidor. It's just not possible to do that. So the conditions required for that strategy are just gone. Um... Publicly charting them, attrition plus 50% casualties from high seas attrition is not a big deal at all. There's an 8 influence difference, but I'm going to I'm gonna go with this one. Alright, cool, they're gone. I bid you welcome. What? Duty is purpose. Good, we got extra public order there. Speak quick. Well, I must trained by the white tower hmm. I will hear you. so I imagine he wants me to kill Nakari that'd be really good because if I do that if I if I get Nakari no glory. Nakari might get him only service hmm. Tyrion, air, if I Tyrion. can kill Nakari before he does oh crap um, if Eltharion captures Elysia, then it's going to reset his timer for Confederation. There are secrets here. So we really need him My to get wrecked, which difference. I would say that there's a pretty good chance of that happening. Archmage. Your secrets are mine. Mm, okay. Mm. Alright, so Alario bought me an extra turn by getting rid of that army, so that's good. We have much to discuss. Come, join me. I don't know if that's a good idea right now. 
shaper of fates. So here's the thing. If I bring both of these armies over here in encamp stance, it is unlikely that <sighs> that Nakari will attack us. Because he won't win. There's no way for him to win. However, he might not attack Eltharian. If he attacks Eltharian, I'll definitely get a confederation. Trained by the white if Eltharian captures Elysia, we won't get a confederation. So we'll just have to wait and see what happens with this. Let's just move the up to here in camp stance. I shall go. Oh, he was lowering public order in the province. Oh man, he sucked to him. All right, we need to put a lord in here so that they can increase public order. This one here is at rank 10. So there's still other things in here that need to be constructed, so that's not that big of a deal. Let's um, chuck her in. And to buy ourselves a little bit of time, we put the points into Iron Disciplinarium. And is there anything in here that provide? Yeah, dedicated to Asurian, but that's fine. We'll just replace it later. So that's providing five extra public order. It just buys me some more time. Which is what I really need here. Master Mage, I bring Azurian's fire. High a revolt Elvin might be inevitable, so we need to be ready for that. There's still a little bit of instability, so that's gonna go down. Confederation penalty should be going away next turn. Yep. Can't ever get rid of climate or difficulty penalty. Time for confederation? Yeah, one more turn. So yeah, my big hope here is that, that Nakari comes over here, Prince defeats Eltharion, gets his ass whooped in the process, you know, wins but loses most of his army, and then we just mop up over here. What would you have of the Phoenix King, stranger? That was that would be the ideal thing. Alright, we got a little bit of money to spend on construction, not heaps. Alright, this is being taxed. I think we can go with extra growth here. Yep. It's all good. That's all good. Safari. Yeah, we need to get public order in here to make sure that it continues to maintain. So that's really good that we got that done. Continue this one. The fuck did I just click? Oh, I don't think I made any changes. Alright, fingers crossed with this, because yeah, Nakari's turn goes first. And he'll pick up a few extra units. So he'll have more than a full stack to fight Eltharian, plus Eltharian. He's got a basic army, and is same level. Petty There's a good chance. There's a good chance Eltharian's gonna lose that. Is it possible to play mutated rat ogres with Clan Scryer, or are they only good on Clan Molder? Oh shit, Eltharian fucking won. Ah, oh, damn it. Oh, and then he lost. Shouldn't have had that on fast mode. What the fuck happened? I have no idea. He must have sacked it. That's okay if he sacks it. Yeah, that's okay. As long as he doesn't occupy it. Best case outcome? Not necessarily. It's not necessarily the best outcome because I didn't get the allegiance points. See, if I got those allegiance points, I could grab his army, which will lower his strength ranking, which will allow me to confederate him. It is a good defeat trait, yeah. Nakari deprived me of his own defeat trait. All right, looking at him. State your case quickly, for countless Asur lives depend upon me. <laughs> hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. High Elven Archmage. Of course. Lady of the Phoenix. Have you come yeah! If <laughs> just had enough. 
All right, it all worked out in the end. It shall be done. Yeah, borrowing their armies lowers their strength ranking, which allows you to confederate them easier, which just gives you their army in the first place. Champion of the Ever Queen. Ready okay, yourself. you can get to Elysia, and Tyrion can get to Torakare. There is nothing to worry about in either one of Safari these, so servant. we've got this. Bye bye, Wrath Nakari. The they will know the teachings of Teclas. Protector of the Ever Queen. Bring me battle. We have captured it. Could have waited a while for him to get his special units. Oh, pff, who cares? Could end up waiting like 20, 30 turns for that. That's not worth it. Prince Elthar. All right, we scored Cavill, who is primed. Eh, whatever. Hmm, I don't really like the way he's been leveled up. Seeking truth. I think I might actually disband Cavill. No, Legend of Ten Recover. Oh wait, I don't need to. No, I'll just reset his skill points so that he's wounded. Yeah, let me sure that I'm not going to waste. Cool. Oh, swan and. Expects. Yeah, I don't like the way you've been leveled up. Yeah, I don't like it. Should disband his army first. Uh, okay, that's no big deal. Just put one in Master and then just disband all of them. Magic. Nice. Her servant. Save Henry? Nah. Nah, his unique trait is not a big deal. And he never gets any of the really good traits, so I'm not really fussed about Henry Cavill. Uh, Cavill. He's actually not what we want. Okay, there's no need to keep any of this. Or this one here. Oh, punitive. Yeah, I'll save you. Oh, hang on, let me just um, rename you first. Oh yeah, there's something I wanted to show you guys. I forgot about it until right now. So, my brother um, got me a Christmas present, and I'm wearing it right now. And I thought it was hilarious, and I think you guys will love it. <laughs> What would that look like anyway? <laughs> what do you get your brother when he's obsessed with himself? I know, a shirt with his own face on it. <laughs> you know, I think it's actually so good that I reckon I could sell it as merch. <laughs> He got your own shirt face? Yeah. At your service. Cause like in all the family photos I'm always pulling like really stupid faces. And so he took one of those stupid faces and put it on a shirt. I'd wear it to every family event. Man, when I opened it, I immediately put it on and I wore it for the entire day. My wife's friend was coming over, well, she did come over today and I was wearing this shirt and my wife was like, could you please wear a different shirt? I'm just like, what's wrong with this shirt? She's like, you look stupid. <laughs> decree. What is wrong with a shirt like this? Yeah? yeah. What is wrong with this? Look. Like, 
That is a face. Look at that, that's perfect. That is a face. <laughs> yeah, it is a face. I have a face. Uh, we're low on cash. We need to focus on things of higher value than growth. Okay, so we got Ivress over here. Keep that one for now. Don't need that. Don't need that. Don't need that. And we've also got the, the territories that we sold to him originally. He didn't change that. I think these, this faction here might um, be a bit pissed off at me. Let me just see if I can give them some money. Oh, no, I can't. Uh, conquering them wouldn't be a big deal. Uh, it depends if they declare war on me. I should try to establish friendly relations with them again. Kothik. Got to give that a couple more turns to reset. We have much to discuss. Student of Teclis. Public order here is actually maintaining now. Well, sort of. Too bad I don't have Master one of those bloody followers. Hmm. Alright, well, Ulthwan is pretty much safe for now. We just gotta consolidate a little bit. And then I usually go to invade Stanky Bitch. Uh, Phil Cam did a five pound super chat. Never change, you beautiful rat man. Yes, yes. Okay, thanks, dude. I wasn't planning on it, but we'll see. Sometimes it's good to change. All right, let's get Spear Wall is all right. I'll put the garrisons as well. All right, we need to start getting ready over here because next turn it's going to recruit, uh, build up to tier five. So for one thing, we need to make sure we got enough money, which we don't. All right, I've got to cancel some construction. Against the darkness. I've got to cancel some stuff. Not essential. Not essential. Not essential. Keep that. It's not expensive. Anything that's being demolished will provide us with some money. Okay, we need to put in some administrator lords. Which I'm not sure if I've got any available. I, I can get a new one. Okay, I've got one available over here. Cool. High elven and that way I can recruit another one next turn. Also, I can recruit a lord here and bring it in this way, so I can maybe get three. Might need to recruit one of my other ones. So let's get let's get that one. Look at this one here. This one's an entrepreneur. I'm going to delete her. Yeah. So I just got rid of my. Um, I just saved her. I can actually load out a character that I just saved. <laughs> That's interesting. Uh, load this. Wait, 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 wait. This administrator here. Master of high magic. And that way, I can bring the her over here calls. next turn. Does the administrator buff stack? Yep. Uh, do I want to build that? If I build that, I'm not going to be able to afford it over here next turn. In fact, I might be able to build that next turn with all with two of them, not three. Tyria. Scholar Supreme. Okay, we just got to get through this turn here.
Question, why are you upgrading the elf gate to the stage? I find it useful for them. Yeah, you're right. That's why I cancelled it. And the elf gates can be of some value to you if you ever get invaded, which we probably won't. Does Eltharian money lending cheese still work? I believe it does, yeah. I'm not 100% sure on that though. I haven't played an Eltharian campaign in a while. And last time I did play it, I don't think I tried to cheese it. That's good. And uh, we got plenty of money. Magic in purest form. So at the moment, we drop down the cost from 9,000 to 7,500. This one pops Behold in there. My power. And it goes to 6,000. So every administrator character get, drops it down by 1,500. It's pretty good. So let's get another one. I'm not sure if I've got any available. Oh, I do. Hi, cool. Elven Archmage. And then it only takes two turns, costs four thousand hang on. Poeth's disciple. Pure magic. High Elvin Archmage. Oh, this one's got constructor, so it was reduced a little bit further. Right, Trained I was wondering what's going on. The there. White Tower. So that's good. That drops it down even further. And Yep, good. One turn for that. Cool. I bring Azurian's fire. Do and I've still got money left over. That's good. Bring the these two over. I no. wield the winds. Actually, do Torfianu first. Asur sorcerer. And good. That saves us quite a lot of cash, and we get that to tier four real quick. A reckoning. Uh, whoa, 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 whoa! Do it the proper way. Come on, let's not get crazy here. Master of magic. Yeah, that one can't be reset. High mage. Oh, I should have done that as well. Uh, yeah. Whoops. Oh well. Getting tired. If I save a Nurgle hero while I play Kugat, can I load him when playing Chaos campaigns? I don't think so. I'm not sure. I haven't tried that out. I know that if you're playing as a, like a Warriors of Chaos. Uh, so if you're playing as one of the Champions of Chaos, let's just say you're playing as Kugath, and you save a melee character, a melee champion of Nurgle, if you then go and play a Zinch campaign, you can then load that character into your Zinch camp. So, like, your, um... um if you're playing as Village, you can load up that Nurgle character. Safari's Servant. That's not a high priority. Ready for orders. Alright, these Rebuff ones here, the I'd much rather confederate you. them than attack them. The relation with them is not particularly good. A generous gift can tide them over for a little while. I think I'd rather give them money than influence. Though my influence isn't too bad. Welcome to the court I want to spend my influence on Alariel. That she's the next one I want to confederate. We also need to send a character to go and meet Elf uh Elithana. Oh look who it is, Grom the Paunch. I haven't, no, I haven't met him. Hmm. Hi Elvin Archmage. I'm gonna give them a gift. your pace quickly, lest I tire of your voice. Yeah. If you will it. Okay, that'll stop them from cancelling the trade agreement. Just buy us some time. All right, and let's take these armies rest. and get ready to invade stanky Begin ass. A wise plan. It is hotter than Vol's forge. 
Awaiting orders. Good. His presence here has maintained Trained public order. We can actually tower. tax. Uh, no, but for that amount of money, don't bother. Okay, we've got no money left. Still looking pretty good. Ooh, Tyrion has to remain in this province here if we want to pick up the short sword of Cain. I had said we were going to do that. For Hoeth. You may need to turn off the taxes here. Champion of the Ever Queen. All right, we sit around here and wait for this to occur. I got no money left for any of that. Okay, let's move on. Why not travel via the sea? Should be faster. Well, it's not because you're you're taking a longer distance because you're taking a longer circle. Um, if you were going on the inner part of Ulthuan, yeah, crossing by sea is quicker. But going going this way is actually quicker. This played as Noctilus, it was a pain in the ass to beat the High Elves. Yeah, the High Elves are reasonably strong. I will weigh what you have to say. They, you know, so you. Of your action. No! The whole reason I gave you that money was to stop you from doing that. You son of a bitch! They might declare war on me. <coughs> I just saved you from Slanesh, you bitch. That's good, I need that. Phoenix Court awaits your plea with interest. Recently signed treaties. See, that's... That's bullshit. That recently signed treaties actually means recently broken treaties. <laughs> the way that this is written is so bad. We have much to... You have a proposal for the Asur. How delightful. Come on, I mean, you're at war with the Shadow Legion. You're not going to pick a fight with me, surely. Especially because we... I don't hate me. Okay, it looks like this is reset. Yep, this is reset. So we'll throw a little bit of influence their way. This will fix things up with them a bit. But the majority of this, once I want it to go to um, Avalon, I need to get this above 150. We've still got the Confederation penalty for three turns, so that'll go away soon. This is getting a bit expensive. Okay, that should do it. Because I could just throw her some more gifts. To split the difference or whatever. Shield of Alaria. Oh no, if I pick up the Sword of Cain, everyone's going to be angry at me. Oh well, I said I was going to do it. Probably I here is much better. Sustain force, actually, yes, sustain. Servant of the king. Did I? Yeah, I haven't got you the trait yet for force march. Ready so to serve. you staying in there means that this person here Master can be disbanded. Magic. True magic. Cool. Good, so yeah, public order's maintaining here. Oh, I probably should have built that first. Because she was an administrator, but that's okay. Well, uh, maybe there's other higher priority settlements to focus on than this one. Because that'll be done soon. There'll be a whole bunch of things that we need to build. Yeah, this is a high priority province, because it's... Good territory. You'll lose a lot of control by removing Sunfangs and Sword of Cain. Are you accounting for that? No. You're right. Um, we'll lose a lot of public order for that. You're right. Five. <laughs> oh, our public order's okay. Yeah. 
Oh man, Sword of Cain is so bad. Yeah, you really shouldn't ever pick it up. Magic in purest form. No, no, stay in that. Full okay. speed, Asya! So we just gotta wait here for two turns. Public order and attain is good. Yes, I've got more work to do over here, but we're just low on funds. Let's see if there's anybody that wants any, any I deals. Call me Queen no. of Avalon. You've been recruiting mostly archmages. Is there ever any point in prince princesses? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, you only really need one archmage. The, the reason why we're recruiting archmage is not before archmages is for their trait, um, administrator. That's all. Why not go straight for a Lithanar? Uh, Elariel's more important to get right now. Yeah, I usually get a Lariel first, because having her run around, providing extra growth, public order, and um, influence is really good. Popcorn became a member for 19 months. Coming home from work to find Legend streaming, hell yes. Also, I love the fact that Reddit helps with getting you to do that Shogun 2 disaster. Good luck, have fun. Alright, thanks, dude. Yeah, that was, that was good. Thanks for uh, membership. Servants so, Capital came tower. back. And I've decided not Servants to disband him because I'm going to need him to maintain public order over here. Knowledge awaits. Go on. Yeah, just just stay over here and. Yeah. Okay, just stay there and help maintain public order here because as soon as we leave, as soon as next turn comes around and we pick this up. Shit's gonna hit the fan. Archmage. Your wit and wisdom will be a welcome okay. distraction. It is so unlikely please. that this one is going to declare war on us, but we don't have any treaties with them. But yet, yeah, high elves typically don't declare war when they like you. The true of heart always find a warm welcome in my court. Mm. Alright, Lothurn reached tier 5. Ah, uh, sorry, tier 4. So, we should build... Yeah, more nobles would be good. I've got more emollient characters that I can recruit. Alright, so I need more administrators here. Eltharion's available again. I don't really need him right now. Actually, no. Do you know what would be good? Last if Eltharion was in command of this army, that would be good. Because he's a healer. So all I gotta do is take off all of your items and then reset you. And then get Eltharion up in here. I can better serve the And then we got a few bonuses yet. Break upon the walls, that's what you want to get straight away. Unyielding march is good. Don't really need that. Grim Discipline is alright. Don't really need that right now. Definitely don't want dedicated to Ladriel. There's no way we can recruit any Mistwalkers. Okay, good, we've got... No, wait, we don't have the Fang Sword of El Eltharion. So that is obtained at rank... Oh, Mission will obtain at um, rank 17. Okay. Probably like fight green skins or something, I can't remember. Yeah, whatever. Cool, we can always reset him and again. Prince it Eltharion. And he'll have Nakari's... Trait, character experience gain plus seven percent faction wide, so that's that's good. T 
Tyrion owes me. <laughs> Obey the vow. All right, and your orders, Tyrion. Yeah, next turn. Next turn we get the sword of Cain. Good. We can have this one to compensate us for now, for the public order. So that'll be good. Because yeah, we're gonna lose five public order from losing from losing Sunfang and picking up sword of Cain. God, the sword of Cain is the shit sword. Okay, we've got an administrator here. High Elven Archmage. And I'm out of cash. Yeah, I got no more money. You seek illumination. Alright, this one here, let's take it on ahead Onward, and then. go and secure some more influence. Adventure awaits. Okay, and let's move on. How come I take a hundred turns to get to this point, but Legend takes twenty six? Try harder. I appreciate the pain you're going through to create the ultra meme Tyrion. Yeah, it's not optimal to do this at all, and I don't even like doing it. Sword of Cain is really bad, especially early on in the game. Later on in the campaign is fine. You'll have all the stuff you need to mitigate all the problems it causes. Getting contact with Elith is good. He can die in this patch. You can just revive him if he dies. No big deal. It just, yeah, it just isn't worth the problems because I've got a lot of stuff reducing relations with high elves. If we have a look here, he's still alive. We can actually see that Elthar, so sorry, Elthar, Alithanar is pushing desires. in on her ass. So it looks like Alithanar is going to win, so we'll discover him pretty soon. That's, that's a really good one. Band braces of defense. 15% ward save and melee defense. You could argue that one's actually better than a Talisman of Preservation, because melee defense is pretty damn good. Well, here we go. Shit, here we go again. Ugh, I hate that. <laughs> Alright, let's have a look at how bad the public order is. Okay, worst offender is Safari, but it's actually maintaining. Kalidor is declining a little bit, but it'll be fine. We've also still got the Confederation penalty, so that'll improve public order when it goes away. You have my undivided attention. Alariel needs another payment in order to maintain friendship. Although once the once the Confederation penalty, that'll give us an extra forty. What would you have of the Phoenix King, stranger? This one's fine. I definitely don't want to join war against Belakor. He's inconvenient to fight. Of spells. You know, in Warhammer 3, I really don't feel the need to push for Tower of Mages that quickly. Instead, it would be better to get Handmaidens of the Everqueen quicker. The people are rescued. If you could Do not tarry. come over here. True magic guides me. Save a little bit of cash on this. Seeking a trial. Yeah, public order kind of maintains. I think we can even tax that. And we're out of money. Trade Leave her there. We've the got White more construction Tower. that needs to be done. Alright, well, we've got Tyrion I with what uh, we said we were going to do. So I have fulfilled my oath. <laughs> my stupid oath. Alright, let's go fight Stanky. What time is it? Oh my god, it's really late. Could you give me what a little bit of money? Do you wish to lay before the Everqueen? 
I will use my gifts. No, I didn't get enough to get anything. Alright, it's all good. And technologies. Oh, th that's why we need the archive for that building. Hmm. Alright, we'll demolish that one since I don't desperately need this one anymore. We we've got enough influence for now. And as long as we've unlocked that tech, we need to get that uh, building here sorted to get the... the this tech here, this one specifically, is really bloody good. Because, yeah, none of these techs here are particularly good. I need to move on from them. You must restore order. Okay, let's move on. Yep, both one's pretty safe now. He uses the gate to farm influence with nobles. That's right, yeah, because they can't recruit new armies from there. So it's just like a, a enemy settlement that has no economic value whatsoever. So there's no real need to go and capture it. We've encountered Nagareth. And um, we'll just... Just can't fight back. They can't recruit heroes. They can't recruit lords or armies. They can't fight back. Don't you get auto access to handmaidens and sisters once you confederate Alariel? Yes, you do. You're absolutely right, but you still need to increase the capacity. The shadows come. The day wanes. See, this is why I didn't really want to discover him, because he doesn't like us very much. Seems unlikely he'll declare war on us right now, but Defender of Alpha. a little bit of tidbit of information. Um, Alithanar killed Tyrion in the end times because he picked up the Sword of Cain, shot him through the heart, or well, through his armor or something. Setting forth. What do you require? Smash it to ruin. Cool. Bit of extra influence for a few turns is nice. By okay, we've got a few things to construct here. Yeah, we need the Elven Court as soon as possible, because I need more public order. Good, another administrator ready to go. Master of high and cool, save some time on that. We definitely need to get this one done, because we need that technology. Scholar Supreme. And then... Yeah, you move back over talent. here. Upgrade these. And the then vortex. be disbanded. Hi, Elven Archmage. Why is it the Wood Elves are super isolated and are not as the high What? Why is it that the Wood Elves are super isolated and are not as the other high or dark ones? Uh well, I don't know. The the elves during their like the peak of their empire they spread across the old world so they had settlements all across this area here and so one of those areas that they occupied was Athel Lauren over here which the the forest spirits initially didn't want the elves there but eventually grew to be like okay they can live here I guess and then when Malekith did his old you know I'm a dark elf uh, the wood elves were like um Sorry, after the War of the Beard, because so many so many elves died in that war and it lasted so long, the Wood Elves were like, I want nothing to do with the High Elves or the Dark Elves. We're our own separate entity. And so they became the Azrae. So it's just elves being elves and Give being disobedient strength. bitches. Ready to serve. Speak your peace. Alright. 
I've done everything I can here. Looking at public order. Most is going up. Some of them are going down. It's not too bad. Yeah, we no longer have the confederation penalty, so if we have a look here. Welcome in my court. Oh. Ooh, okay, hang on a second here, because I bring Azurians. I don't have a military alliance. If I did, servant of I'd be able to borrow her armies to weaken her. Infused yeah, like if I borrowed this wisdom. this Master army here, I'd probably be able to kill oh, this one here. I got enough I influence, the winds. but I don't have a military alliance. I bid you welcome. What do you wish to discuss? Baseline evaluation minus 10. We just haven't reached a high enough relation, I think. I'm not entirely sure. Or I could give her a settlement, but that would reset her strength rating, so that's not what we want to do. Okay, we'll just move on anyway. I bid you welcome. Yeah. What the relation's still going up, so we'll just... Oh, hang on. Kothik still doesn't want trade. By the no, I'm nothing to do about that. Need to bring in Lawmaster Soto. Yeah, look, from a law perspective, I am not an encyclopedia, and you shouldn't be asking me about law stuff. Like, I got I got rough ideas of stuff, but I'm, I'm certainly not super familiar on everything. But basically, yeah, it is Malekith's fault that there are Dark Elves, Wood Elves, and High Elves. If it wasn't for Malekith being Malekith, all of the all of the Elves would just be the High Elves. All one people. Sort of. I mean, the Dark Elves of... So the Elves of Nagareth, they're the Dark Elves. They're, um... They were always kind of a bit debauched. Because that's Anarian's people. That's where he's from. He's a dark elf. That's pretty good. You have my undivided attention. Hmm. There probably was an opportunity to get a military alliance that they missed. Wisdom will be a welcome distraction. See. Following your orders. As you command, it is necessary. Why has he got so much less movement than Tyrion? The Reaper. Especially considering Great I gave him a yielding march. Stand ready. Hesitation is okay. unacceptable. Okay, there we go. Now he's getting the movement. I, I don't know what happened there. Maybe he wasn't in force march. I will obey. Never falter. Direct me. I am a fount of knowledge. Our buildings mm, lie in okay. ruins. Yeah, I need more cash. As much as I'd love to get more growth, we're just not rolling around in as much cash as what we could really use. Order must be maintained. It shall be. Let's check all those areas. Just seeing what regions aren't being taxed. Just Nagareth and Crace. Crace should be fine to take uh, to tax now. David Johnson did a five super shit. Hey Legion, thank you for the years of content and honesty. I hope you and the wife are having a good year. Yeah, so far so good, dude. Thanks for super chat. Appreciate it. Hope you're having a good year as well. Duty is purpose. So far so good. All right, and let's move on. So we begin. I would like it if they put. Oh, she's in bad shape. Okay, good. Now's now's a good time to attack her. Approved. Yeah, now's a good time to smash her ass. 
At your we should be able to land there next turn. Eltharion. Uh, Tyrion. Tyrion, heir of an area. Yeah, let's move you in a little bit closer, actually. Sailing for adventure. Yeah, yeah, get in there, get in there. Nice. <laughs> I'll, I'll see if Eltharion can launch the attack, because it might be good for Tyrion to progress further out this way. And he's got unlimited ammunition, so that battle will be really easy. I still don't know why there's a Kislev faction in Nagarond. Yeah, it doesn't really make much sense, does it? I guess they just felt like the Kislev area was getting a bit cramped with Legendary Lords. So they put them in another cramped area full of Legendary Lords. <laughs> I don't know. Eh, creative Assembly does what Creative Assembly does, I don't know. Prince Eltharion. Ro Asim. I will carve mine. Yes. Always we'll try to get some it. money if we can. Naturally. Better than nothing. All right. Looking at Alario. You have my undivided attention. <laughs> Serving the gods. I'm gonna. I'm gonna. I'm gonna come. <laughs> I'm gonna get a. Welcome to no! The of the no! <laughs> no, I didn't reduce her strength by enough. Damn it! I've heard tales of your valor. Magic in purest form. How much do I need now? Alaria, Could you join war Asia. against them? Seek? Yes. I could just threaten her, but that will really wreck my reputation. Master of high magic. Okay, sometimes borrowing their armies actually makes them go bankrupt, because I think it's like a hidden effect, right? Where they only pay like 50% upkeep for their armies, but they still have to pay like upkeep for these armies as well. But when they're under your control, they then have to pay 100% for the upkeep, and then they can't afford them anymore. Something along those lines. Full speed, so what I'm going to have to do here... Thrice, never, led by the winds. In order to st basically just up our strength ranking just a bit more. I thought I was really going to confederate her there, but not quite. Uh, we need to recruit another lord and just recruit troops. The Asher bid you welcome. So might as well do it here because this one might sail down this way. So chuck in a... Level one administrator, sure. And just just get some units. Uh, Griffin Brock did a five dollar super chat. Man, legend, your streams after you stop doing daily are so good. Great to see you having fun with the game again. No, dude, my pleasure. Thanks for the super chat. Try to make her join a war too. Yeah, I did. I don't Master want her to join the, the war against Tyrannoc. That made a difference. Shield of Alaria. They face the water. Oh, look at that. They didn't curse me. Hmm. Okay. Wouldn't you want to wait until she upgraded her capital? Nah, just go for it now. Sooner we get Alari, all the better, because she can help grow all of my my regions. Not using Tyrion to support? No, because in order to use Tyrion in this battle, for one thing, I don't need him, because he's very good at sieges. Um, but in order to use Tyrion, I'd have to use up all of his movement to get him on the land. See, once we've captured the settlement, Tyrion can get up on the land and start making towards the next settlement, so we can be more aggressive if we don't use him here. Does bribing not work anymore in Warhammer 3? For confederations, no. Yeah, you can threaten them, and that would work here, but it would screw up my long-term plans, I think. 
If we just wait another one or two turns, we should be able to confederate her. Could you give a settlement to con her? No, that would actually completely ruin our confederations because in order to... There's like some hidden objectives that you need to do for a confederation and one of them is that the faction that you're trying to confederate must not have expanded in the past seven turns. So if you give them a settlement, that, that timer gets reset. Now, Alariel hasn't expanded for a long time, but we're just not considered strong enough to confederate her yet. So that's why I tried to get one of her armies, reduce her strength and increase ours, but it just wasn't quite enough. Serve the king. Shit. So their range is three fifty, and our range is three eighty. Okay. Actually, I'm pretty sure the single shot is the same amount of damage. If not better. No. Cut one down. Next one. Okay, that one's not in range, so we should be fine to just step out of that. Drag her into a few wars and she'll confederate right away. Yeah, I'd have to drag her into quite a few. I'd say it's best to just wait a couple of turns. I'd have to I'd have to wage war on a quite a few people, and that would be detrimental to the overall plan. All right. All right let's move in a little bit closer. All right, we got 180 range. The action at ambushes. If they're up on the walls, they might have a similar range. Let me just see. This way, at least we're hitting the barricade there. And we've got unlimited ammo, so that's not a big deal. Just any hits that we can get, just bonus. So their range... Okay, bring them up a little bit more. I'm a little bit worried that the uh, possible archers up on the wall here will be able to outrange us. 150 range. Yeah, they get to 180 range when they're on the walls, but we've just got more archers in them, so we'll just have to suck it up. Anyone that comes up on the walls will just immediately shoot. Yeah, as long as it's not super high range units like action. Well, they're not super high range, but units like action at ambushes will be able to shoot at us. But the armored cossars won't. And Eltharian's here to like keep an eye out on them so we can see when they're coming. Okay, let's move in a little bit closer. Good, that's working. Okay, this battle should be over fairly quickly if we keep this up. And this is why we didn't bring in Tyrion. We just didn't need him. Right, let's 
move these guys up a little bit more. What happened to Milk and Cocky's Total War? Yeah, uh, that's a weird one. So yeah, he just uh, he just went in, in he went inactive. So I can't tell you why he's done. He's gone inactive. Um, apparently, he's still active in the Total War Discord, but he kind of got a bit of backlash. Uh, a little bit of backlash from Shadows of Change stuff, and has just, I guess he's just taken a step back. Yeah. It just also coincided with quite a, a couple of other YouTubers sort of having a swing at him as well. So I guess just burying his head in the sand, which is probably the best call to make. But yeah, I'd be very surprised if he didn't come back soon. Especially with Shadows of Change stuff coming, you know, fairly soon. You know, in the next month. But sometimes, sometimes you just gotta take a break. Okay, these guys need to restore their ammo for a bit. guys can move in a little bit more. I think most of the action at ambushes are gone. Most of them. There's still a couple here. Good, yeah, because they get a bonus range when they get up on the walls. If we can shoot them before they get up on the walls, that's even better. guys here slowly restoring their ammunition and I'll use them again in a moment. What did he get backlash for? Did he endorse, excuse it or something? Well, I'm not 100% on top of it, but basically he kind of made a dumb video where like, he was making a, a, a fair few videos of Shadows of Change before he got early access to it. Like, speculation stuff, right? And then there was huge backlash to Shadows of Change. Now, he didn't really cover any Shadows of Change stuff in terms of early access. He made one or two videos on it. But then he made a video saying that he, why he didn't cover it. But he did cover it. He just didn't cover it much. Um, so, and then, and then he made some statements about... Like, making excuses for consumerism. And it just got some backlash. Because people don't want to hear that crap right now. Things like there's no ethical consumption under capitalism. Uh, which is a load of bullshit. It's basically like... Well, we can't eliminate the crime in the world, so we might as well let crime happen. So it's just like... Lazy, lazy mindset. And copped a bit of backlash from it, and... A few, a few other YouTubers took the opportunity to take a swing at him. It's typically what happens. And he just, he seems to have taken a break. Again, if you want the full story, you probably need to ask him, because I'm not him, I don't fully know what happened. You know, I watched his video on it, and I watched a few other people's videos on the situation, and I was like, okay, this isn't that big of a deal. But he's, uh, you know, he's, he's been away for a little while now. Sensitive then? Eh, maybe. 
A lot of people just get worn out. Like, being a YouTuber is not always a dream job. Especially, especially during times like Shadows of Change, it's not, it's not a good time to be a YouTuber, for Total War specifically. And so... You either need to pivot, which is what I did, or you need to get the fuck out of the frying pan, which is kind of what he did. Actually, he tried to pivot, he went to Dark Tide for a bit. Was, uh, these videos are doing pretty well for that. Yeah, they don't want to send any more units over here. Can't say I blame them. I could use magic, I suppose, to... I just need to get a few more kills, and I'm fairly sure the army losses will trigger. Getting shot a little bit here. I need to go sort that out. Alright, could you make a breach for me so that I can get in? So I think there's a bit of a change in the zeitgeist at the moment, and I think it's mostly a good thing. Basically, with what happened with Warhammer 3 and Shadows of Change, um, obviously people are not happy with Creative Assembly, but also not particularly happy with YouTubers. And I copped a lot of this with Warhammer 3, for sure, and that is why I massively changed how I was going to do things. Because I thought, like, with, with the launch of Warhammer 3, it wasn't wasn't so bad, but a lot of people were like, Legend, you were shilling that fucking game and it was shit. You didn't tell us about the Realms of Chaos until the last moment sort of thing, which, you know, review embargo. So I had to make a lot of changes to make sure that that wasn't going to happen again, such as um, if I was going to get early access, not to cover it until the review embargo, things like that. So I made a lot of uh, adjustments and for the most part, I rectified the situation because I did not get any more backlash after Warhammer 3. And that's, I think, the way to go about it. You know, if I do something wrong, call me out on it and I will adjust. Now, a lot of the other YouTubers didn't adjust. They're like, well, that's just the situation as it is. Oh, well, too bad. And they continued to chill, basically. You know, continue to just pedal Creative Assembly's bottom line, which is. Here's early access, don't criticize it until this date, and then, you know, just, just play it in the meantime and have fun. And unfortunately got to the point with Shadows of Change where that is not really what people want to see. They want, people are wanting YouTubers to have their own voice and not just be an extension of Creative Assembly's marketing. And a lot of YouTubers are just so ingrained within the partner program that they cannot break free of it. I'm very lucky that I was not so ingrained with the partner program and that breaking free of that was not difficult for me. Um, but a lot of others, it's their entire channel is basically news for Total War. And so they're in this really weird situation where they... They want to tell the truth, but they're hamstrung because they legally can't because they've signed documents. So it's difficult when this kind of stuff comes in. You have to you have to uh, evolve. You've got to try to change with the times, and a lot of people can't do that. They're so set in their ways they can't change, and then you get backlash. Like if we look at the whatever the partner program ends up becoming. Because it got dismantled, but it's getting reformed to be smaller. There's obviously going to be a few bigger creators in it, such as probably Lionheart, Zerkovic, Turin, Milk and Cookies, Lawmaster of Sotek. Those are givens that are going to end up in the partner program. Um, but smaller creators, maybe? Maybe not. I don't know. But also, is the partner program just going to be the same thing as before? Is it going to be, okay, here are the... Here's the stuff that you can show. Don't talk about reviews until the day before release. And if that's what they're going to do, then it's fundamentally just as corrupt as it was before. 
And I think people are going to start to get to the point where being in the partner program is actually going to be detrimental to channels. Because it was for me, it was detrimental to my channel. I tried to explain this to Creative Assembly numerous times. They did not give a shit. You know? They're their biggest Total War creator who is detrimental by having a partnership with them. When I, when I was no longer partnered with Creative Assembly, my views and subs went up by like 40%. Almost overnight. I only wish that I had fully left the partner program earlier. We do not want your pity. I gave them two years to try to sort this shit out, and they... They would, um... They would make promises, oh yeah, we're gonna do better, we're gonna do better, and then, like, six months later, be like, oh yeah, we're not gonna do better. <laughs> it's like, like... Tyrion, heir of an area. What a waste of fucking time. Uh, I was kind of hoping Tyrion would be able to reach here. But what we can do is send Tyrion out this way. Embarking. Because these guys are wrecked. And send Eltharion up that, that way. Elf One's defender. But yeah, it's just uh, it'd be interesting to see what ends up happening with the partner program going forward. Ooh. Okay, level four from here, but level one from here. See if I recruit a level one. Oh, there's a frugal one as well. No, I got the emollient. If I recruit the level one, and then I rename him to emollient, and then I save him, then I've got another one saved up for next time. <laughs> and we'll get him over here and get him to start sorting that shit out. But stay here for now because this is probably quite a lot of order. So, yeah. Like I said, it'll be interesting to see what happens with the partner program when it does reform back in Feb. What's going to happen? Uh, I've sort of encouraged a lot of YouTubers not to rejoin with the partner program. I Master really think that high magic. that they shouldn't. That some people are they need it. Very well. But I think a lot of people should just turn that turn their back on the partner program. What does Emollient do again? A public order faction-wide. And in the local province. Also, income from entertainment buildings faction-wide. It's the, definitely the best trade. Frugal's good as well, but I need Emollient right now. Since I've gone Sword of Cain, I need public order or else things will go to shit. Especially considering we don't have Sunfang now as well, which is normally a, a given. We've also gone Bloodline of Anarion. So yeah, we've gone full full Artard here. This is the dumbest thing you can do with... with um, Tyrion. Like, it makes him super strong, but it also makes your campaign shit. This is this is not good skills, considering what you're giving up. And then, of course, you've got the Sword of Cain, which also means that you don't have the, um... <laughs> you don't have this active anymore, so you lose even more public order. I mean, it means, also means when we're losing allegiance points that we gain with High Elves, <laughs> so it's just... It's just not good to do this, and you can't take it off. <laughs> it's just not good to do this at all. But legend, it makes him very strong. Ah, oh, who cares? Okay, we need this. So, getting access to another wizard is good, but not as good as it used to be. Alright, let me just check over here. You welcome. 3.5. What do you wish to... Do I need to keep the save so actually keep the saved lords to recruit them? No, they're saved separately. So you can Speak save the character and then immediately and delete your save file if you want. Just 10k away for half a mil? Yeah. Yeah, we're getting there. We're getting there. So, current projection, let me tell you. Uh, current projection for surpassing the Total War official channel is... Let's see... It currently says it'll happen in August. August 5th. 
ish. Yeah, August 4th or 5th. That's the current projection. It's going to fluctuate. Honestly, I think it'll take longer than that. Unless I do something that's going to generate thousands of subs a day, which I don't know how to do that. I don't know. I don't know really what I could do to generate subs faster. This is going to take time. Yeah, they are not interested in engaging with us. See how Eltharion, he used up most of his movement just landing there. That's why I didn't use Tyrion in the previous battle. Brave son of Ulthwan, moving out, setting a course, smash it to ruins. Cool. Succeeded on the first I try. Nice. Orders. Oh, I should have destroyed that. Oh, another emollient showed up. Oh, I want it. <laughs> the Grim Prince. Tyrion, heir of Anarion. Vengeance yeah, Split called. up to try to get the job done quicker. Ulf one. Because we are really kicking them with their pants down. Bring me yep, that's battle. Cool. And, yep. Great. We return. Be sure to give Mother O trade to Eltharion. Uh, I don't think that trait really matters that much for him. You stand before the mistress. Alright, this has improved a little bit. Because yeah, we're recruiting forces over here. High Elvin Archmage. To try to buff up our strength ranking. And I've got Hi, this one over here, so I borrowed this one from Led by the winds. Alarial. I'd love to borrow another army, wisdom. but I don't see that. Oh, hang on. What if she has given... Okay, 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 here's something. If I can manage to kill that person, that might give me enough influence to borrow Master this army magic. here. Yeah, that might work. In the next turn or so. If I can weaken her a little bit more, then she'll probably confederate. Your weight and wisdom will be a welcome distraction. Sith. I welcome my southern kin. If I must... Hmm. Still got to wait a bit for the reset of the influence. I need to do Elthar, uh, the Warden. Elithanar. Okay, we've got a bit of money left over. Let's see what can we construct. Yep, growth is happening really quickly over here. We'll be at tier 5 in no time. Right, what can we construct? Looking at public order. Kalidor seems to be the worst offender, which is honestly not too bad. Nagareth's public order is still deteriorating. And there's nothing in here that's going to make it better. So that'll provide us one extra public order. I need more emollient characters. Well, I can bring this one over Show to Nagareth. That'll provide enough public order. Because we got um, we got Cavill in here providing a little bit. Public order here is deteriorating quickly. We need to build these. Here goes my cash. Okay. Yep, yeah, precise fletching, that's what we want to see. It's really good. Great weapons, not essential right now. Cool, and let's see if there's any deals that Champion can be made. Of the lady. lady of Old Fawn. King Lewin. At your service. So I'll wait on that Lewin Leonco one. Wait for a better deal later down the track. Can't believe Pharaoh came out two months ago. Such a non game. Yeah, well, who could have predicted that was going to happen? I don't know. Everyone. Speak your poisoned word and be gone. Should you use a hero to discover Teclas? Um, not right now. Okay, that might push Alariel over the edge, maybe. Thanks for streaming, Legend. Appreciate your community service. No worries, dude. I try to give back as much as you guys give to me. You know, which is... You guys give a lot. Pharaoh's so dead on arrival, it's sad. Yeah. Yeah. What are you going to do? What are you going to do? 
You stand before the mistress of the undying forest. Legend, just declare war on loads of people. Well, one of the wars needed for this. Uh, that's going to ruin my public order. Oh, well. Nice. Nice, Master nice, nice. Of high magic. Okay, well, now I'm paying for this one, so... All right, here's what I think. Uh, take some of these units. Our cause is noble. Oh, an administrator. That's level three. All right, I'll save you. And then, hang on. Any construction needs to be done Master here? Yep. Mage. Master of high magic. Purest sorcery. Saves on cash. All right. Asurians this decree. one here. Get rid of this one entirely. High Elven Archmage. That's good for public order, so that'll be handy. I can put that on Cavill, can't I? Law Master. No, I can't. Okay. High Elven well, I can't get another noble, noble right now, so I might as well use this one to generate influence in the meantime. Limitless and then, talent. definitely need to get rid of this army. Alariel the Ever Queen. Keep that for now. But let's get rid of the entirety the of this army, much to tell. including the Sisters of Avalon. Because what we want to do is just use Welcome. Alariel to generate her special benefit. Oh yeah, she got it to tier 4, nice. What is she doing here? It's good that this is a 10 slotted settlement, because it used to be 8. Queen of Avalon. And yeah, we'll send her around one region at a time, spreading, spreading her gifts. Awaiting orders. There will be carnage. Nice. Succeed again. Speak your mind. Do you think CA will reintroduce naval combat in the new Total War game as Empire 2, considering the period? Yes, but I've heard nothing about that. So it's just a, a guess. But I, I don't know for sure. Phoenix Court awaits your oh, shit. with interest. Oh shit, you're gone. What happened here? Well, hopefully you sent your army out that way and got wrecked. Shield against the darkness. Okay, and this one Master need you to start magic. coming in. Oh, just be careful about doing that because there could be a Marathi army over here. Led by the winds. Ever loyal. All right, I want you to just scout ahead a little bit. Yep, I figured that there would be something like that around here. Champion of the Ever Queen. Do not order me. Okay, I need to set up an ambush. I'm pretty sure my army can beat hers. Oh, but then there's this army here. No higher power than I. Alright, you Tyrion just needs to wait right here and just see what ends up happening. I will come. Because if Marathi runs over here, then Tyrion's got her. If these two fight each other, then Tyrion's got her. And in the meantime, we can Joy just use Eltharion to wanted. smash Very well. the last of um, Stanky Fingers settlements with ease. She didn't use a single uh, hex on me yet. And that also gives us time to bring in this additional I bring army. Fire. Which... No, don't go by Force March. I would go into Ambush Stance here, but I actually don't want them to attempt to attack us over this turn. Just wait there. Wait for things to play out a little bit better. Noble son of uh, Drew Gibson did a $2.79 super chat. Orion's belt has a huge waste of space. It's pretty good. I like that. It's lame. 
but like it's yeah. Okay, I, I can appreciate that one. Thanks for super chat. At first it was like cringe, but then I was like, oh no, I can appreciate it. Honorably done. Good. So yeah, tier five is six turns away there, so that's good. You must restore order. Alright, don't have much money. Yep, yeah, let's try to improve the growth here. Try to get to tier five as quickly as we can. Definitely need that. Yeah, I need five grand for that. Okay, I probably should just save up the money for it. None of these other things over here seem particularly essential. Let me just see what the worst offender for public order is. So Nagaroth is the worst at minus 59. Then Southern Uvarez is not much better. At least that one can be turned off taxes. And it's going to take seven turns, which, at which point the Confederation penalty will have expired. If I can manage to get another emollient noble, that will make a bit of difference. We can fix this place up here with a bit of this. You know, if I had the money. And let's move on. Eltharia. Duty is purpose. The Warden of Tor Ivres. A slightly obnoxious Kiwi. How's it going, dude? Is Ilarial skilled correctly? I didn't even look at it. But yeah, you're right. I should have a, a look. Does Legend use Discord light mode as his lighting or something? Uh, yeah, I know. So I got a lot of light on me. Uh, it's just because the light is coming. It's just a fairly bright light. Um, didn't I make some adjustments to this last time? Let me just have a look again. Hang on. Maybe, maybe I forgot to, to change it. Hang on. No, no. Yeah, I don't know. I think it looks a bit better. Doesn't matter. I'm not as pretty as it used to be. <laughs> as you come on. All right. So, what happened with Marathi? By right, the capture this settlement here first. That way, that guy has no chance of running away. Failure is An extension of Ivress's will. Let you know he's talking shit about Sword of Cain, but here he is using it. Dude, I've been talking shit about it the entire time I've had it. I'm like, this is so not optimal and trash. <laughs> I said I'd do it, but I don't like it at all. I hate the Sword of Cain. Row at you. Ready for orders. I will now that I got two armies. Servant of the king. Ah, oh, what the biscuit? Okay. Uh, order resolve. That's pretty bad. All 
Alright, let me just have a look at some of these. Okay, Fragmenti. Is Fragmenti still bad? Yeah, Fragmenti is still really bad. Alright, looks like we got two Fragmentis. I'll have to withdraw them from the battlefield. Can you sell the current t-shirt? By this one? <laughs> uh, I'll have a look into doing that. Yeah, that's pretty good. <laughs> we'll see. Maybe. Maybe. You unlocked a Thorin's Quest for final item. You can do it for set bonus, I think. The the uh, the item is obtained when you fight battles against greenskins, which we are not at war with, so there's no quest battle for it. Alright, so the fragmenty ones, these two here, they need to immediately leave the battlefield because they're just gonna take casualties constantly. I thought this was a bloody good idea to do this. Oh, Agony Six... Oh, fuck! This one here. It's causing damage in an area. Get out of there. That, that's only done once, isn't it? No, it's got a cooldown. Just get out of there. That's just going to keep going. Get out of there. Yeah, that's going to happen again. See how they like the curse of Cain instead. Alright, so we have 35% ward save, 8% physical resistance. Shouldn't we have more than that? Oh, right, yeah, because he's reduced it. Craven Scent, leadership that's not going to matter, he's unbreakable. Hoping I can get them to blob up, but they didn't do that. Eager for battle. Attack. Direct me. Archers. Since it's archers versus archers, I don't think that a checkerboard formation is needed here. Checkerboard formation is an anti melee infantry formation. Yeah, we need to make sure we have characters out here scouting so that they can't make use of their stalk as much as possible. Let the archers do their job. We go. Ah! 
Because, yeah, we outrange them pretty significantly. Happy New Year, Jack O'Reilly. Thanks for well wishes and stuff. This is all working out real nice, I think. I'm not seeing any issues. What happened there? Whiff of madness. The winds flow through me. Well, how long is that gonna last? I guess that unit's dead. Come on, route. Route your dipshit. Yeah, just get out of there. These hexes are so annoying to deal with. Okay, that's a summon, so just ignore that. Looks like they've been army lost. Hey, bear bullying bird, get out of there. Try to do a bit of healing because Marathi might try to pull something over the end turn. Alright, cool. We could probably fully recover if we take on captives. Level one lord, it's gonna take a little while to use the earth bloods. Hopefully next time we can just order resolve against them. But yeah, that army when they put down that many hexes, they're super powerful in order resolve. Really gives them a huge boost. Because we did way better than what the auto resolve said it would. Which is usually the case, but still. We outnumbered them by a lot. Uh, Dronic did a 5 pound super chat. Bear or gorilla in a fight? Who wins? Ooh. Um, I'd probably put my money on a bear. What kind of bear is best? Definitely wouldn't put my money on a koala bear. I don't know, I feel like that'd be a pretty f reasonably fair fight. Gorilla versus bear. Could go either way, I reckon. Legend turning into Joe Rogan. In what way? Because I'm going bald? Ah, that's not so bad.
Yeah, if we get the replenishment, oh, then we get, we can get money. But with Marathi on our Slaves toes, we should just just get rid of him. Cool, completely wiped him out. Okay, that's the end of Stanky, completely in this campaign. High Elven Archmage. Tyrion, heir of an Arian. All right, I think Tyrion should go into ambush dance now. Forward. And I reckon I Marathi will try the to attack marches. this character. Ever vigilant. I reckon she'll give it a shot. For Hoeth. Alariel's champion. Shield against the darkness. Okay, we'll bring a Thalrian back Prince down here. Alright, they are... The uh, they're not super friendly, but welcome. they're not as aggressive as they used to be in... Warhammer 2. Still, they've got no other enemies, and they consider me their main threat, although it does say that there's little threat to them. Hmm. Yeah, that'll be annoying. I could give them Bleak Hold Fortress temporarily. I have no patience for the fancy folk of Ulfwan. They are still our kin, sister. Because, yeah, if I gave them this settlement, it's not really worth anything to me. I don't think I'd do it this turn. Get a little bit of cash out of it. And then, once we're done with Marathi, then you can just go take it back. No glory. Only Alariel yeah, this queen. one here. So, this is what makes Alariel so good. So, power of nature. Influence. Control. Growth plus 10. Reduces corruption, which that's not a big a deal. But yeah, this stacks per on a per region basis, not on a per province one. Queen so we could move her into Tor Saroy, same province, and it'll do the exact same thing next life. turn. But she's got to end the turn in that in that region. I think we need the public order pretty desperately. Check Alariel skills. Alariel. Yeah. Well, she's only rank 9, so... Yeah, I'd probably want to reset that. Yeah. Typically, I go with tradition dictates. So that'll give us some more handmaidens, which are good. Especially if you get the fecund ones. They're really good for growing all of your provinces. That's my favorite trait. Uh, among others. There's some good ones. Good heroes, um, handmaidens. All right, I'm starting to feel some serious fatigue. Maybe it's the curse of Cain, of the sort of Cain. I'm getting pretty tired. I kind of feel as though we got this. Like our strength ranking alone is better than Marathi's. So let's get through this turn here, see if we screw up Marathi, and then I might take a break because I'm getting pretty freaking tired. Born to lead. Yeah, screw that up. Doesn't matter. Moving on. Do you miss the old prisoner mechanic from Medieval 1 where you could slaughter prisoners mid battle? Not really, because that's. I, I prefer the system in Medieval 2. Cool. There is glory to be won. But Legend, if you fought her manually, you can farm her twice. Yeah, I, I tend to end up killing her anyway. All right. Release them. Cool. Four hundred ninety k subs. Congrats. All right, thanks, dude. Part two, please, Legend. You know what? I'll think about it. I'll definitely think about it because I'm really enjoying in the, this campaign, and. I haven't taken a single defeat yet, and the support's been pretty good. Jonic did a five pound super chat. Sweepy, Legend ZZZ. Next jar of instant coffee on me. 
Well, best thing to... I've been streaming for nearly eight hours, I think. That's quite a long time. Uh, let me just have a look at some analytics and how this went. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. Might do a second stream of this. Because let's be real, I ain't gonna lose. So I imagine a lot of people will be like, why even bother? You're not <laughs> you're never gonna lose. Yeah, we're, we're in pretty good position, even with the Sword of Cain. We have, of course, where is it? No defeats. I really only fought 32 battles. Nearly one every turn. Marathi is now no in so deep, deep shit, as my entire force will bear down on her. Did I forget to move them last turn? The Warden of Tor Ivres. I can't remember. Yeah, I think I forgot to move him last turn. That's how tired I'm getting. All right, guys, it's time to take a break. Let's go chuck a host over to someone. Just bear with me here. Let's see if there's anyone we can host. All right, looks like PZA is doing a Scarbrand campaign. Let me just check. Um. Yeah, PZA Total War is currently doing a Scarbrand hunting for skulls campaign. We'll chuck him a host. All right, guys, go and show some support over to PZA. I'll set up the raid so it actually works this time. But yeah, I am super fatigued, so I'm going to get some rest. But once again, I really appreciate all the support. I will consider doing a second stream of this. Not guaranteed. I just need some more analytics to come through. So it definitely performed pretty well. Usually Tyrion streams do really well. Maybe we can do another no defeat campaign. Do you guys want me to do a no defeat? Uh, like a Narion bloodline campaign? Full map completion. <laughs> and it need to have big attendance. Like you gotta you gotta show up. If you don't show up, then I'll fucking can it. Anyway, we can discuss that another time. Cause like I don't mind doing that as long as people show up. Uh Christian Nielsen did a five dollar super chat. Day fifteen of asking Legend to bring back his old outro quote. See you next time, Effers. Nah, look, I got no problem saying fuck, but I'm not gonna bring back that outro. That's just outdated. That's just not how I feel anymore. So, let's, let's, yeah, anyway, I'm gonna go get some rest because my mind is turning to absolute mashed potato. Anyway, end of this one, appreciate you guys, and I'll see you next time. Later, guys.